Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, first thing, I need to apologize for being late. It's just one of those things. My um, the warm up went a little bit longer than I anticipated, and uh, it left me short time to have my, my dinner and all that kind of stuff. So we squeezed it all in, job done, ready to go. Welcome to another arena. So, this is the platform where we invite non Muslims um, to come and present their arguments against Islam or um, present their arguments for their own belief systems. So, if you're Christian, you might want to come on and tell us why you think Christianity is true, which would make Islam false by default. And if you're a Hindu or a Jew or a Sikh or an agnostic or an atheist, same thing. Although agnostics, you don't know anything, but um, any of the others, if your belief system is true, it would make Islam false by default. So we're looking forward to hearing your arguments against Islam directly or basically indirectly. OK, now, just so you know, uh, when you come onto the stream, you will be asked, what's your worldview? Uh, whether you're atheist, Christian, agnostic, Sikh, Hindu, whatever it may be. The only reason we do this, it's not so we can do what about ism as such. But it's just to make sure you're being consistent in your argumentation. So if you're, for example, a Christian and you start attacking Islam because of, I don't know, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Isra wa Miraj on the Al-Barak, for example, and you start talking about flying donkeys and things like that, then of course, if you're a Christian, you believe in talking donkeys and you believe in talking snakes and you believe in the same type of thing. So you'd be a hypocrite to present an argument which undermines your own position. So that's one of the reasons why you will be asked what is your position? So just so we know you're being consistent. Okay, inshallah. Um, yeah, and that's it. And I'm going to have four gladiators next to me, inshallah, ready to go. Uh, one of them's here. The other one the other is at the moment. But it's Brother Sharif. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, bro? Alhamdulillah. Always a pleasure to see you, my brother. This is proper good cop, bad cop, though, this. I like it. I like yeah. it. So you, you can deal with it. All right. So, so I'll play the bad cop now, will I? You, you're going you're to play the bad cop, yeah? I'm going to be Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> I don't think you could be bad though. I really don't. I, I, you're just too nice. Such a nice guy, man. The eloquence. All right. Um, let me just uh, sort some things out. Shabir is going to be a little bit late. Ten o'clock, he said. Never. Well, Shabir says he's going to be late. He never turns up. But we'll see. We'll see. Put the link out so we'll get someone in straight away. There's someone waiting already, I believe. I was uh cat bingoing anything interesting. Uh, we had a show on Sunday uh, about basically the rational filters for how, how do we determine what. You know, basically, the question is you've got 10,000 God claims or whatever it is. Yes, 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 yes. How do you whittle it down? Yeah. What are the rational filters in order to identify which one could potentially be a candidate? So it's always right. a that's like a That's like a response to that uh, Ricky Gervais argument, isn't it? Yeah, we, we sort of touched upon that point as well, where, where obviously, if there's 4,000 God claims, then therefore they're all untrue. And no, I just, I just believe in one less God than you claim. Funny oh, thing was, I did a reaction to it on one of my live streams, yeah, and right. uh, the whole video has been blocked. Really? Oh, right. Uh, right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that video. I'm going to put a title, Hamza refutes Ricky, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to appeal, and then we're going to put that up again. And if they try to take it down, then we're going to appeal it on the grounds of fair use. We're just we're, we're actually reacting. To, I'm reacting to it. Yeah. Uh, they, they thought it's not a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. Right, the Is it from the one. BBC or something, Channel 4 or whatever? Uh, late show. Okay. Really good arguments are coming. <laughs> all right, all right. So the link is out now. So I think one guy's going to come on straight away, which will give you, me a chance to sort some other things out. L L Kiem or something, Ellie Kiem. So the link is out, not for Muslims. Okay, the clue is in non Muslims. Yeah, so uh, please, if you're Muslim, this is not the stream for you, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Let 
Right. So the link is pinned. Beautiful. Uh, yep, yeah, the link is pinned now. So we're waiting for the first guest. Whoever's ready. Atheist, Christian, Hindu. We might get some Hindutva coming on. Could be interesting. They've done, they've, they've done a number on Muhammad Ijab, haven't they? <laughs> you know what it is? You know. <laughs> some people like sort of, you know, because their own biases, they can't sort of they like twist the truth and it's hard for them to see that they're twisting the truth. And then yeah. you get people who are just blatant liars. Just lie. Yeah. Just lie. And it's shocking because there's been probably many Muslims in the UK. They've been following this incident in Leicester for the last few weeks. It's yeah. happened for a few weeks now. Yeah. And so we, we've seen the escalation. We know who the who's escalating the issue. We know who initiated the issue. We know who's been marching through Muslim areas trying to incite people. I've seen these MPs, in, this Harrow MP, and oh, making these claims about they tried to storm a temple in Birmingham. And But you have to understand, <sighs> Hamza, is that post-Brexit, the British government has made a big deal with India. And so I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. so this is it. So it's a, it's a case that they have a, a lot of strong economic ties with India and they want to maintain those relationships. So if it means throwing the Muslims in the UK under the bus to say that they're the problem to maintain those relationships, they'll do that. I know, I know. But you know, what really cracked me up, though, the other picture of Mohammed Jab without a top on from the Chinese demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like he's some six foot naked giant, <laughs> six foot seven naked giant. All right, all right. So here comes the first guest into the arena is Elia Kim. Uh, welcome to the arena, Elia Kim. Hello, thank you. Thank you. Remind us of your um, worldview and what your argument or what you want to present or what you want to say is. Yeah, well, I, I'll just try to. Uh present the, the argument I had before that uh, yeah but yeah, no one's seen you no one knows who you are so just re represent it so tell us you're a Christian atheist whatever it is and yeah. what your argument is okay I'm a Christian okay uh, I've been a born-again Christian for uh, like 20 years almost. okay um, yeah and the argument that I want to bring is that um, uh, as a Christian, we, we don't think that uh, Muhammad is a true prophet of God, so that's why we don't uh, okay. follow him. Right, present, because, present your argument then, man. Yeah, it's because uh, there are different things, but basically a lot of the things that's written in the Quran, uh, they contradict uh, the things from the Bible, and also that the Bible... Uh, warns us that uh, if any if anybody comes uh, after Jesus and uh, tries to bring another gospel or change something or try to say something just the man Jesus that is different him. so we we oh, then we shouldn't listen to that person this doesn't apply to Paul though does it doesn't apply to Paul he claims Paul who says it yeah. He claimed to be a prophet. He claimed he brought new works that was then incorporated into the New Testament. Sorry. Uh, what do you. I'm, I'm not sure what you're trying to say, but. You're saying well, that your Paul argument is... initially to dismiss a prophet, peace be upon him, is say that the New Testament or the Bible says. That you know, this, that, are you saying that Jesus had dismissed any any false prophets, any new prophets that come after him, or what? What was that? There won't be new testaments. There won't be new prophets. There won't be new scriptures. There won't be new revelations. What is it? Well, let me make it. Let me make his argument for him, Sherry. If you don't mind, on, I know then. what he's on about. So basically, one of the letters of Paul warns one of the churches of false teachers and false gospels. And tells them not to listen to uh, anybody but him. Yeah, and and so that that that's his position. So just so you understand, so it's not it's not like any of the gospel. It's not in the gospels or anything like that. It's Paul writing to one of the churches, telling them um, don't um, don't follow anyone else unless it's come from me. Basically. Is that is that what you like? 
Huh? I'm just saying, uh, you didn't like him. do you agree with what Hamdi did? <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I think so. Uh, I didn't quite uh, follow every detail you said, you said but uh, I think, uh, I think, I think you said uh, said it. I'm sorry, I was just kind of uh, trying to fix some uh, sound problem. But uh, can you can you say it again, please? Because I didn't quite get it. What did you say? Hamza wants you to repeat the. He wants you to repeat his steel man. Oh, uh, he's got a problem with his sound or his speakers. No. Anyway, uh, it's, it's okay now. It's okay now. It's all right. <laughs> okay. So what I said, um, you're referring to Paul. In, in in one of his letters, telling the church not to listen to these false teachers, that because his revelation that he's bringing to them or his gospel he's bringing to them is is what's come through the spirit, whereas these are teaching through the flesh. So you're referring to that letter of Paul, where he's um, warning the church not to listen to anybody else. And what you've done, you've taken that, you've extrapolated it. To act like uh, any other prophet, where Paul, not any prophet. In that, Paul in that letter is referring to Christians, other Christians, because obviously no. there was different gospels going around, there was different Christianities going around, and Paul is trying to gain a monopoly over his version of Christianity, and that's why he's writing to these churches, telling them not to listen to any other Christians, any other teachers, any other apostles. He's the one who's got the true message. No, that's got nothing to do with Islam. That's a, that's a bigger question got, for you Christians I mean, to answer. You got that wrong because. Uh, okay, uh, one second. Halil, Halil. He said I got that wrong. Did I get that wrong, mate? Halil. You've got really oh, bad Wi Fi today, bro. What's going on? Are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to Khalil. All right. uh, I mean, first of all, I'm in a position to... Uh, you should be correcting me, Brother Hamza. Um, I'm learning from you, mashallah. <laughs> I'm in a position to correct you, but can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, but I think we you can't hear us. I think you can't hear us. Sorry, it's... Seems like there's an issue with my connection. I'm gonna try to refresh and get back, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. All right. So, do you want to address that then, Sharif? Um, yeah. So, I just I'm trying to understand Eliakim. So, you're basically saying that because Paul said that to dismiss any new prophets, therefore you dismiss any new prophets. Not any new prophet. No, no. That's okay. That's cool. not. That's not right. Um. Paul said that um, he is uh, he is a bit um, uh, he thinks it's weird that they turn to other gospels, but uh, then he says that uh, if if <clears throat> if we or even if an angel from heaven would come and uh, preach another gospel to you, then that angel or that person uh, is cursed. So, yeah. So basically you're saying is that Paul said that if um, somebody comes claiming a new gospel, and in your view, what do you mean by gospel here? You're just saying any, any revelation, any scriptural revelation? No, it, it would mean like try to change the truth about Jesus because um, Jesus is the Son of God, and this truth is the most important. Impo <clears throat> excuse me, important part of the Christianity is the the truth about Jesus that He is the okay. Son of God, that He died for our sins. Right. Uh, but I'm but, just uh, is, I like him. I'm the just the devil. Trying to... The devil wants to try to uh, change that. Yeah, that's I'm just trying to understand mission. your claim, Thank that's you. all, at the beginning. Uh, that, I'm not trying to like dismiss it or criticise it at the moment. I just want to understand it, and then maybe Khalil and Hamza can jump in further as well. 
So what you're saying is if any, so you, you don't have a problem with new prophets, do you? Oh, prophets no. after the prophet Jesus, yeah. You no, don't have because, uh, because you uh, don't have any, any okay. we have to we have to test any 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 prophets. So okay, any so spirit, that's it. it says that any anybody who comes, any spirit, any new spirit, any prophecy, we can't dismiss it immediately. We have to test it so to see if it is uh, that's fine in line no, with the truth. Again, now, you've the same spirit. now you've just switched yeah? tap. Now you now you've moved away from the letters of Paul to the epistle of John. Me? Well, I'm just saying what the scripture say. Yeah, but you've just switched tack, though. No, I mean, it's the same. Christianity is Christianity. We're all, it's all the same. It's the, all this, the, the truth, you know. No, it's no, no, like, you can't. It doesn't. Look, look, you're being questioned on the reliability of Paul. You can't then switch to John. No, no, that's, that. I wasn't questioned about that. I... I just... I, and what is, I'm the, the sorry, like, about, one second. I'm, I'm just trying. I'm trying to really appreciate what his uh, contentions are. Yeah, just understand uh, so we can narrow it down to the very particular thing that he's got an issue with. So, Elikim, you you don't have a problem in principle. Obviously, you have to test it. Fine, we, we agree upon that. But you don't have any any problem in principle that a prophet could come after Jesus, no. right? Okay. No. Secondly, you don't have a problem in principle that a prophet could come with a scripture as well. From God, as come with scripture. Um, yeah. Well, anybody can write a book. Anybody can write a letter. Well, I mean, obviously, a prophet is coming with a scripture that claims is divinely inspired by God. Then we have to test the scripture. Test. But the, you don't have a, you don't have a problem in principle. I'm not saying you you know you therefore. No, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if, if somebody work. comes, so if somebody comes and says yeah. that, hey, I got this scripture from God. Then I would say, okay, let me look at the scripture, and right, I would okay. test it. I would test it. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Check it. I like him, just so you understand. As Muslims, we don't even accept that there are any other prophets after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah, we don't well, believe then that. Then you're saying that the Bible is lying. Then you're saying that the Bible is lying. You're saying no, no. I'm not making any claims. Says, the uh, like him, like him, like him. Before the you get Bible. into reputation mode, Sorry. just I'm trying to understand your contention, and I'm just explaining to you what my position is. We're not uh, okay. criticizing each other yet. Yeah. Also, all, right. all I'm saying is, you, one, you don't have a problem in principle that there's another prophet that will, could, could come, and two, you don't have a problem in principle that the other prophet could bring a revelation or a scripture from God. Yeah. That's, so your contention, right. your specific contention. Is if anybody comes and criticizes that Jesus was not the was not fully God, that's your contention, isn't it? Yeah, it has to be in line with the the, the scriptures of the, the Bible, the truth about Jesus. It has to be in line with it. Right. So that's the specific issue that you have, and you're now saying that because I presuppose my religion to be correct then anything that doesn't accord to my religious beliefs therefore must be false. Is that correct? I'm saying that uh, if anybody comes with a scripture and says that this scripture is given to me from God, then I would have to read that scripture and see if that is true. If I find some lies in there from the devil, if I find some, some twisting that they're trying to <coughs> twist something, and try to make Jesus into something that is not uh, what the Bible says. Yeah, but Elijah. Then, then I then I would deny this book and this man, and I would say this book is not from God. Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to I'm God. trying to get to the core, the, the actual meat of what your contention is. So your yeah, contention that's... would be your contention would be is if anybody comes that does not agree your, with your presupposed positions, theological positions, it's going to be inherently false. If he doesn't agree with my particular religious beliefs and what I believe is correct, therefore it is by default false. That's what, in essence, you're saying. Um, in a way, but we also have to leave room for new revelations. But those revelations cannot contradict the essential tr truths of Christianity. You can't, like, completely yeah, because contradict you, but, but you like it, you understand... Things. 
It's because you. I, I understand completely. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I understand. I understand you. I understand you 100. The the reason why okay, you're saying. But- is because you presuppose already that Christianity is true and particularly a Trinitarian form of Christianity is true and because you presuppose that to be true you're now using that as a yardstick to dismiss or affirm anything else yeah so I have come to know that Christianity is true by uh, personal experience um, uh, being born again having experienced the power of God uh, the Holy Spirit having experienced miracles and stuff like that. Yeah. So I've come to know that Christianity is true. Were you looking and for Christianity when you experienced these things? Oh, well, basically, um, I wouldn't say so. No. So actually. you weren't looking for Christianity. You weren't praying to Jesus saying, please show me a sign that Christianity is true so I can believe in it. Um, it's a bit of a more complicated uh, story, but uh, the, the truth is that I somebody, I was an atheist, actually. Okay, I didn't cool. believe in any God or anything. Yeah. And then uh, someone invited me to join in a, a, a spiritism game with the Oya board. And so that Ouija means board, the, right, okay. Yeah, Ouija board, yeah. Yeah. And so I, I joined that... Uh, that game. Uh, so you're doing some really devilish. You're doing some devilish stuff, yeah. Go on. I didn't believe in it, and uh, I just said, "Okay, let me try." They yeah. put the finger on the glass, and I put my yeah. finger on the glass, and uh, started to talk to like spirits and demons or whatever. And um, Go on. and the glass uh, started to move, move around the table, and started to answer the questions and uh, stuff like that. And uh, it was very powerful because. Uh, certain yeah. things like we asked if the, the he can move the glass very quickly and so the demon started to right. move the glass very quickly around the table yeah. so that we actually lost the the finger was kind of lost uh, dropped off the glass yeah and so so this was uh, like such a powerful experience for me like i it convinced me completely that there is something, but I, I didn't come to Christianity yet, but this opened up the door for me so that okay. I would uh, start to seek in um, spiritual uh, things. And try okay, to but you like, more. okay, so I'm trying to understand. So now you've, you've sort of opened your mind, you think, oh, there's some demons out there, or whatever, spirituality. What then led you to specifically say, okay, were you then looking for Christianity to be true? Were you looking, were you yeah, searching? God saying, Basically, I, I, I started to read and, uh, and uh, I, I came to a story. I started to read a story. Yeah. Uh, is this a long story or a short story? No, short story. Okay, so let's make it short. I just want to get to the meat of the It was two, two uh, girl friends who played the, the Wii board and... Yeah. And, um, In Wii board with two girls? He means two boys who happened to be girls. You know, oh, that was boy. a story. And so... Um, it wasn't a strict Ouija board, was it? Uh, continue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so like basically, one of the girls went home and the other one uh, continued alone. And the demon said that he didn't like the other girl. And she asked why. And the demon said, it's because Jesus loves her. Or she loves Jesus. So he couldn't... Uh, there was something there. And then... Mm-hmm. Um, that, the uh, demon, actually, so what you're basically saying to me, you like him, if I can understand it specifically, <laughs> is that the devil or demon, or in we would say like Shayatin, was the one that actually informed the girl that it was because the other person liked Jesus, you know, yeah. therefore that's the reason why he doesn't like her. Is that right? That's right. He, okay. Something about uh, Jesus loved her jesus protected her something like that and and so the same the, demons the de- when, de- yeah so going sorry go. when demons uh they can't stand people who are protected by jesus or yeah. jesus because there's this uh, light the demon light. wasn't lying he was telling the truth when he said that yeah uh, he was telling the truth definitely right okay cool cool and uh, and uh, and then what what happened is that uh, this event 
actually made me. Can I ask believe. a question? Can I ask but a question? I, I just say Can one ask a question? powerful thing. No, I have to ask I, a question at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why do you believe the demon was telling the truth? Okay, I can I can explain that. So uh, let me just uh, tell you what happened just right after that because um, it it happened so that I decided to invite Jesus into my heart, and uh, that happened a little bit later. But uh, basically, this is the most powerful thing: is I went down on the floor in my home, and I looked up in the ceiling and I asked. Jesus to come into my heart and then um, what happened was that I saw Jesus come down through the roof I saw the spirit of Jesus come down in front of me stop 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 what do you what did he look like did it look like did well, it look like me what did he look like <laughs> it looked like uh, Jesus like the spirit of Jesus you know, what did he look like I can only say that he looked like Jesus uh, was he, he white was, or black uh i think he was uh, white he wasn't a black person no was it a human was it like a human form yeah it was a human form yeah it was uh, but it had like an opacity level of uh, maybe 50 percent or something like that oh you could see through and, it. Uh, and i yeah i could see through like it. a and, ghost uh, or an apparition like or a ghost something. yeah a ghost so you saw something that looked like a ghost yeah and it came down through the roof it came down in front of me and he wasn't and I looked, definitely I wasn't a time. demon you like him it was definitely not a demon because obviously not. you were doing the ouija board earlier yeah that was uh, weeks and months before that right okay and uh, but uh, i looked at this uh, at jesus and he would came down in front of me hmm. and then he entered into my chest he went into my chest and into my heart and when he came into my heart everything was new like I, when i opened my eyes i felt like everything was new right and later i learned that this means that i had to be born again because i invited jesus into my heart that made like like him, all my you know, so sin I, I can understand right so you like him you know when you were an atheist yeah were you like like yeah. really like hardcore you just didn't really believe in anything or what was it that about your atheism i didn't believe in anything yeah. Right, okay. I didn't believe so, so you know if you put your atheist hat on and you yeah. heard somebody like yourself recount this story, what would you say to that person? I don't know. It depends. It depends if would you, you say, believe oh, this or not. Because some people believe this and some don't believe. Strong it. arguments That's and it it's objective and you know, therefore we should accept it and adopt it. I mean you could call me a liar if you want to. But uh, I have no reason to lie about that. So. No, but what what it is the problem is, see the problem you like him is you know when people talk about personal experiences, every single religion will have people that talk about personal experiences. Yeah, everyone. I've come across Mormons that talk about personal experiences. I've t I've come across Hindus, Sikhs claim it. Even Muslims, obviously, we you know we have this spirit. Yeah, I understand. Claiming. Many people now, have. You would presence. say you would probably say, "Oh, but your spiritual awakening was from the devil." Yeah, that the devil actually manipulated you to see something that's false and not true. You know that Jesus said that if that uh, the devil cannot come in and, and cast himself out of the house, if 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 the devil comes in. Yeah, but that presupposes again. The reason, the problem is that's circular, isn't it? We're at the stage. We're at the stage where we're trying to justify your religious belief or anybody's religious belief. And what you're doing when you're trying to justify your religious belief is you're appealing to a personal experience that I've said and you've agreed. Well, that's that's one of them. I have many, 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 many cultures and religions. I'm just saying is that that's not the base. Look. I wouldn't be the basis by, by which I would adjudicate uh, the truth of a matter by by an emotional religious experience like that. But I, 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 can, I, can say, I can say this though. I can say this. I can say this. Like, how do we know if Jesus is true? Well, Jesus said this: that 
if you don't that's believe me question. that's not a contention for us yeah can i just can I bring my argument go, go, if you like and go quickly and then so, i think hamza wants to jump in i'm gonna give you two more minutes can i, can I please I, I like him i'm gonna give you two more minutes all then right. i'm just gonna crush your belief all right so you got two more minutes okay, to keep going. you're welcome to try <laughs> okay but uh jesus said this that uh um if you don't believe me for what i said but then believe me for the hey, miracles for the miracles i do i'm two minutes yeah so Hang on. G am i allowed can i continue yeah you got two minutes go you got two minutes you got two minutes. all right so jesus said if you don't believe me for my words believe me for the miracles i do and uh jesus he <laughs> healed a lot of people he healed uh and anything like he healed the blind people and deaf people mute people people who was in like wheelchair and didn't have, didn't have wheelchair but it was uh uh can i can ask you like where does he say he healed people in the wheelchair wait a minute my two minutes is not up right i have <laughs> no, two. It's not. just I don't do things please. like that i'm not i'm not finished. he knew people Where's in wheelchairs but there was no wheelchairs can i finish yeah, yeah, Was on, it an huh? electric wheelchair? Right. Can I just can I just finish? Because uh, I I just want to come to the point. So, one can minute. I, can I finish, please? Go on, go on yeah. finish, please, please finish. Okay. Sure, go ahead. Je Jesus said, Jesus said, anyone who believes in me can do the same thing as I do. That is why the Christians. Can, can you heal people? The Christians have power to heal people. Say, let me finish. Let me finish. And that is. Of evidence that Jesus is true. If you see a Christian that heal people in Jesus' name, that is the evidence that Jesus is true, that the Bible is true. Because if not, then nobody could heal anybody in Jesus' name. So that is the evidence that Jesus is true. And the Bible is true. Okay. Um, I, I like I him. Uh, Hamza wants to crush you. And there are many like Christians who are like people him. today. To be fair, I don't know if you were an atheist or what, but you know, I'll take it on face value. But everything you said, all your justifications, just seem really weak to me. Yeah. Well, that, really. that's your point, though. I mean, you're just you you your personal experience, and then you're talking about For other people that would be very strong. You have a problem if, with. If we you think it's weak. And then we we had we we gave you a good. Uh, just a lot of time, yeah. You like him, uh, so right. you mentioned these points. Then you mentioned how you know you have these pastors that can heal people in the name of Jesus, and there's a lot of you know people who debunk that, yeah. Um, it just comes it's across not, a, that's a weak lot. argument, a weak argument, uh, that you're presenting. But Hamza, go ahead, okay. Woo! All right, where to start, man? Okay, let's start with personal experience. Are you saying that someone's personal experience can define what is true? Uh, I'm saying that it's a good uh, evidence. Right, so if a Muslim has a personal experience about Islam being true, does that make Islam true? It depends. It depends. Okay. We have, Can we Islam have to and Christianity both... One second. Can Islam and Christianity both be true? No. No. Okay. So if you have a personal experience as a Christian and it make you think that makes uh, Christianity true, and a Muslim has a personal experience that makes Islam true, can they both be correct? Uh, we, we'd have to look at it, though. I have no, the answer is no. I, I have yet, the answer is no. I have yet to see. I have yet to see uh, any. You like him. You like him. Uh, the answer is no. Him. The answer is no. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. No. If okay. if okay, if a Christian is claiming Christianity is true because of his personal experiences, and a Muslim is claiming Islam is true based upon his personal experiences, they co both can't be true, can they? No, so that's what I'm saying. We have to look right, at no, who, no, 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 what right, no. Therefore, what personal. Happened. One second, I like it. Personal experience cannot be used as a standard to measure what is true or not. In a certain way, it can. It can. No, it can't but, because to, you can't prove it. Degree, it can. Yes, because, it's just your word. Uh, it's just your word. You could be lying. You could have been drugged. You could have been drunk. It could have been anything. Could have been the devil or the Ouija board. I mean, uh, I yeah. mean, you, you just you just been playing with the Ouija board. You've been playing with demons. Who knows what it was that, that screwed you up? The point is this, yeah. If 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 Muslim, where the Quran changes their life and Islam changes their life, and and they feel that fresh and new, yeah. If, yeah, if that cannot can be true, and you be true. So the first thing sure. we can establish is personal experience proves nothing. 
Nothing. I don't agree with you though, because that's what Jesus said. He said, Okay, you how do you know what Jesus said? Believe, okay, stop, stop. Jesus how do you know what Jesus said? That's what it means in the Bible. Why do you believe what the Bible says? Sorry? Why do you believe what the Bible says? Because uh, it has a lot of truth in it. How do you know what's is, true and what's not true? Uh, we have the Holy Spirit, so we can discern what is true. Why do you believe the Holy Spirit exists? I have experienced it myself, and the Bible talks How about it. How do you know it was the Holy Spirit? So what? How do you know it was the Holy Spirit? How do I know what was the Holy Spirit? This thing you experienced. That's just something you know. Like, you feel the power, you have the experience. How, 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 why do you believe the Holy Spirit exists? Where do you get this idea from about a Holy Spirit that can go inside you and correct you and all of these things? Where do you get this idea from? Because, it, first of all, it's written in the Bible. Second of all, I experienced myself. So it's a oh, double okay. confirming thing. So that's why okay. it, it is an evidence. Now, I'm going to say to you something. What is the job of the Holy Spirit? To uh, correct, to rebuke, to lead and guide. And, uh... Okay, okay, okay. So if we find evidence in the New Testament that the authors of the Gospels were in error or contradicted one another, what happened to the Holy Spirit in that case? Would you concede the Holy Spirit's not doing its job? Sorry, what? If we find contradictions within the Gospels, or we find errors, or we find just blatant lies, yeah, could we, could we say that the Holy Spirit's not doing its job? No, I wouldn't say that. No. Okay, so why is the Holy Spirit not correcting and leading and um, when things right then? No, because the, the the Gospels and the Bible are a collection of books and it's Based written by what? people. Wait a minute, it's written written by people. Yeah, I think I know what your problem is. Like him, I don't have a problem. I'll tell you what your problem is. I don't have a problem. I, I, I honestly, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to I'm going to give you a diagnosis. All right, try it. Because I, I think you've been mugged into Christianity because of Blondie, yeah? And that's what or you whatever think, she yeah. was. Yeah, truly. Okay, that, truly. that's not true, though. That's not true. I, I, believe, I think if you've been Ouija board with a geezer, it wouldn't have been a problem. Because it was a no, girl that you were you into the it. Story, the, the story that I read about, it was on the... You, your story wouldn't have happened if you were doing Ouija board with boys. I'm telling you straight. All right, that's the first thing. Oh, right. well, I don't agree with you. <laughs> I'm telling you straight, bro. I'm telling you straight. You've been mugged into Christianity. How long have you been a Christian? No, that's not true. How long have you been a Christian? Uh, to about 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Let me ask you some basic uh, um, premise questions, see what you believe about Christianity. Yeah, because I think you've been mugged into it. I don't think you know anything about it. I don't think you know you the premise. You think what you want, but I know the truth, though. All right. That, that's not true. Who do you that's believe the authors true. of the Gospels were? The authors of the Gospel? Mm. According to what I have uh, learned, it's... Two of them are written by two apostles of Jesus, and uh, I think I heard that the two other of them was written by some other people a little bit later or something like that. I'm not totally sure though. Which which ones? Which of the gospel writers were apostles? I think it was Matthew and John. All right, and who's Mark then? Uh, I'm not sure, man. I haven't completely. I can't go back in time, basically, and, and check it. So I don't know, like, uh, if there's any evidence for it. But uh, yeah, that's what I heard. Right. And if you believe Matthew was an, a, a disciple, yeah. Subhanallah. I believe Matthew is well yeah, was an apostle. Yeah. Why did Why did he um, copy from Mark? Well, that's your words, though. That he copied. Not my words. That's your claims. That he copied from Mark. Are you not aware of this? I'm not aware of that. Which um, one's the uh, earliest how... gospel? Which one's the earliest gospel, Elikim? But how do you know that uh, Matthew copied from Mark and not Mark copied from Matthew? How do you know that? Because which one's okay. the earliest gospel? <laughs> huh? Sorry? Which, which, was, which the was the first gospel, gospel written? Sorry, I couldn't hear. Which was the first gospel written? I don't know. I really don't know that. Right, you've been a, you've been a Christian twenty but, years. Uh, but I you've been a Christian Matthew, twenty years, I and you don't know Matthew, who wrote the first gospel. I'm going to make things easy yeah, for you. Because... I'm a nice guy. Okay, Mark was the first gospel. Mark yeah? was the first gospel. That, that, according I heard to listen, listen to, words. Listen, to listen to these words. Listen to these words. Listen to these words. According to the majority of Christian Bible scholars, 
Yeah. Well, not even Christian scholars, Bible scholars. Okay. According to the majority of Bible scholars, Matthew is 70% verbatim copied from Mark. So this is Christian saying this, and so, this is Bible scholars so they, saying this. There are 70% of Bible scholars that. No, no, 70% of what's in Matthew has been copied verbatim from Mark. Who said that? Bible scholars. Bible scholars. Yeah. Are, but is this true? I hear what you're saying, but I don't know if this is true. No, no, no. I, look, here's the thing I like him, yeah? You're going to learn you things it? that you didn't know. That you're going to learn well, things that you I didn't know. I hear what know. you're saying, but can you prove it? Can you prove Would it? that shock you if that's true? I, it wouldn't shock, like, it wouldn't shock me. It Why not? Change, it wouldn't change anything. Because, uh, Why wouldn't it change anything? Because what would it change, though? Well, Matthew's copying from somebody who's not an, an eyewitness. Matthew's copying from Mark, who's not a disciple. And I thought Matthew was a disciple. I can hear Why what you're saying. Why would Matthew, a disciple who walked with Jesus, need to copy from somebody who didn't walk with Jesus? I hear what you're saying, but you'd have to prove it, though. Because I No, no, no. I'm people... asking you, if this is true, what I'm saying to you, and Matthew did copy from Mark, the question you need to ask yourself, why would an disciple of jesus need to copy from a non-disciple of jesus about what happened in the but life the first, of jesus the first question i would ask was can i prove it first because i can't no, no, no. spend you, time look, look, look. Try i'll to say it again to you if I doesn't i'll say it to you true. yes can we you can prove evidence? it Do you have a link yes we can proof? prove that matthew okay. copied from mark yes we can prove it okay? we can prove it all right yeah so give me the link though right 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 we can prove it okay Based upon the right. teachings of Bible scholars, yes, we can prove it. Yeah, so we just Bible scholars, your... did they say that they think he did it? Or are no, they, they did it because sure. look, they say that the way that Matthew embellishes the stories of Mark, adding to them, yeah, you wouldn't work the other way. If Mark copied from Matthew, yeah, he wouldn't delete information, but you can see the chronology between in Matthew and Luke, which are both copied from Mark, yeah. Now, you can see the chronology of what's gone on. You can see how, for example, <clears throat> Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, yeah? He's asked, he says this adulterous nation asks for a sign. No sign shall be given. And then he walks off, yeah? In the Gospel of Matthew, no sign shall be given but the sign of Jonah. So now we've got, we have got it. There was no sign in the Gospel of Mark. Now we've got a sign, yeah? In the um, Gospel of Mark... Um, Jesus, uh, there's a, a woman um, touches him, wants healing. And he turns around and says, who touched me? Yeah? As yeah, if he yeah. didn't know who touched him. When you read the same story in Matthew. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. So just listen, what? just listen, just listen, just listen. When you hear the same story in Matthew, Jesus turns around this time and says, why did you touch me? So in Gospel of Mark, he doesn't know who touched him. Now in Matthew, he's asking the person, he knows who touched him and he's asking why they touched him. So what you can see, that, listen, whether you, you accept it right now or not, I can't do anything what, about that. What you're saying is that there is a difference between Mark What and I'm saying to you, Eli Kim, listen to what I'm saying to you. No, I'm, I'm asking you to just No, to listen to what it. I'm saying to you, you you're Eli saying that there's a difference, right? Between listen Mark to what I'm saying to you, Eli I'm Kim. I'm trying to do that. And I'm trying well, to if you shut up long enough, you'd hear. So just listen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So... According to Christian scholarship, Christian scholarship, Bible scholarship, higher critics of the New Testament, they say that Matthew, based upon the content of it, is copied. These guys know how to study textual criticism and it's higher criticism, see who the authors are, yeah, and textual critics. And they can see that the author of Matthew has borrowed 70% verbatim word for word from mark into his gospel and then taken from another source called the gospel of q yeah yeah to, that's the to, second to, time you say that the extra, uh, extra information say. that's not found in mark right this yeah, is but, christian uh, scholarship you're, you're okay that this now what i'm saying to you is this Eli Kim. i'm just saying just listen to me please otherwise this is just a waste of time if oh, what i'm saying to you is true if what i'm saying to you is true how can that not have an effect on you? Because surely you have to ask the question, why would a disciple of Jesus who walked with Jesus, who witnessed his miracles, who heard the parables and the explanations to the parables, who sat and ate with him, 
why would he need to go to somebody who never did these things to ask what Jesus said and what Jesus did? Well, currently, this is only a claim that you're claiming. You haven't proven right. anything. Yet. I'm saying to you, you said it wouldn't change anything if it's true, didn't you? I said I have to I have to look at the details and uh, I have. What, to what if it's true? What if, if what if it is what if it is true? What if it is true? Like him. What if it is true? If it's true that Matthew had copied Mark, is that what you're asking? Yes. Uh, I it wouldn't change anything to be honest. What what would it change? Right. Like what well, would what it, it would prove? change? What, what it should it... change if it's true? So we're imagining yes. it's true now, yeah. You go away, you do your research, you come back. Oh, my God, it's true. Can't believe that ginger geezer was right, yeah? Yeah, what Yeah, what would it prove? Right. Now the question is to be asked, why would Matthew copy from somebody who's not a disciple if he's a disciple? Uh, I mean... I have. I, it's difficult to answer because I don't know if it's true. Like you haven't proven anything. I hear what you're saying, and I hear what if you say. If it that, is true, I hear, I hear, if, I hear it, that if you it say. If it is true, yeah, but, I mean, if, it is if, true. It's, if it's true that the dragon came up of the volcano yesterday, I mean, we can't talk like that. You know what I'm saying? You have to. You have to prove. Prove it. Eliakim, Eliakim, you have you to prove what you're saying. There are many, many people are coming with claims. Many so-called christian scholars what, what would be ma evidence many of them you? many of them want uh, to debunk the bible and they, Eliakim, they, they, Eliakim, they are very let me ask you a question can i ask you a question very good at be... finding things you know can you guys hear me? and concluding but uh, but can you guys uh, hear me? i can hear you but uh, okay. i just um, uh, uh, Eliakim, i just what, need what to have be... some time to talk myself you know Eliakim, like... Eliakim, bro just talk, just just chill for one second what would be evidence for you? What do you take as evidence? Because you're dismissing the scholars, right? Somebody who spent 20, 30 years, their PhD in the field, experts in the field, they know Greek. There's the reason why you even read the Bible in your language, English, English, Spanish, French, whatever oh, that like is. I'm saying whatever. many of them are liars. So liars. how do you trust? So how do you trust? Yeah, he believes the demon. <laughs> demon in a Ouija board and he doesn't believe Christian scholars <laughs> this guy's a joke he's got to go John do you want to say something to him uh, uh, no I think you uh, want, you want to out, right? because I bring some good arguments and you, you're not able to debunk me right you have a yeah, brilliant argument you, you like him about? you like him you like him please. you tried to destroy me but can, you I, can, I, can I ask him a question before you go before you leave oh, I, go go a, I have a basic question I ask all Christians this question just kind of like I'm doing like a social study uh, to find the percentage of you know the answers based on people ask who do you consider jesus to be god or someone sent by god uh both okay so you believe that jesus is god correct yeah the son of god yeah i didn't ask you if he's no, son of god i'm asking you is he god almighty he is he's god in the human form yeah okay no i'm not asking you if he's got a human form or son of god i'm asking you is jesus god almighty yeah Okay, uh, can it's God crazy. Almighty, can God Almighty have a God? They are the same God. No, no, that's not what I'm asking you. Listen to my question. Just, just forget about everything. Just, just focus with me. Can God Almighty have a God? No. Good. So Jesus has a God. He told Mary Magdalene, "Touch me not, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them." But I go to my father and your father. I go to my God and your God. And by the way, this is post resurrection. As, yeah, as but this explained. is weak argumentation. You're trying to prove something and it doesn't really prove anything. Because, Hold uh, on. Just one second. Just let's take it back one step out of time. You said God Almighty cannot have a God. Now, let me ask you this Did Jesus have a God? Yeah, this is this is weak argumentation. Like, just answer my question. You're answer my trying question. to use this word game to prove something, Eliakim. and it doesn't prove anything. Just answer my question. So, this is answer my question. Time. Oh, what's, 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 Khalil? what's he trying to prove? What he's trying to prove? Yes. He's trying to prove something using a word game, saying that, oh, Jesus said this, and that, and then that. Oh, so when, like when he quotes Jesus, game. it's a word game? 
No, I mean, because this weak argumentation can prove not. Yeah, why is it weak? Well, why, why is it weak? Why is it weak? Because it has, it, it, weak, when I say weak argumentation, it means that it's not, it doesn't prove anything. It could have several. Well, it does. It does. It could have Hamza, several. Hamza, Hamza, Hamza. Uh, just ask him to repeat, just ask to repeat the argument. Yeah. What because was he doesn't argument? understand the argument. He's dismissing it before really understanding what he's no, saying. No, 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 that's not it. I know What's his argument then? What's his argument? Usually you're, when I debate some Muslims uh, You don't sometimes. debate anybody. Alright, I think we're going to say goodbye. You I think we're going to say goodbye. Uh, you it's don't weak debate argumentation. anybody. And you, you try to prove something, but you're but not going to prove it. Just, uh, just before you go, just tell me this. Did Jesus have a God or no? Jesus is God, but okay. he had... A father, like no, 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 that's not, that's not my question. I'm not asking if he had a father. Yeah, or uncle. this is what I'm I mean. Asking, you're playing this game. No, no, you're this not, is my question. You're, you're I'm asking, trying to, I'm asking trying to manipulate. I'm not. I'm not. I'm asking you a question. I'm not, I'm not manipulating. Look, look. I'm asking a question. Yeah. Did Jesus have a god? Yes or no? Yeah, because you can't decide what the answer is. Did Jesus have a god or no? You want me to answer what you want me to answer? No, I want, I, you to, I want you. I want you to answer. I'm just gonna kick it. It's gonna kick him. Waste of time. It's just pathetic. This is unbelievable. It's just pathetic. It's just really pathetic, man. You quote Jesus, it's word games. He quotes Jesus, it's theology. <laughs> he didn't even quote Jesus. <laughs> at least we understood. At least no, it was interesting because at least we understood it was through a Ouija board. The devil told <laughs> one of his girlfriends that you know I don't like the other girlfriend because she likes Jesus. Therefore, it led him. Oh right! If the devil doesn't like Jesus, I think I should like Jesus. The, gir the girl on the glass got the other girl to go home. Yeah, and then maybe you know the the, wow. the ghost apparition came down, and I missed that part. Oh, oh, you oh, oh you got to the end. Yeah, oh, well, word. a demon <laughs> told him this girl's got Jesus, so he needs Jesus. Yeah, basically that's what happened. Yeah, whoa, he was an atheist as well. Wow. <laughs> Oh dear. All right, let's bring the next. This guy's a Muslim, I swear. You're Muslim, bro, aren't you? <laughs> bro. You're muted. Yeah, he's Muslim. I'm asking I'm for, my for my wife, who is a Christian. Yeah, well, she needs to come, not you. Well, I'm not going to let her, you know, she needs uh, the kitty gloves. Like, she's a. Uh... Yeah, but we're not going to, I can't allow it because it's. If once I let one Muslim on, every Muslim is going to come on and say, ask him for a friend. <laughs> fair point, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. All right, Wait. so I'll let you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. It's not fair because it's a stream for non-Muslims. By the way, Sam Aikum, everybody. Well, Aikum, Sam. Hello, Aikum. Hello. 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 How are you, John? Sorry, guys. i got no video today. No oh, worries, uh, bro. At least the people won't get confused. I have to do this. <laughs> John, why have you got you're, you're... on your profile? Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, why Hans has got the uh, deep fake on his video. <laughs> that, Zashan, you're a Muslim as well, aren't you? Zashan. Zash, Zishan. Or should I say Khalid? Oh, he changed it. You muted. You muted. Trying to be Mr. Nice Hamza in this today. It's just not working. Right. This guy's gonna drive us nuts. What's happening, mate? Oh, here we go. Hi guys. Hello there. How do you do? Fine, thanks, How and you? Do you do quite so? amazing, thank you for asking. Oh Tangelo. Yeah, Otangelo is uh... Hotangelo, right. how are you doing, Hotangelo? I'm fine, thanks. Is that it? Are, are you Christian? Atheist? Yeah. Yes. I'm well, he's a Christian. He's a, I I you want... you're a, he's a Protestant Christian. He lives in Brazil. Is that right? Yes, I am Swiss. I, I grew up in Zurich, in Switzerland. My parents are Italians, but I live in Brazil. Oh, to right. Fala Portuguese. So you're Catholic. Fala, fala Portuguese. Are you Catholic? No, I'm an evangelical Protestant. Oh. All right, what do you want? Yeah, so um, my question Why? Okay, is... quickly, why did you convert to 
being evan- evangelical? Why did you leave Catholicism? I mean, it's it's not in two words that I can um, say it, but basically when I was a teenager, I was in depression. I was looking for a way out. I was an atheist back then. Then I remembered that my mother was praying uh, Catholic um, uh, um, prayers, when I, and uh, I did that for myself. That helped. So I remembered that, and I said, well, I'll try again. I started doing that, and that helped me out of depression. But then I started to visit the Catholic um, youth centers, and I didn't feel well treated there. And then I met um, a colleague at work, and he invited me to go to an evangelical church. I had questions about the Bible, and there they answered them. I felt well treated, and so I converted there. I received Christ as Lord and Savior, and... uh, from there on, I was an evangelical Christian. Angelo, okay. what was the homework I gave you last time? Um, I don't remember so much time back. People say I give you homework last time. Yeah, I remember you said that I should research something, but I don't re- really remember what the topic was. You didn't do your homework? Um, no, I don't think I've studied what the, the thing was. That Why not? I to study. Why not? Oh. Well, I I have priorities, so that's the reason. More priorities than what's true? Well, I have priorities. I am uh, more into science, so that's what I spend my time. Okay, so you came here as a Christian. I challenge your worldview and give you things that would refute your worldview, and you didn't bother to check whether those things I that think- I give you... I, th- I think I remember it was about uh, Paul uh, okay. having had a vote as um, a Nazarene. Is that right? Okay, so basically the, 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 the argument is a simple one. I'm, I'll let the other boys get involved in it. Uh, the argument was a simple one. I'm not going to let you off the hook if you've not done your homework. I'm going to bury you with it again. No, I actually um, researched that. I remember. Oh, you did, re- so have, no, oh you, did, you did research it. You said you did yeah, research it. No, you said you did yeah. research I was thinking now about the topic since I remember now. Yes, I All researched. Right. What did you topic. research? So my well, the thing was that you said that he uh, that Paul was upon um, a Nazarene vote, which is an Old Testament vote, wow. and that wouldn't probably be the case if he wasn't uh, anymore uh, holding to the Old Testament law, but rather to a the tangible, New stop, Testament stop, 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 stop. What was the argument I presented? I don't remember the details, but I think it was that you said that he actually offered um, a sacrifice through that vote that he uh, made and went to Jerusalem and there he offered. I don't remember if it was um, a meat offering or a plant offering or something. So what did you like study? That. What did you study in response to my well, claim? Well, well, what I did find actually, Hansa, is that. It seems it isn't absolutely certain that he was actually having the Nazarene vote. It seems that he had a vote, but it isn't certain through scriptures that, that it was actually a Nazarene vote. So he could eventually. What was it? What was it then? So what, 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 was he, what was he being told to do? I don't. I don't know really because, um, right. as I said, it. Uh, it Just is stop. Uh, several months Just back. So. Atangelo, I remember now why I had to kick you off last time. Yeah. You, you don't show sense. I'll, I'll make it again easy for you. I'll make the argument again. I'm not letting you off the hook. If you can't be bothered dealing with what I'm brought, I'm going to bring it again because it refutes you. Okay. Paul was told to take a vow to prove he was still obedient to the law. Now, you tell me, other than the Nazarite vow, which vow fulfills that criteria? Yeah, I would have to read the text and see if that was actually the case. So I don't, I'm, I'm not okay. remembering. Uh, I love that text. idea. Go read the text. Ace. Hello, Ace Freeman. Hey, everyone. Hello. Hey, Ace. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, thanks, Hamza, for putting this together. Um, no problem. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really too familiar with your channel, but uh, a Muslim friend recommended me to go in here and ask some of the questions. So, um, so what are you, an really... atheist or Christian or what are you? Atheist. Atheist. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So, well, make, make your point. Yeah. So my question is um, regarding 
free will. So to my understanding, um, the Quran suggests that uh, there's free will, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so like um, my question is uh, because um, like Allah knows all, right? And uh, basically uh, I know that there's a, like a predetermined destiny and that's if Allah knows all, like Allah will know um, in 20 years time what I'm going to be doing. So if there's already like a destiny and it's already written in this uh, tablet, how could you say that there's free will? Um, I, I watched a couple of videos from some doctors and they said that there's some of the parts of the hadith that suggest that uh, there's no free will, but uh, sometimes there are. So my question is like, how do you, how would you go about that contradiction? Uh, I, I've got a, a, a decent response, but I'm going to let the other boys respond. I think uh, Brother John Fontaine or Brother Sharif, or uh, a new Brother Hamza, were more qualified to answer that question. I'm just going to give a quick, uh, a quick, uh, I guess, statement or two about this regard. So first of all, Ace, you shouldn't start your argument by saying, how is this a contradiction? We haven't established this contradiction. This is only in your mind is a contradiction. Uh, we believe that the insan, human being, is mukhayyar and musayyar, meaning um, you have free, free choice or free will, but in the meantime, uh, you are destined. This destiny is already written for you what, you, what you're going to do. Now, uh, Allah has knowledge of everything, but that does not change your free will. Uh, I hate to give this example, but there's no other way to really illustrate it. So I'm going to give an example of a teacher. It's a classic, basic example. You have a classroom. And you have a teacher who has, for example, 30 years experience. He knows students very, very, very well, right? And he can point out and tell you by about 99% accuracy that this kid will get an A, this other kid will get an A, that kid probably is going to fail, most likely. Now, this is just from 20-year experience of teaching and dealing with kids. This teacher has developed certain skill to tell and predict. Now, mind you, the teacher does not influence the student's ability to study and how much study they should put. For example, the teacher is teaching everyone, is telling you what the message is, and is also telling you to go home and invest, put in some hours to study for the exam, right? Some kids go play Xbox, play around, do whatever, and some kids actually study, right? So all the kids have the freedom or the free will to do whatever they want. But some people, despite being told what to do or, and what the formula is for success, they still don't do it. So they have a free will, but just because the teacher has a uh, uh, high specificity uh, of the test of predicting what's going to happen, it doesn't mean that he's already um, uh, inflicting that upon them. No, they have the free will. He just happened to know because of experience. Now here we're dealing with the, the creator who's, who believe as Muslims, all wise, all knowing. He knows what's going to happen. And you get the free will, you exercise your free will, but Allah already knows what it is. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for that response, Khalil. Um, yeah, my friend actually told me that analogy as well. And um, I, I feel like there's sort of a disconnect there. When you talk about the teacher, you say 99%. Um, you say 20 years of experience. But we're not talking about the teacher here. We're talking about Allah. He, he, knows, he knows all. There is no 99%. There is no 20 years of experience. So I don't really know how the analogy can kind of translate to the creator. Because it doesn't. Um, that, that's why. I sorry, to interrupt. Uh, Ace, yeah. just to clarify, it doesn't. That's why I I started my argument by saying to you, I don't like to use this this analogy, but I have to give you something, right? Right. Because there is right. no you... other thing other than Allah that is all knowing, all wise. But to give you some some sort of estimate, just to kind of illustrate the example, I give you someone who's limited, like the teacher, who can predict probably like a high percentage, but can never be at the level of Allah. That's why I said that. I, I was. He, I hope you heard what I said earlier. Khalil, that wasn't hundred percent example. Yeah. Because Khalil used the example to show how the the knowledge of the teacher didn't affect the the actions of the student. That's the only way he used it. So it's not contradictory, is it? Oh, yeah, I, so I, it's, I, it's not about ninety percent. What about forget about the percentage of the accuracy? The point is that the teacher had this teacher been all wise being he would have all, all knowing he would have known exactly exactly how many gonna get an a how many gonna get a b and how many gonna to fail the reason why he's 90 percent 80 percent 
just because I know this being, this teacher, is limited. But that's not the focus, like Brother John said. The point is that uh, the teacher is not affecting the student's free will to study or not to study. They have the free will. Just because the teacher knows who's going to get an A does not change the fact that they still know to need to study. Just some people are lazy, some people are distracted, some people might need medication to focus, etc. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for that response. Um, I, I promise I'm not trying to be in like bad faith here, right? But um, this analogy that you're creating, it's it's not. Um, there's there's two different people right and i understand your analogy is to show that um you know allah has a set of rules they're trying to teach people and it's up to them whether or not to follow it right but this is like it's not just a regular teacher this is allah so if we're talking specifically in that paradigm where it's all knowing or unless you can provide it like a better analogy i just kind of find that um not satisfactory but if it's if if there's a teacher and, and they're all knowing and they know exactly what's going to happen um <laughs> How do you kind of um, right? How does that? So I'd like yeah. Brother Sharif to jump in on, on to this, but just just a quick question for you again. Yeah. How does the knowledge of Allah affect the free will of the servants? Um, I think there's a difference between like um free will and choice, right? I mean, like um, like I have the choice to pick up my water bottle and drink it or not, right? And you um, have the free will to do so as well. Okay, maybe maybe we have different definitions of free will, for example. Okay, so um, how? Explain I, I, how I, I don't, I don't, it, I don't think free is not, will is the same thing as choice. How is not picking a bottle of water, drinking it, a free will? Can, can, can I just interject here, man? Sure. And make it easy. Unless Sharif wants to go first. No, no, I'm going to go for it now. All right, I, I would do I'll make it easy. Huh? I, I do want to maybe have a conversation, but later on. But I want you to. Carry All on right. Going. So Ace, I'll make it easy for you, yeah, dude. All right, we know that our risk, our sustenance isn't fixed, okay? Because Allah tells us we can raise and lower it with our dua and effort and such, yeah? Hmm. So how do, how do you reconcile that Allah, um, has, the pen has written all of our lives, yeah? Yeah. All right, okay. So here's the phrase I'm going to use. It doesn't happen because it's written. It's written because it happened, yeah? It's written because it happened? Right, so it doesn't happen because it's written. It's written because it happened. So in Allah's knowledge, he's seen my life. I'll use my, me as an example. He's seen my life from beginning to end. He knows how many wives I'm going to have, how many children I'm going to have, how much money I'm going to earn, how much food I'm going to eat. Yeah? Yeah. In his knowledge. And he yeah. told the pen to write that. That's my script, but I wrote my own script. So is it being written while... Because I know Allah no, no, operates no. beyond The pen has space. written my script based upon the knowledge of my life that Allah knows. Because he's seen my life from A to Z. Okay. So as far as Allah is concerned, my script is done. As far as I'm concerned, it's still open. Okay. I can okay. choose to refuse to do what I like. Allah says in the Quran, let them choose, let them refuse. So we know this free will. Yeah. Um, so uh, the way I it reconcile it yeah. is that Allah's knowledge knows my life A to Z, but He hasn't determined that outcome. But He knows the outcome. Yeah. yeah. I'm the author of my own script, but Allah knows the outcome of my movie, and it's already done. Okay. So as far as Allah's concerned, and the tablet's concerned, and the pen is concerned, my movie's done, but I'm still living my movie. So from my perspective, I have free will to choose or refuse to do what I want. But right. whatever I choose or refuse, it's already known by Allah, and therefore it's already in the script. You understand? Right. So um, don't you think that's kind of like the an illusion of free will? Like no. us, as, us as humans, we think no. that. But in reality, you just kind no. of conceded that it's not true. No, I don't. Allah How's that an illusion? How's that an because, illusion? Because um, like Allah knows, and it's... Allah knows all. Knows what? Three... What does he know? How many wives you're going to get? It's, no. You, you, he know, you just no, said it's no. written, right? Allah knows what choices I'm going to make. Yeah. He knows right. what choices. So Allah I'm knows the choices I'm going to make. Who's making the choices? Me or Allah? It's going to be you, right? Right. So who's got the free will? Um, 
Well, well, you're under the illusion that you have free will. No, no, I, I have the free will. I'm the one cho making the choices. Allah knows what choices I'm going to make. Allah's not determined those choices for me. I've determined those choices. Um, but doesn't doesn't Allah have to will your choices into existence though? No, He permits it. No, no, He permits it. That's a different. That's a different um, question. And nothing so happens he... without the will of Allah, meaning the permission of Allah. But Allah okay. gives us free will so that He allows things to happen. So, so Allah can determine whether or not you make that choice or not, right? No, Allah knows what choice I'm going to make. I don't know why you keep ignoring what I'm saying to you and trying to put me into a pigeonhole yeah. of your argument, which doesn't fit. Ace, um, focus on the yeah. argument. Focus on what you initially said. You initially were arguing that there's a contradiction between God's knowledge and the ability for human beings to choose. That's a different point to saying God's will and human will. Yeah. So, so let's just focus on the first point that you, you said, which was basically saying God knows something about what you're going to do. Therefore, you're saying humans don't have free will. No, but, the, but the check is Allah knows my choices. <laughs> so Allah knows what, how I'm going to use my free will. Yeah. So who's so using the free a, will here? So we, I can't do an action outside of God's knowledge. That's true. But God's knowledge is not causative. Of the actions that I choose to do. That's the key point. God's knowledge is not causative of the actions that I do, but uh, is not a causative, but I cannot do anything outside of God's knowledge. Which is what I said. Does that makes sense. You said it in a really posh way. You said it in a really posh academic way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Did okay. it reverse? You took my lay term and made it academic. <laughs> okay. Um, no, because okay. this is actually addressed by early Muslim like theologians. They talk about this issue that they say, look, the the mis the misunderstanding that people have is they think that God's knowledge is causative of the action. It's not causative of the action of the servant. Okay, um, maybe maybe I'm not uh, too knowledgeable in this, but um, can you go back to the part where um you mentioned that God has to? I, I think I read something where um. Like God wills every fall and leaf. Sorry, you Muslim? No, no. I, I, I'm just, I'm just curious. Like, I, I, I enjoy. Muslim. No, no, I'm not. I, I enjoyed the subject though. Um, and you know, like uh, I told you, my friend. But we so, just responded to you. So did you get it now? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know. I was about to ask the question before you interrupted. Yeah. So you're saying that uh, but the question you're asking is something different now. You're, exactly. You're, no, 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 you're no, no, no. A discussion about occasionalism, which is a different discussion. Yeah. Well, uh, me, just let me finish first. Go on, um, go on. So you're saying that, like, I'm just talking about choices, right? And um, doesn't God have to sort of decide whether or not, decide what, like, um, Hamza, whether his, like, the outcome of his choices are going to happen or not? Yeah, but Ace, that's a different question to saying that God's, knowledge of your choices is causative of your choices you agree that that's a different question now you're asking i mean if he if he's able to determine whether or not his choices will come true how's that not causative no no <laughs> that's a different no. question so i'm saying look you've got two you've got two issues one is to say okay god's will and human will one issue and there's another issue which is god's knowledge and your actions so I'm saying, okay, let's let's focus on the initial point. And if we can dismiss that and say, okay, that's not a contradiction, we can move on to the next one, which is fine. But what we can't do is take one argument that you initially made and then turn it into another argument, which is not related uh, to the first argument. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm just saying, just on this point, like you can you can accept now that just because God knows you what you're going to do does not mean that you are therefore uh, determined by God's uh, knowledge to do that. Determined in a cause. Yeah, but just to add, just add one small caveat. Sorry. So let's say in my yeah. life I make a decision, yeah, and I ask Allah to make this thing happen. So like for example, when I first became Muslim, I wanted to marry this Moroccan girl. And she was a stunning, beautiful girl in Morocco. And I wanted to marry her. And every day for two weeks, I got up in the middle of the night and prayed, Allah, make her my wife. Yeah. Now, Allah knows I'm going to get up in the middle of the night and ask to make her my wife. Yeah. Now, at the same time, Allah says he'll answer our dua, but especially the dua of Tahajr. Okay. So Allah knew that was going to happen in my life. And that was my choice. And Allah could help manifest that thing that I wanted. Alhamdulillah. But that's still part of my story. 
I still had to make the effort of get up and, and, and make ask Allah make her my wife. I still had to get on a plane to Morocco. Still had to go and try and convince the family to let her marry me. Do you understand? So there's all these things that had to happen. But Allah knows that. Allah knows I stood up and, and for, for two weeks just to make her my wife, make her my wife, make this bloody woman my wife. All right? For, for two weeks solid. Allah knew I was going to do that. And Allah says he responds to the dua of his believer, of his slaves. So Alhamdulillah. So even that is part of my story based upon Allah's knowledge. So, so basically, God, God knew prior to creating Kamza that he was going to make a dua yeah, for this particular outcome. Let me guess, Brother Hamza only, brother Hamza only used the argument because the wife is around, right? <laughs> oh, imagine this. I became a Muslim. After three and a half months, I went to Morocco and got married on my own. Well, I took a friend with me. MashaAllah. Okay. Um, so, so basically, okay. Okay, so you're saying that um, um, I, I think from what you're saying is like from like a human perspective, because there's choice, there's free will. No, he's not is quite it, saying that. that. Look, I, I, I mean, look, let me give you give you a simple analogy. Yeah, this is a simple uh, analogy. Look, there's contentions that we can have on these particular analogies. Yeah, but let me give you a simple analogy. If I watch a pre-recorded football match and I know the score. Yeah, and I'm watching it. It doesn't mean because I knew the score that I caused England to lose one nil. Oh, I'm, I'm not talking about causing. And relegate them. <laughs> I, I'm not talking about causing. I'm talking about because you already knew that. Yeah. Like, while the game was happening, it was already it was destined for it to be that score fifty like one and two or one and zero. Like yeah, no, so because you can, knew it yeah, already, it there was no other way for that score to be different than what you already knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So that's the point. That's okay. the point. That's why I said is that there's this, you have to I cannot do an act outside of God's uh, knowledge, but God's knowledge is not causative of my acts. Uh, Very I, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. I don't think I'm arguing that you know God causes these things to happen or whatever. What are you arguing? Okay, I'm like back to back to what Sharif was saying um, yeah. about the soccer game, for example. Let's say um, Sharif knew that, that the soccer. Oh, sorry, football. Um, Sharif knew that the football outcome was going to be three and zero, right? If if he yeah. already knew that before the game ended, yeah. the players have no free will because they cannot change the score of whatever the outcome of the soccer game is. They, no, they have they no choice. But the, they cannot. No, you've just gone. You just repeating the same argument. We've already answered to you this. Okay, it's, it's very it's simple. Ace, it's, it's, it's very very simple. We, I think we've answered this from the beginning. I, I think you're done. Your argument's rinsed. Uh, Honestly, you haven't got an argument. Having knowledge about something, Ace, does not change uh, the action of whoever is being tested. If you're making an experiment, just because you're a scientist who knows that this is what's going to happen. For example, I don't know if you have kids or not. Probably not, right? Uh, you sound young. But anyways, let's say you have kids, right? You know your kid. You know your four-year-old, three-year-old, what they do. You know what they like. You know what they're going to – what they. if you put a couple of things on the table – you know your daughter's going to go for this color because you've seen it so many times. You have experience, whatever the case might be. That's not the point. 90% no, chance. You don't, you don't just, know, though. Wait, wait. You think you know, but you don't know. What they're no, gonna you okay, know. I know for 100% fact, if there's a tomato ketchup bottle on my, my ta dining room table, my youngest girl ain't going near that table. Okay. For a fact. Yeah. But, so, but, and the point, the point is... You, wait, 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 Hamza, do you think that's possible? It's, 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 it is it's, possible because it's in for, actuality, for, yes. My daughter to, hates ketchup. For that's you to hundred percent know that in no, all no, outcomes that's not that the she argument. will never reach for the ketchup. Just, well, one second, that's not the argument. One second, Ace. I mean, the he just said something that. Like, just what's, 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 let me just finish off this point. Do you think that's humanly possible for somebody to know hundred percent something that an outcome? Yes, true. Hundred percent. Okay. Okay. That's because I know my the... daughter, and I know my daughter. She's got a phobia for tomato ketchup, and she will not go near tomato ketchup if it's on a table. I know my daughter. What, 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 the phobia's going to disappear overnight? No, it, it's a phobia. She's afraid. She's not afraid of it. She just doesn't. She's, she's got a problem with it. I don't know why. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> but I know my daughter. Now, you wouldn't, you could never make that judgment. I could, because I know my daughter. And I've seen her reaction every time when we come near ketchup. She won't even take my plate to the kitchen if I had ketchup on my plate. Yeah, it's just my daughter. So I know the outcome of my daughter, because I've experienced her. Now, imagine this in, sorry, sorry, Khalil. Imagine the scenario of Allah, He knows His creation. And he not just knows his creation, he's witnessed their lives. So, I don't know what you, you, you're, you're flogging a dead horse, honestly, because you've got no argument. 
Okay, Your argument's been refuted by Sharif. I, I, I know, I know, but I, here's, here's the difference. Sorry, I don't think, I don't think I've got more guests. I'm, I'm not going to keep finish. flogging the dead horse. Khalil, finish your point. Sorry. Just one second, yeah. Ace. Uh, okay. Ace. So the point here that you're, fo you're focusing on the wrong thing. It's not about 99%, 90% accuracy. That's not the point. Now, what you what you got into right now is debating whether it's what Hamza will know 100%, or there might be a 1% chance that his daughter might, might actually go for it. That's not even the point. That was just an example to illustrate what we're trying to say. Because we don't have another unlimited being, all-knowing, all-wise, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to give you a limited example with some sort of percentage. But that's not the point. Focus on the idea. If you, if you uh, In our paradigm, Allah is al-alim, all-knowing, al-hakim, all-wise. That's it. This is a, If you're going to use our paradigm, you're going to have to take the same data and factors in the same equation, right? We so believe that Allah... No, we believe that... Just try to pay attention, please. Yeah, yeah. Just... I'm almost done. Because um, otherwise I'm going to lose my train of thought. Sorry, uh, sorry. Allah is the all-knowing, right? That's what that, that's our paradigm, right? If Allah knows what's going on, everything, then it, it is always going to be true. However, in the meantime, and let's use the word dimension, in a different dimension, in a matrix, in, in an experiment, in life, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, you have that free will, you know? The giants can win that game, they can lose that game. It doesn't matter. But whatever the consequence, whatever the result is, Allah knows it already. He's outside the time. That's it. So they have the free will. They can train hard. They can win the game. They might lose it. Whatever that result is, whatever that is, Allah already knows it in his knowledge. That's it. It's very simple. All right, okay. Ace, Ace um, you, you made a, I was going to ask you this question. How do you define free will? Um, uh, it's a set of everything is based off of past events you can't control the things you learn um i think sometimes even your thoughts that come up um arise in your head you can't really control either um like you don't know what type of language you're going to learn what you're going to learn in school um who's raised like all these external outcomes you can't control i also feel okay. like thoughts can't arise out of your head so um i, I guess that's a different discussion but it's more of speaking about that um, sorry, one last thing. I don't mean to be disrespectful here, but um, no, no but I'm like, I'm trying to understand before you go on. Yeah, how do you define free will? You don't really define free will. You just talked about how certain thoughts come into people's heads, environment, etc. Yeah, but I want I want you to explain to me how you define free will. Well, um, I I don't I don't think free free will is equal to choice. I think um we have okay, cool. the choice to do things, but uh, we can't like I can't control or even start to think about. The words that are coming out of my mouth right now like it's just sure. coming out it's just coming out of the yeah. darkness right now right okay S same as with so, your words i believe but yeah so ace how do you define free will you're saying it's not like it's synonymous to choice so i'm going to know how you define free will how i sorry i don't i don't really i mean so i can just repeat the question how can you how, define how, free will okay. oh okay well free will is the ability to you know like choose what you wanted to do oh, or choose yeah wait i thought you said free will is not free choice no choose what you want to do like the the belief that you can choose whatever you want to do that, that that's that's not my def that's the definition of free will right and i'm basically there's different definitions true. of free will there's different definitions of free will yeah a free will agent or a um, will agent yeah i feel so, like there's an illusion of choice but th well that's my that's you my can, thesis, you, right? can that... you can believe in whatever you know you can believe your own but what you're trying to do is you're trying to step within the Islamic paradigm and trying to say, well, there's a apparent contradiction. We're trying to say, no, there isn't an apparent contradiction. I think you sort of got it. I think you agree that there isn't an apparent contradiction. So you could say that a person is a free willing agent, even if he cannot choose otherwise. Ace? Yeah, if he's... Sorry, can, uh, it, can you repeat he that could... Again? He could be the center of the choice, even if he could not choose otherwise. He, he could yes. be the cause of his own choice, even if he couldn't. Yes, yeah? yes. People can make choices. Right. So, yeah. so the point here is this, is that that choice that he makes, the individual makes, yeah, is a choice yeah. that you know, is even if it's not the case that he, he could have done otherwise, it's still him doing it. Um, well, he's the agent. Go, well, 
yeah he's yeah he's the person that's doing it right but i don't think um i don't know if like do you think what's the, what's well the we're gonna have to go into a, we're gonna have to go into a discussion about the self right like what is no no self? what's the contradiction yeah. what's the contradiction well um, it was a contradiction i want to hear this contradiction now well the, the contradiction is um i guess like well i think I, I don't want to like start all over because I think we kind of no because I don't think there is a contradiction and whatever you tried to make a contradiction got smashed out of the park and and now you're just floundering. That's um, that's what's happened and that now you, you're talking about the self now. I, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just responding to his question. I'm just responding to his yeah. Question. I know I, mean, I know but I'm, I'm it's got enough, I've got enough <laughs> yeah. people waiting. Okay, came okay. with a, a pathetic no disrespect age. You came with a pathetic point, man. It's been Ace, so Ace. many times. That's, that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. I, I've been Can I get nice to Ace. I, I'm like the good cop here now. <laughs> but Ace, look, I, I think Hamza wants to move on, so I think that's why yeah, he's, yeah, no. uh, he's oh. But I just want to make a, a quick point, yeah? If you turn around and say that the act is from the individual, yeah, and he, even if he doesn't have the ability to choose otherwise, yeah, he himself made that choice. That's the point, yeah? So even if you want to say that God's knowledge means that the person could not have done otherwise, it does not therefore eliminate the fact that he still made the choice. It just meant that he couldn't choose otherwise. He still made the choice. He was causative of the action. Yeah, not God in this sense, unless somebody adopts a particular theological position within Ashadi school. But that's a separate point. So, but the, do you understand that issue? He is the cause of the act, not God's knowledge. Yeah? yeah. Now, if you want to say that he could not have chosen otherwise, that does not the fact that he was the cause of the act. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I'm taking up too much time here. Um, I understand what you're saying, Shreve. Uh, thank cool. you so much for everyone on the panel. Thank you, thank you Hamza. Uh, I'm going to check your stuff out a lot more. And uh, again, thank you for putting this together. Take care, Ace. All right, take John, care, did you want to say anything? Sorry, John. 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 No, I'm okay, Hamza. I was just listening. He's all good points. But uh, yeah, I think all the points have been made. I think it's very clear. This is a, you know, they're just coming and trying to refute and they're just conflating everything. And it's the same thing every week, subhanAllah. I know. So, um, right. but yeah. Right. Have a great panel, guys. Thank you so you much. Too, man. Thank I, you. I, I like Ace anyway. All right, Ace. But I just he started off. I never don't know what you guys were about and this that. And then he realized he wandered into the wrong place. His arguments are not going to fly here. They might fly on Facebook or this that the other. They ain't going to fly here, man. He came with a stupid contradiction that got refuted instantly, uh, with Khalil's beautiful analogy and Sharif's beautiful academic understanding. Just, of um, yeah, just just remind us, uh, Sharif, what was that point you said? How you articulated was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> no, you said uh, uh, Allah's <laughs> not causative. Yeah. yeah, I said Allah's knowledge is not causative of the act, even if I cannot act outside of Allah's knowledge. Yes. Or as I like to say, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen because it's written. It's written because it happened. Yeah. So the point being is that just because I cannot act outside of God's knowledge doesn't mean God's knowledge is causative of my act. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's good. Okay. okay. Doesn't sound as good the second time, does it? No. <laughs> no, no. The first time it was much more better. There's something not right. I have to go and check it. I think this one might be for John actually. Truth finder. Hello, are you on? Oh, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, that's great. I've been uh, this mic's just uh, you know made up from uh, headphones, so I hope you all can hear me clearly. So now, my argument is that I've come on this platform and be waiting for about half an hour to argue that the Quran does not is not from God. Sorry, That's what's my... your back? Sorry, what's your theological background, my friend? Uh, actually, I'm a deist. You're a deist. Yeah. What's your argument? So, my argument is that I'm going to prove through the sur uh, surah number twenty-three that the Quran is earnest in science and is not from God. That's a Hindu. You're going to prove what? It is. It is not from God. You're going to prove the Quran is not from God. Yeah. Who's it from? Uh, 
Muhammad Muhammad that guy must have been scripting it from somebody else. Oh, so uh, how come? How how confident are you, Truthfinder? <laughs> this doesn't sound great, does it? <laughs> I do not actually know. I have not seen or read about the records of whom has who has written the Quran. So I'm just yeah, 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 analyzing yeah, the Quran and finding yeah, something. Mi- right. yeah, which which that. verse of the Quran? Which verse of the Quran are you referring to? Finally, we got over here. So in Surah <laughs> number twenty-three, he said, "Finally, we got over here." He said, "Finally, we got over here." This guy's a wise. <laughs> so, Surah twenty-three. Yeah, yeah, Surah twenty-three, verse number twelve to fourteen. That's going to be under the spotlight now. So you're saying. Verse number 12 to number yeah. 14 is going to prove yeah. the Quran's not from yeah. Allah. Oh. Yeah, exactly. And right. indeed. And create... I'm going to also, uh, can you wait for a second? I want to complete my sentence, my statements, so you can then read out the Quran. I'm going to also source other. Hold on, uh, what's the uh, chapter again? This, wait, 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 what's the chapter again? Hold on. Chapter, chapter 23. Chapter mean? number 23. 23. It's about the Allah. Surah Mu'minun. Allah, what Allah, Allah. Allah. Oh my giddy aunt. Is he what is verse? he going there? Are you yeah. really are you, are you really going yeah. there? What verse? What yeah, verse? Of course. I'm gonna go there. Uh, and oh, indeed uh, yeah. let me read it. Bismillah. And indeed, we created humankind from an extract of clay, then placed each human as a sperm drop in a secure place. Yeah. Then we develop the drop into a clinging clot of blood, then develop the clot into a lump of flesh, then develop the lump into bones, then clothe the bones with flesh, then we brought it into a being as a new in, brought it into being as a new creation. I'm sorry? But the I memorized this verse. I know it by heart. So the point that I want to make is first of all in this verse, verse number twelve. It states, We have indeed created man from an extract of clay. Meaning, it is referred here as Adam by the, the Mufassirin, other Tafsir experts. So, the this Adam, this mythical Adam, supposedly was 90, 90, 90, 960 foot tall and lived for around a thousand nope. years. La, 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 is, this why, is this why yeah. you left Islam? No, he's not. He's not he, he was never Muslim. I think. I think he's just a Hindu who's like, uh, you know, watch a lot of. Come uh, on, uh, you think uh, Hindus memorize verses from wait, the Quran? Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying? Are you saying you, you were Muslim? Yeah, I was Muslim. Okay, what do what do you say I'm... in sujood? What do you say in sujood? <laughs> so, other Rubilas in three times, you can also say other Askar. I have learned it from. Wait, what do you say in sujood? You say what? What do you in say? Sujood, you say what? Anar, Rabbi, Subhana Rabbi Lala, you say three times. You may also increase it by five, seven, nine, and so on. You can also add the Askar, I think. And there are other legal maxims that are prescribed for it in Zadul Mustaqni and the big books. What? So I'm not a Hindu man. You got okay, it? Okay, which country anyway. are you from? Huh? Which country are you from? I would like to keep that anonymous. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, how confident are you about these arguments? Why don't you put your camera on? Okay, uh, the problem is that I haven't got the chance to actually present them. So how can I tell you that they're true? What are you talking can I about? present the arguments now? No, no, you've said to read from the Quran, which yeah. I did. And you said them mm-hmm. verses prove the Quran is not from Allah. How? Yeah. All right. So there you, are you, you, you contradictions in those verses. So what's the contradictions? What's yeah, the contradiction We have created man from an extract of clay. The extract of clay here uh, is clay has many components such as aluminium, silicon. Uh, uh, let me pull out a reference for you. The rather just, ironic just, fact, just while all going, the yeah. elements keep yeah. going, okay, for minerals from earth, and then what, what, keep going. What's the like uh, aluminium, like aluminium, yeah. oxygen, okay. silicon, and other things. The problem is uh, that carbon? in the human carbon? body, carbon in the human, yeah, carbon. I'm referring to Adam and also the subsequent generations of Muslims now because no. clay you say, has sorry, aluminium. Just, 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 sorry, I'm just not understanding. Yeah, so you're saying that the term clay 
yeah. because the term clay refers to like a silicon based uh, you know uh, material that therefore that could not be the basis of Adam alayhi salam's creation no i'm saying that the it is a scientific contradiction that uh, silicon and aluminium have no known roles to be played in the human body okay truth can i it's can i maybe make a maybe, maybe make a bigger argument for you you sure do you think it's scientific that human beings came from clay in the first place or even came from soil if you want to use that i am on and you know, the object. i have not researched <laughs> i am have not researched on the issue of evolution if that's what you're referring no, to but, no, but do, do, do you not understand that the verse itself is saying yeah. that human beings even if you take the word yeah, play out of it it's it's making the yeah. claim the verse is making the claim that human beings came from an inanimate object Shouldn't that make you sort yeah. of think, hold on, this verse is not about a scientific, empirical observation here. No. This uh, is about something... The is about is also not... Uh, I'll let you speak. This is, this is referring to a miraculous event. It's not, it's not telling us to observe some reality. No, the Quran being, here is not it's referring to a miracle. Object. It's referring to uh, knowledge of embryology. But that knowledge of embryology is exactly incorrect. We will get to That's the other point. verses. Truth, we will yeah. get to the other verses. I'm just saying uh, that you're, you're trying to use a verse which is quite clearly a verse about something which is a miraculous event. Yeah, which means, yeah. therefore, it's not a scientific claim. And then saying it's unscientific <laughs> because it uses like clay aluminium. You're really for a sci unscientific clay? This is the clay from the earth. We no, the, the, verse, the verse is making a the verse is not making a scientific claim. The verse is saying there's a miraculous event that occurred. Yeah. The miraculous event is not something which is going to be observable through science because it's by definition a miracle. So if uh, so, if I'm saying is that water, you can't. Science you, would not find that it was not created out of water. It look, it like, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Yeah, if yeah, we, sure. if Muslims say, if Muslims claim that the Prophet peace be upon him split the moon, and then somebody turns yeah. around and says, "But I don't see a crack in the moon. How could it have yeah. split and then come back together again?" Yeah. The point being is, yeah. it's a yeah. event. It's not an event that's meant to be referencing something of a physical phenomena that can be investigated today. So if well, the funny so, thing Allah is Allah Allah said, so as an example, as an example, as an example, truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said he created human beings and it's within his power from tin foil. Yeah? Yeah. That doesn't mean that now I have to go and investigate whether we have tin foil in our DNA. That just that but just we should have characteristics. some characteristics of tin foils, shouldn't we? Right. Can, can I just deal with this? Can I just deal with this fool quickly? So, huh? Okay. Does uh, the human body contain I'll, aluminium? I'll summarize it. I'll summarize it in 30 seconds. No, 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 uh, no. You, you waffled enough now. You waffled enough now. Um, does the human body contain aluminium? I waffled. Yeah. Yes. Um, does the human body traces. contain aluminium? In weird traces. In... I'm asking you a question. Trace does amounts. the human body contain aluminium? Trace amounts. Does yes it contain no? it? Yeah. Yeah. Does, it contain, does, it, does uh, it contain silicon? Does it contain silicon? Does it contain silicon? Does it contain silicon? Yeah, indeed, it does contain silicon. Of course silicon. it does. Of course it does. Yeah, right. It does. So, right. So, and the thing is, this is this is the amazing thing, right? Are you an embryologist? No, not exactly. Right. So, how are you investigating embryology then, if you're not an embryologist? I don't understand. I'm studying papers, scientific research, scientific journals. Okay. On this. Have you studied what Dr. Keith Moore said about this? I I see Keith Moore, yeah. And you studied, studied Keith Moore himself said Who knows more about embryology, him or you? Huh? Who knows more yeah, about embryology, he, him or you? Keith Moore. I can confirm. He knows more than you. Yeah. But what does he say about is, the embryology? What does he say about the embryology in the Quran? He says about embryology in the Quran that is accurate. Right. He says accurate. So who would know yeah. if the Quranic embryology is accurate? You or him? Yeah, a person with the scientific uh, knowledge and with so what you scientific doing knowledge here? of the required subject and and Arabic knowledge of the required subject. No, forget that. The point here is this. Yeah, you can do not know embryology. You don't know Arabic, is... though. <laughs> if huh? I've, you don't know, the, I've read the lexicon. Uh, Lane's lexicon. 
Truth yeah. finder. I don't know why did you add the, the Arabic. You don't know Arabic. Like he's, like he's an Arab. <laughs> like you don't know Arabic. You don't know Arabic. No, and you don't I'm know not Arabic. an Arab. I just uh, love to used to love oh. to recite the Quran a lot. Yeah, well, the point but is this. Not make the point me is Arab. this. An embryologist like, scientist the point is, says yeah. you're wrong. Yeah. And an another embryologist scientist, scientist says, you're wrong. says that the Quran embryology is not right. The embryologist scientist says you're wrong when yeah. trying to make that. And another claim. embryologist scientist says it is not right. Hey, hold on. I'm, just, I'm really confused right now. Not right. Truth uh, finder, I'm really confused. Yeah. Like, what's your argument so far? So, uh, hold on. My argument was uh, this was only a part of mine. Okay, I'll let you speak. Wait, wait, wait. I'll let I you really speak. just want to kick him. Where do you believe oh, people come from? that stupid voice. Like, where do you believe we come from? Where do you believe people come from? From where? Semen. No, no, from where? Originally? From another planet or from Earth? I'm going to get a cup of tea. I'm ready for an issue. Uh, do you believe in evolution? Where do you believe we come from as a human race? I am ready on the issue. I have not researched it. Okay, well, what are some of the options out there that you're considering, that you might think you've been studying, you've been researching? Uh, like, there are two we... other options for now. Creationism. There's would, you say, would, you say that, would you say that we came from Earth somehow through some process of development? Even though if you're I can't object it. I can't object yeah. it. Right. And then Allah is saying we came from Turab, from Thin, yeah. from Earth. What's yeah. the problem? Um, what is the problem, Akhi? The problem is that uh, we do not have essential overlap of the elements that are found in play with our body. Because Allah says that we are made from an extractive clay, the best part of clay, the essential part of clay. Look up the lexicon, I can bring it to you. So that's oh, oh, an wait, contradiction. Oh, no. what, what? Okay. What did you say? Repeat that again. You didn't understand what he said? Huh? He, he, he's arguing. He's, he's trying to argue that because we are not, we're not like clay people, that therefore, for some reason, Quran <laughs> is wrong. Oh, I'm gonna, can I just kick him? Can I just kick him? He's not oh, serious. Oh, no, no, I want him to go to the Come next. On. I want, at least, I, I, want, I want at least him to admit. I want him I to at least trolling. admit. I think he's that, trolling. That, brother, sure that, yeah. I think he's trolling. He's I trying to get Are you trolling? Are you trolling? Right. No, bro. I'm just serious. He's trolling. He's trolling. He's changed his accent three times. Let's get rid of him. No, it's a style of. I've got loads of people speaking. waiting. They don't need this joker. But truth, you you understand the point. The verse is I'm talking sorry, about a miraculous event. From you. Okay, you can kick him now. That's I'm annoying when people say that. I don't understand. Like, like, uh, if you say that an airplane is made out of metal. Like, does it have to be an actual metal or like extra? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't understand this argument. Hello, guys. You know, how are you? Know, yeah, Kurdish. One second. Well, you know, the problem is, is that the verse he's pointing to is a verse about something which was a miraculous event. Now, what he's trying to say is because it's a miraculous event that God did, then God would have had to, therefore, you know, He's trying to rationalize it in his head how it would therefore look. So therefore, human beings would not have carbon based uh, or uh, have silicon technology or something crazy like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the key point is that the verse is talking about something which is miraculous. It's not a scientific point that it's trying to say. Yeah. Yes, Hamza's right. We do have like trace elements of silicon and aluminium and iron and minerals. And carbon, and hydrogen, oxygen, water. How would the author of the thing. Quran have known that if it's not Allah? But but I'm just saying is that even if even if there's 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 no connection yeah, yeah. between I get you, I get you. And human beings, yeah, it doesn't matter because it's a miraculous event. Now he has to now show that the is saying that we are physically composed of the exact same material, which is not what the Quran is saying. But just so happened, but the irony is, we just so happen to be. Yeah, we do contain yeah. aluminium, we do contain silicone, we do contain carbon. So whatever the con what clay contains, we contain. So it's not even you can't even argue, even if you wanted to argue against the science. Yeah. Mm. It's just a non-argument. Can't argue against that. Can't argue against the. I mean, talking about the embryology. I mean, it makes me laugh when people come on here, so I say, "Oh, the embryology is wrong, and the Quran got it wrong." Yeah, and you're like, "Wait a minute, why is this embryology yeah, I think what, got it right?" Well, he'll try and point to Hamza. He'll try and point to the verse where it said that the bones and then the muscle. Yeah, yeah, but it's been discussed. I mean, they even they have even discovered that they, it's the cells. The, the cells do fall before. So, we, but we, even, I mean, if, to... even if you want, even if you want to argue that they form, uh, that the they form differently. 
the verse, if you look at the verse, doesn't actually use an order. Yeah. Yeah. Between them. It's I've seen Dr. Imran like, answer this in so many ways, man. Yeah. But anyway, go on. Kurdish guy, I think that's for Khalil, isn't it? I think it's for John. Okay, go on, John. John's been silent, man. He's no. not come to the table. Hamza's what are you, what are you doing here, yeah. man? Instead of looking good like me, then speak. No, just you guys had it boxed off. I know. We're gonna let you deal with Kurdish guy. <laughs> Kurdish guy, speak yes. to speak to my All dad. Good. All right, mate. Uh, so I have like uh, two arguments. <laughs> One of them is like the continuation of uh, Ace argument, and uh, he didn't have any proof for that. Uh, he just busted it, busted him. Kurdish guy, so you're Muslim. Have... I'm, I'm ex-Muslim. No, ex he's that guy. Hamza, yes. do you not remember Kurdish guy? He's that guy who came up with that fabricated narration and claimed it was a hadith against the Kurds. Oh, right, no. Kurdish? We don't need this head. I, I, I remember him. him. I remember him. Yeah, I have... Unless he takes it back. Unless he takes it back. I him. take it back. Okay, just let me finish this one, please. You're taking it back? Yeah, I'm taking it back. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I have two hadiths. Hamza, can I send it to you, the hadith, so you can share it on the screen, you can read it? Or I should read it? No. Make your argument. Okay. So, uh, according to hadith, that uh, we do not have any free will, uh, free wills. God decided whether we are going to hell or uh, heaven, even before we were born. You get my point, so I can I can I can read the hadith for you. <laughs> I need an answer. Go ahead, yeah, man, go ahead. please go ahead. Uh, should I read it or I send it to you to share it on the screen? No, you already asked that question. He told you to read it. <laughs> okay, okay. Kurdish guy, do you want me to read it for you? Uh, which I one? know which hadith you're gonna quote. I think we all know which hadith you're gonna quote. Which but don't carry. I have two hadith. So the first I even know one which, is... I, I probably even know which website can I, you got. Can I, can I, no, 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 I'm, I'm, can I'm from... Can I ask a uh, Kurdish guy website. question? Kurdish guy. Yes. Yes. I, got a, I got a question for you. What is the point that you're trying to make? Uh, I'm not asking so, about the argument. I'm saying what is so, the over... Just listen to... Hear me out. What is the overall point? Are you are you trying to say that Islam is so false? The, that there is... Hold on. That there is... An, Islam has unfairness. That the Prophet ﷺ was against the Kurds this time. What no, is no, no, the, no, no, no. What, what is I know what is the goal of this uh, whole argument that you bring in today? So the, the point is that is. whatever I do in my life, it doesn't matter. God decided whether I'm going to hell or this. Yeah, even so we, don't have, so we don't have so we don't have free will. You're saying that we, we don't have, we free, don't have will. free will. No, we don't. Okay, that's your argument. Good. Now go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, How does that refute Islam? Just a quick question. How does that refute Islam? Uh. It refutes Islam because this is from uh, Islam's God, from Allah. But how does that refute Islam? Let's say, let's say, for for argument's sake, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created us without free will. How does that refute Islam? So, what is the point of Islam then? It's, oh, it's an expression of God's will. That's it. Hey, brother. If, if, if I don't Allah have free will, what's the wait, point? Wait, of wait, Islam? wait. Uh, what brother is asking you is, you asked, what's the point, right? The point yeah. is ibadah. Allah says, "Wa ma jinna wal ins illa li I have not created ins or jinn except uh, so they can make ibadah, worship to me. Okay. So let's say, let's say what Brother Sharif is saying now. Let's say there is no free will. How does that refute Islam? If we were just created for worship, how does that refute Islam? Okay, according. Does it, please let, let me read the hadith. So according. No, to hadith, I want you to make the. I want you to explain to me how this refutes Islam because that's the initial claim that you're saying. If, if, how, God how does, how do, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you don't have free will, how does that yeah. refute from being true or false? So what's the point of worshipping him? That's my point. I don't know. You don't have a choice. Do you want you don't have me. a choice, brother. Kurdish, you don't have a choice because you, you're ordained to worship. And those people who are not ordained to worship, they're not ordained to worship. End of. Salaam alaykum, Shabir. Salaam alaykum. Um, I, you, you well, it doesn't, it doesn't refute that's the point that i'm trying to yeah. say is you bring up a hadith yeah and saying therefore you're compelled does not refute islam you have to do more work okay yeah? but you, you, you do don't do need to read the to hadith I, I don't know why you have to demonstrate that there is a contradiction 
I'm trying to help you, to be honest, Kurdish. I'm trying to, before you formulate your, your, your quote, the hadith, I'm trying to help you. You have to demonstrate that here's Islam says X, and this is where Islam says not X. And that's impossible. Okay. That's a contradiction. So you have to demonstrate. You can't just say, oh, Islam believes that we, are, we have uh, no free will. Therefore, Islam is wrong. Because you have to say, no, but free will does exist. Or you have to say, ah, but in Islam, it does say free will exists. So you have to demonstrate some sort of contradiction, an internal or an external contradiction. At the moment, all you're saying is, this is what I believe Islam says. Yeah? And then you'll quote some This is hadith. not my belief, sir. This is not my belief. This is, this is from Sahih. Uh... No, this is what you're saying. You have Kurdish guy. You have to understand. Last time, last time you didn't, you did, you didn't even have the proper understanding of the Arabic language when you were quoting the hadith, yeah, from a Kurdish website, and you're quoting I'm... something which was so random and considered completely fabricated. It was just unbelievable. You didn't even have the references correct upon the hadith. Okay, yeah, I have, I have the hadith eight hundred years now. after the yeah. oh, a couple of hundred years after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So I'm trying to help you. You have to demonstrate that the so let's say let's say let's give me i'll give you a practical way of solving this yeah or helping you you have to okay. say oh the quran affirms free will here Ah, oh, the quran denies free will here here's a contradiction that's one argue that's one way to present your argument another okay, way to present your argument is to say here the quran says x but we know x is not true yeah for other okay. reasons, external reasons, and then you present it that way. So, quoting hadith and saying it calls is is results in determinism does not in any way refute Islam one way or the other. It's just a, a propositional statement of what you think. Yeah, you think Islam believes or states. Okay, you you guys refuted this guy that we have free will will. And I, I, I say that I prove to you we don't have free will. That's my argument. I don't know why it's so confusing for you. So you now have to give me two texts. Well, it's no, not I your argument, is it? It's Sharif's argument. <laughs> <laughs> you have to give me two. You have to give me one text that says Islam affirms free will and another text that says Islam does not affirm free will in the same way at the same time. Uh, That's I don't how have, you have to do it. You I have don't the two have a text. text that I don't have... You you should have you you have it. I mean, I think you you're have the, the one making the claim, that, brother. You're the one that's making the claim. This is my point. If you're not going to be able to formulate an ap appropriate argument, yeah, it just even a construct an argument against Islam. There's no point having this conversation. Yeah, you can call the hadith, but then all you're just simply saying so is that I believe this the, is hadith. What the hadith. You believe the hadith. That's what you say. I'm saying if you can quote the hadith and you can say this is what I believe it says. Yeah, yes. but what you can't do is then say, therefore, it's Islam is wrong. Okay, All I read you the can hadith, say is, this and then is what you I infer from the hadith. I read the hadith, and then you explain to me. Okay, let him just read the hadith. No, I don't okay. want I, look, you know what, Samza. I'll let him read the hadith, but just Kurdish guy, we're not here to make your argument, you are here to make your argument. I did. Well, I did I'm my, not here to turn I around and I, I got hadith, and you tell me why I'm wrong. No, you, you, you make the argument. This is how I, you I, make the argument. Eventually. You are the only one who have problem with my argument. Can I make his argument for him? No, no, let him make it. <laughs> Can I make it easy for you? Honestly, his argument is so simple. I don't know what he's doing. Okay, should I read it? What's your argument? What do you, do you actually understand what so, Shri is trying to tell you? The argument is that in Islam we do not have free will. God decided everything. So how's that an there argument? Is that God that's, just a, that's, just a, that's just a claim. That's just an explanation. Okay, I, I an argument? Hadith, then you you think this is a claim or this is a fact. How is that an argument? So the argument is that you say that we have free will. I say we don't have free will. I have proof for that. So, so you think we don't well, have free will? Huh? He's saying that he can demonstrate there's no free will based upon based on the hadith. hadith. Yeah, but you know, but you know what it is. Let's say, let's say he convinces us all. Let's say he convinces us all. The hadith says we don't have free will. That still doesn't refute Islam. That had a wrong understanding of what Islam said on the subject matter. That's all it says. 
This is okay. my point, so, Curtis. You're so not the... refuting Islam by just presenting a hadith and saying the hadith says we don't have free will. You have to say hadith says you don't have free will here. Hadith says you have free will here in the exact same way, in the exact uh, you know, in the exact same three. way. Therefore, it's a contradiction. I think you need to explain to him what you're doing right now. Do you understand what's happening right now, Kurdish guy? Brother Sharif is helping you develop the argument. Okay, I don't know. I, do, I gave you because my otherwise, idea. otherwise, otherwise, let me just say why, uh, Kurdish guy, because otherwise, you're not presenting an argument. You're just saying that uh, you don't have free will. Okay, so so let's say we don't have free will, and then what? So if I don't have free will, then Islam is wrong. Why? why no. Oh says, why, says why would you? Okay, okay. See, uh, why would you worship a god if he decided before you? Because born, I don't have free will. I have to, to do it. You are going to hell if before even before you were born. Because because you're <laughs> Kurdish guy. Do you think we have free will, Kurdish guy? According to the hadith, no. No. Do you think? No, I don't. So you think, hold on, so <laughs> your argument is, I personally don't believe in free will, Hadith says we don't have free will, how does that now refute Islam? I was a Muslim, so <laughs> I'm talking about in the in, in, in that a Muslim perspective, then. I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't talk about it in my perspective, I don't believe in any God. So, yeah, so Islam, I, doesn't, I, so Islam doesn't disagree with your world view then? Uh, Islam agrees with your world view? Sorry, I didn't get that. So, according to you, yeah. you believe Islam agrees with your worldview? No. Well, you just said Islam doesn't have free will. You don't believe we have free will, so you, you're agreeing. Uh -huh. So, why did you leave Islam? <laughs> uh, this, is, this is like a question which <laughs> you cannot answer in one Did you or have two free will to leave Islam? Kurdish, did, uh, did, 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 did you have free will to leave Islam? Yes, I did. Did you choose? I didn't believe the I didn't believe the religion. That's why I left. No, but did you I choose not to believe? I chose yes. So you have free will now. You did have free will. Yes. Did you? You, just, you don't believe in free will. From my perspective, I believe it. But from God's perspective, <laughs> there's no free will. <sighs> I don't know. So now you do God believe in free will. So, so you do believe in free will. The problem is that you don't let me read the hadith and. I don't know why. You shame of it or what? Do you believe in free will? I believe in free will, yes. You just said you don't. From my perspective, for me, yes, I have a free will. Well, you I, just said I, you didn't. I, you said you just you just said you didn't. As a person, I I, I, I left Islam. This is my free will. I know you left Islam, so you agree there is you just said there's no free will. In Islam there's no free will. No, you your worldview there's no free will. I don't know that that's what you're saying. That you, that's it, yeah. No, that's what you're saying, not what I'm saying. <laughs> Hamza, I don't know why why you don't let me read the hadith. That's a because problem. you're not making an argument. You have to make an argument first. Okay, okay. You have let's to be begin. able to. If you, hadith, hadith, if you read let's the hadith, hadith, if you read the hadith, Kurdish, I'm explaining to you. If you read the yes. hadith and you convince everyone here that the hadith says we don't have free will, and go, oh yeah, okay, yeah, we don't have free will. How does that refute Islam? It doesn't. That's the okay, point. Mr. Sharif. Okay, Mr. Sharif. Let's start again. I don't have an argument. I'm having a, a hadith for you. So please explain to me that we have free will in this hadith. I don't know anything. I just I don't need to explain to you. I don't need to explain to you, Kurdish, because you don't have an argument. This is my you argument. Don't, look, I, don't you can make will. an argument in a snap. There's an argument there begging to be asked. I really want to help him. <laughs> Oh, I God. really want to help him. Uh, Mr. Khali, do you know my hadith that you said I, you, you do? No, I said I, I said no. I know what hadith he uh, called. I didn't say anything. Can I just it's please the read about the son of Adam being chosen for hell and all that, Anna. Can I just please read the hadith and that's it? I don't think so. Uh, to be honest, uh, my personal opinion, Hamza, is I'll read the hadith after him. 
But just keep okay. It. If you got other people, if he's not, if look, the okay, reason I have another is, point. Okay, okay. The third is reason why. The reason why. Honestly, I don't mean to be. You know, I'm I'm being the bad cop here. But the reason why. Yeah, I'm because, telling you, I don't. I'm to be I have to. Be, I have to. The reason why is because you have to learn to make an argument. You have to be critical in your thinking. I don't know you why it's so come, confusing for you. You can't. Confusing come, for you. You can't come to a stream and say. You don't, I can refute Islam because I caught a hadith that says you don't have free will and then that's it. That doesn't refute Islam. I didn't say that. Yeah? I didn't say I came here to refute Islam. I don't know why you're putting words in my mouth. I didn't say so I what, what do you come Islam. here for? Because the whole point of the stream is either you come with an argument against Islam or you come with an argument to prove your I came here truth to tell you correct. that there is, uh, there is not uh, like, uh, we don't have to worship a God who decided even before we were born, we are going to hell or heaven. Well, you kind of do. Well, if you've got no free will, you kind of do. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just, just before you end it, sorry, I want to say something before I end it. I don't know if Brother Shabir wants to jump in to this or if you want to just end it, but yeah. Yeah. Just, just so you know, um, uh, Kurdish guy, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi I don't know if you read a little bit about Sirah and you know about Islam, obviously, a little bit. You said you're you a Muslim. You know there are ahkam, right? And there are there are some rulings that are applicable. For example, if someone steals, someone commits adultery. Yes, do you agree with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Do you believe if the Prophet ﷺ preached at the time, whom we believe wrote Islam, if he believed that there is no free will, don't you think that people around the Sahaba, people who understood Islam for him, would have questioned him? Well, if we have no free will, why are you cutting our hands if we stole? Why are you uh, stoning us? People have made the argument. If people who were introduced to Islam at first, the closest people to the Prophet them, people of the Lugha, people of the language and all, if they had slightest doubt about this idea of not having free will, then they would have objected to the fact that they can be stoned, that you can cut the hand Steve, or any type of punishment. Because they would have said, well, there is no free will. I'm sorry. Yeah, there is no free will. Why are you punishing us? It's all done by Allah. But no one ever asked that ridiculous question because they understood clearly from the Messenger وسلم, that we are responsible for our actions. Therefore, we have a free will. Okay, but the hadith that I have, heard, I have was stuck written. on this hadith, man. Did okay, you understand okay, what I said? They did, didn't... You just, did you understand what I just told you or not? Yeah, you, you told me, yeah. What did I tell you? Can you that... please summarize it in like a minute? Yeah, you told me that uh, if uh, someone steals and they get their hand, that Sahaba say, if we don't have free will, why we should get this or okay, this and, guy? In, in 1400 years of Islamic history, has it ever been mentioned by any Sahabi or Tabi'i or Tabi'i of Tabi'i or any Alim or any person of, or any student of us? Has this question ever been raised about why are you, why are we applying the hukum, the Sharia, the punishment or anything? Has it ever been mentioned? The answer is no. no. It was applicable. Which means people understood that they are responsible for their actions, aka they have free will. Shabia, welcome to the party. Uh, you muted Shabia. My point is that the, the hadith was written after, like many, many years after. One Muhammad second, Kurdish. Year. One second, yes. Kurdish. Let, let Shabia talk a second. Sorry. Okay. He's muted. You're muted, brother Shabia. Shabir, you're muted. You're muted. Let me unmute you. Can I unmute you? There you go. You muted yourself again. You're still muted. Do you mind me asking? Can you hear me? Yes. Kind of. Hi, can you hear me? Can you can hear you now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Kurdish guy, hi. Hi, how are you? I, I, I've been having this problem since I've been trying to come on. How is that? Yeah, that? probably, I don't know, it's probably with your mic or something, I don't know. Can you hear me? Maybe take out the headphones, maybe? We can hear can you. Can you hear me? Oh, we can't. Yes, we can hear you. You might need to come, go off and come back on. 
there's a problem. They, they, yeah, there's something. You know what, uh, Hamza? I'm going to I'm going to switch on to phone. Okay. Yeah. So like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Do that. Do that. Is my mic loud? Exceptionally loud. It's uh, better than mine. <laughs> People are complaining. Oh, how much I turn your mic down? All right. I just want to kick this guy. Oh, it's Hadith. I want to make his argument. I think it's a good argument if he knew how to present it. It's, it's a fair argument. But the problem is that I don't know make how, how to make the argument. That's your problem. You, do, you don't have... Uh... Like a good, you know the argument, but you want it to come out from my mouth. Well, Hamza says he knows your argument, yeah. But I'm. I think what, it's a the fair reason, argument. The reason why, the re, the reason why I'm being forceful on this point is because we won't resolve the the problem because you're going to quote hadith, and we're going to go round and round and round to try and talk about this and how it does or does not refute Islam. Yeah, so this is the problem. This is why this is why with the very first guy that came on and he had this, you know, you give him chance. experience. You give, you, you give this the reason to... why Yeah, Kurdish, let me the reason why I was asking him questions because I'm trying to understand what his argument is. I'm trying to understand get to the core of it and then we can have a conversation about it. But what you're doing, Kurdish, you're just quite hadith and saying this hadith says this, and then we're gonna say okay and and then you're going to say, well, therefore, Islam's wrong. And we're like, well, how does it make it wrong? And then you're like, but why should I worship God if I'm compelled? Well, you're compelled. You don't have a choice. <laughs> you don't. But the thing is, Sharif, there is, there, yeah. there is an argument, I think, that should be responded to, which someone who's a bit more clever than this guy would come with. And I think it'll be good to present it and respond to it. Honestly. Well, I'll let you present it and respond to it then. But I'll let Kurdish guy quote his hadith because he's so. I don't want to respond to it. I want you to respond to it. Okay, oh, thank wanna... you very much. Go on, thank man. you. You got to. You got to. Oh, go on. Uh, Aisha says, "God must." Oh, forget, forget the hadith. We could, before we make the argument first. We'll make the argument first. Shall I make the argument for him? Go on and make the argument. Uh, you right, know the you. argument, and uh, you just you don't want to hear the hadith. That I, that's a problem. I don't know why. The hadith is part of the argument. You class. First thing we have to establish the argument. Then you can present your premises. So the argument is that uh, God decided everything for us. We don't have uh, our argument. any choice with our actions. Okay. Can I make okay. the argument, please? Do Understood. Much. I don't know, honestly. No. <laughs> it's not an argument. But there's a tasty argument in there that needs to be responded to. And no, this hadith needs to be read and understood. I'm the, yeah, if you want to make the argument and then let Kurdish guy quote his hadith because he's so desperate. Can you, can, can, you, right. can, you, can you list some Christians in? Um, uh, I don't know. We'll find some Christians. Don't worry. Okay. Um, to John, by the way, John. I don't know what happened to John. He disappeared. He must have lost his uh, uh, thingy. I don't know. I think Shabir's back. Yeah, Shabir's back. All right. Uh, I'll present the argument. Let Shabir answer it. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you now. Much, much oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. But I, I, I think this argument needs to be made because. He kind of implied it when he mentioned the other guy. So, uh, uh, shall I do it or not? Please do it, please. I just want to uh, read the hadith. That's all I, I know. He wasn't just read the hadith. No. <laughs> because all I right. want to know. All, all right. right. MashaAllah. Right. MashaAllah. Right. Right. We'll, 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 we'll double team Sharif and Shabir. How's that? All right. <laughs> At least we know he likes Sunnah. No, I think I think it's a fair. I think there is an argument there, and I want to. I want. I want to see the answer to the to the argument. Can you tell us what the argument is, Hamza? Oh, yeah. So the argument is this. According to the Quran, it seems to say that you have free will. Allah is saying choose, refuse, and all of these things. So when you read the Quran, you come out with the impression that you have free choice. Then there's a hadith that kind of contradicts that. Because in the hadith, it seems to imply you that Allah determines who does what and who goes where. And basically refutes what Sharif said earlier about the idea that Allah doesn't cause or determine actions. Whereas the hadith kind of implies it does. If this hadith is true, then that would contradict the Quran, where the Quran, so the hadith indicates there's no free will. The Quran claims there is free will or indicates there's free will. So we have a contradiction here. Thank you. That's what I said, but I didn't say the Quran part. 
That's all in different. That yeah, but that's what he was I missing. Was, that was a, that was yeah, a bloody. I said in Muslim, in Islam. I said in Islam. So. So that's the argument. Yeah. I do. Do you mind? Give me a few minutes to catch up, Sharif. Okay. Let me just the hadith. Do you want to quote the hadith, Kurdish guy? No. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm reading it. So it says, Aisha said, God Messenger was invited to the funeral of a boy who belonged to uh, the Ansar, and I said, Messenger of God. This one is blessed. He, he is one of the young ones in paradise for he has done no evil, been too young for that. He replied, it may be otherwise, Aisha, for God has created some to go to paradise doing so when they were still in their father's lands. And he has created others for hell doing so when they were still in their father's lands. So, meaning, if there is a child, was born within a day or within an hour this child dies if god decided this child is going to hell he's going to hell there's no mercy there's no i don't see any uh godly thing in this but that's not the argument <laughs> <laughs> so it proves that we don't have free will god decided no, whether i'm argument. going to hell or i'm see uh -huh. if, if we die you guys, you guys are Muslim. I, I, if God decided you are going to hell, you are going to hell. And I'm an atheist. If God decided I go to paradise, I'm going to paradise. So where's the free will? I'll let you deal with this one. <laughs> I'm going to let Shabir oh, deal with it. Do you, you understand, Hamza, why I wanted him I... to present his argument <laughs> and then quote the evidence to back it up? Because he just changes the arguments. Okay, he doesn't even know what argument he's actually arguing. Is he making a moral what is your claim? To that? What is, is he your making about to that? a claim about free will and determinism and how there's an internal contradiction? Is he trying to argue an external contradiction? If God decided I go to hell, where's my yeah. free will? No, but, the, uh, but the hadith, I, I forget you, Kurdish. I'll make the argument. Right. Um, so, because I think is I think it, it's it needs a response. Right. Um, because the the hadith does imply. You don't have free will. Allah is going to determine you for hell in your womb of your mother or determine you for paradise. Therefore, how, how can you have free will? All right. Uh, uh, Brother Hamza, are you, are you going to tackle that or you want me to say something about that very quickly? For me? I'm yeah. making the argument. I'm making the okay. argument. So, so, so I, I, don't, I don't even know how is this even an argument uh, by Kurdish guys, to be honest with you. All the hadith is saying is that the determination of Allah's destiny to go either to paradise or hell is based on his knowledge of what you're going to do. The hadith doesn't say that. Yeah, the hadith yeah, doesn't say that. Yeah, doesn't I know, but, that. But, but, but that's what it means. Based, no? on Islam, based on the Quran. We, we, we read the hadith in light of the Quran. We don't read listen. the hadith. On, no, no, no. Wait, listen it's to me. It's from our perspective. Listen. No, no, no. It's from the Quranic perspective. You yourself said that early. You said it does not match the Quran, where he said it does not match Islam. When Brother Hamza said the Quran, he said that's the only thing I didn't mention. I said Islam instead. But you're implying the Quran. We read the ha a hadith in light of the Quran. Mm. This means all the hadith is saying is that because Allah is aware, is, has the knowledge, is al-alim, of everything that will happen, you're already determined because he knows it. Again, back to the, back to the uh, teacher example that I mentioned earlier, just because a teacher went to the teacher of next grade and said you're going to have 15 students out of my uh, 20 people in this class, 20 students, right? Just because he's said that already, because he knows the students, it doesn't mean he's involved in their act. He knows what they're going to do because of his experience, etc. Okay. Okay, now sure, we're talking sure. about Allah, who's the all-knowing. He knows what the servants will do. Based on that, okay. you, could say the, you could say determined. But it is There's also based on them. And, and another thing also, another thing also, in Islamic paradigm, we enter paradise because of Allah's mercy, not because of our amal. We are told to do so, but at the end, we all know this. Any Muslim will tell you this. We still ask, we, we hope for Allah's forgiveness and rahmah to enter paradise. Okay, there's a difference in that uh, teacher and student thing. So, the teacher, uh, you see, knows, okay, and it's different that if the teacher decides who's going to fail. I, I can't hear you, Khalil. Hello? Hello? Oh, sorry, I, sorry I, was, I, I was muted, sorry. So, 
So, no, his decision uh, is not some sort of, uh, he's just randomly putting people because of some, uh, you know, uh, uh, without any fairness. No, his decision is based on his knowledge that he knows his students. That's why he's deciding that. So the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows the servant. He knows what you're going to do before you do it, or whether you do it or not do it. Or whatever option you choose, he knows already. And based on this data, the decision is already made. That where you're going to end up. Does that make sense? Let me just respond to this idiot in the chat. Why did Hamza hesitate to fear this hadith? We didn't hesitate to fear the hadith. We're waiting for the argument to present the hadith. Yeah. I'm the one who brought it out. What are you talking about? I could have just ignored it. Sharif didn't want me to the hadith to be brought out to the table because he knows it's a stupid argument. So, yeah? so uh, Kurdish few things, yeah. One, yeah. and this is what Khalil saying. When we when we look at theological matters, or even when we look at uh, jurisprudential matters, we don't just use one hadith. We have to use and survey all of the text in order to understand what the text is saying. And then we can bring out the meanings in order to reconcile the different texts. Do you I understand that point? That supports my... Do can you, you just understand give us the hadith the first? Sorry. Sorry, what was the hadith? Can you give us the hadith exactly the number? I would like to actually check it out. In the here. reference. Uh, Who wants the reference? Uh, uh, it is Al-Mishkat, book one, hadith 78. But do you understand the point that I was mentioning, Kurdish? That when you oh, when God. so when Khalil said this is the meaning of the hadith, and he said, No, no, that's not the wording. But the wording when you take the hadith, you have to all of the various narrations that are on the subject matter in order to understand what the meaning is. This is the second issue, which is also an important point that Khalil mentioned, is certain hadith are viewed in light of the Quran as well. So we have to view it with the paradigm of the Quran, yeah, it's like that's why it's considered the first source of the Sharia, yeah, uh, and Usul al Din. Yes, we don't think, yeah, so we don't think there is a contradiction between the two. The second, the the third issue is I can provide a reconciliation right now to explain how some how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be the creator of everything, including the uh, my ability to engage, my ability to go to hellfire. And at the same time, I still had choice. Okay, so uh, I lost my point. Cool. Uh, so do you want me to give you that or not? Okay, give Is me, that... give me. A... Right. So let, let me give you an example, yeah? So if I know a child likes chocolate ice cream and I present the child with chocolate ice cream, I know what the choice of the child would be. Okay, yeah. So I was the cause of the act, or I was the, I created the circumstances that the act was was going to be fulfilled. But yeah, I was not the cause of the choice of the child. Okay, you know that, yeah. Yeah. So this is to do with knowledge of, uh, or what they call middle knowledge, the idea that I know what would happen if an option was given, and therefore I caused the option to occur. Uh, or that in, that environment to occur with that particular option, I know therefore the person would take that option, even though I did not cause him to choose the option. So the hadith, sir, the the hadith is so you clear about that. Uh, let bro, me just make my point. Let me just yeah, make, oh, oh, make my what point. What is the hadith, bro? I can't find the hadith. Ahmed, uh, you said Mishkat uh, one seventy-eight, book one, hadith seventy-eight. What what is that? What I can't can, can, can send you this? the link in the chat. Yeah, please send me the link. So, Kurdish guy, the, the, what I'm talking about is a principle called Molinism. Okay. And Molinism is basically saying that it preserves God's, God's sovereignty as well as individual free choice, meaning that God is the cause of the outcomes of everything that people choose, while the choice of the individual was still uh, necessitated in in uh, in making the choice at that particular moment so as an example i'll give you another example if i say to a child here's chocolate ice cream here's strawberry ice cream and i know that the, the child will take the chocolate ice cream over the strawberry ice cream then i can create the scenario by which the choice would be manifested yeah okay what about if you give him uh the chocolate ice cream he like it or not 
uh, isn't it like your decision? It doesn't be. Yes, the, that's right. Uh, it's my de it's my decision to create the scenario. Yeah, that's what I'm but saying. it's not that's my. Decision, I'm not not causing. What's that? That's what I'm saying. It is God's decision, not our choice, not our decision. Like no, whatever you, you, miss, you don't understand the point. You don't understand the point. Under this paradigm, what we're saying, this example, what we're saying is that even if I create the scenario from which the choice is made, I did not determine the choice to be made. I'm reading the hadith right now. I don't even know where the argument is. I'm reading it at the moment. So the hadith says, I'm just going to read it in Arabic for people who might not have access uh, to the hadith. The, the no Arabic from the audience as well from the panel and I will translate it inshallah An Aisha Umul Mu'mineen qalat du'iya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila janaza janazati sabiyin min al-ansar faqultu ya Rasulullah tuba li hadha usfuru min asafiri al-janna lam ya'mal al-su' wa lam yudrikhu qala awa ghayra dhalika ya Aisha inna Allah khalaqa lil-jannati I'm not helping anybody bro <laughs> Uh, okay. That sounds like English. English. English, man. English. I was, I was doing that for the benefit of uh, the thousand people that are watching, so they can uh, get the whole context. They might not have access to to the to the link that he sent me, so they can actually understand the context. And I was gonna go after, but inshallah, khair. it's okay. So uh, my point is that, sir, see. It is clear yeah. that it sorry, is God. there's a value. Sorry, Khadir, there is a value if you read in the hadith in English again, and then the points of contention that he has, where he's trying to say it's determined, you can quote the Arabic and say, explain so, the Arabic. So, 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 so I'm not sure whether he his uh, uh, the issue is it. It may be otherwise, Aisha, for God has created some to go to paradise, doing so when they were still in their father's loins. And he has created others for hell, doing so when they were still in their father's loins. Is this where the issue is? Yes, and they are talking about a, a young boy who died. He had no. not had done no, no, nothing no, no, no. wrong, no, had done nothing it. evil. That's what no. I see. Read no, no, it. Read no. it. Listen, I, I, I was trying to. This is why. I, this is why I want to say in Arabic and English, it's particularly why. So the context of the hadith is this: there is a janaza passing by, right? There's a, there's a funeral about to happen of a yeah. little boy. So Aisha radiallahu anha has said. That this is Usfur, like a bird, you know, in paradise, yes. right? And the Prophet is telling her basically that Allah is reinforcing of the fact that Allah has created heaven, paradise, and hell for people who still in their father's loins. So all the Prophet is doing here is reiterating to Aisha anha, that Allah knows what's who's going to hell and who's going to father while they're still so, uh, who's going to hell, who's going to paradise. While they're still in their father's loin, uh, loins, it's not saying that this particular boy might be going to hell. That's not what it's saying. That was just the occasion of death, and she mentioned that this kid is a bird in paradise. So the Prophet is re uh, reiterating the fact that Allah knows who is going to this because He created this and this. Okay, we already so know. We already know, and in, in, in other probably dozens of other hadith that anyone that is born, right. And hasn't reached the sin of bulugh, right? Uh, which is puberty. They're not responsible, and they, they automatically go to paradise. This supersedes everything. So it wouldn't make sense for the prophet to be talking about this particular boy. He was talking, uh, general speaking, because it was the occasion of janaza, of a funeral, right, in front of him. And she made that comment, and he said he was re reiterating that the fact that Allah has created both paradise and heaven, and Allah knows. Who's going to go? Khalid, uh, Khalid. Uh, Aisha is talking about this boy, and yes. Muhammad could say, "Yeah, yeah." Let, let me finish. He says, "Aisha says this. Uh, he 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 has done. He, he didn't like do anything wrong in his life. He should be in paradise." Muhammad okay. could say, "Only God knows." Not saying that God created some for hell. God created some for paradise. Yeah, what's wrong with that? What is the problem? So the, what's wrong with that is that. Did, okay, uh, let me ask you this. Did, did, the, did the prophet so, did, did the prophet said that this kid might be going to hell? It says it might be otherwise. Yes. No, but then you have to keep reading. What happened? It says he created some for paradise, some for hell. 
See, see this, is more, the, more, this is a hadith I'm reading, more. which is not more. the one you guys are reading. There are even more. Uh, uh, I think we were in, in two different uh, lenses there. Have you read any uh, scholarly work about the hadith itself? Or are you making your own exegesis or understanding of the hadith? Because this is not how it's been ever explained by anyone. This is your own unique explanation. The hadith is only talking that uh, the Prophet is re-emphasizing the fact that he created uh, paradise and hellfire. And that he already decided who is going where. That's it. And the occasion <laughs> was, the occasion was yeah. death of the boy. That's why he brought up this idea. But it's not saying that this boy might be going to hell. He says, yes, he says that. No, he says, oh, let me read it. Uh, he is one of the young ones in paradise, for he has done no evil, uh, been too young for that. He replied, okay, so it, who's saying that? It may be otherwise. Who's saying it that? Be no, no. Before, before that, it may be otherwise. Who's saying that before? What you just said? I, I should say that. I should say that. The Prophet says, Okay, and then he goes and explains other things. He explains that Allah has created heaven, paradise, and created hellfire. Okay, he says and, it might be otherwise. And, and that, but the point of the meaning of it might be otherwise. The, the point, the point of it, is that only Allah knows who's going where, and and the point of it is that destiny. Allah has destined who is going to where, and of course, based on either on their amal, or based on the fact that Allah's mercy. He's not saying anything about the boys going to, to to hell. Okay, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. He says uh, uh, he uh, he decides who goes to hell when we are uh, before he he's born he was born okay yeah yes this is based on imagine he, this is based on, but but wait wait this is based on what according to Islamic paradigm how is Allah deciding I mean we not to ask that stuff Allah Adim we don't ask Allah but if we have to if we had to entertain this argument is that based on what I don't know you tell me. You say so based exactly. on their. Uh... So, so you have to, so you have to keep everything within the Islamic paradigm. You can't bring something and then make your own conclusion based on your own worldview, based on Islamic paradigm that is determined based on people's action and eventually based on Allah's mercy. Can, can, can I read my hadith? Sure. Yes. It's team Kurdish guy and me. So I, got, I want to hear a response to this. You see. Okay. All right. So I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, being asked about it. And the Messenger of Allah, blessed be upon him, said this. Allah created Adam. Then he passed his right hand over his loins and brought forth from him some offspring. And said, I have created these for paradise. And they will do the deeds of the people of paradise. Then he passed his hand over his loins and brought forth from his other offspring. And said, I have created these for hell. And they will do the deeds of the people of hell. A man said, oh Messenger of Allah, why then should we strive? The Messenger of Allah, blessings be upon him, said, When Allah, may he be glorified, exalts, creates a person for paradise, he causes him to do the deeds of the people of paradise until he dies doing one of the deeds of the people of paradise. And he causes him to enter paradise thereby. And when he creates a person for hell, he causes him to do the deeds of the people of hell until he dies doing one of the deeds of the people of hell. And he causes him to enter hell thereby. So we were talking earlier about causation. And this hadith um, is is implying causation, and I, I just I just like to say here. There's another thing that's there's another thing that's missing out here, and I just realized that as I'm reading the hadith again in Arabic, this is why it's important to read it. You know, the statement uh, that you read it in English, it may be otherwise. I don't actually uh, I don't I don't see that that's a proper way of translating it because in what Arabic, does the Arabic say what does so the Arabic say? It's the Prophet saying, "Awa ghaira dalika ya Aisha." Is it any other is it any other different than that, Aisha? This actually could be a statement of agreement. For example, Brother Sharif is telling me something, right? If I want to agree with him in Arabic, I say, ya Sharif. Is it any other than that, Sharif? Sharif is stating the fact, right? In uh, in Arabic language, a, a, a way or a form to agree with someone would be saying, ghaira dalika ya Sharif. Is any would it be any other than that, Sharif? This is actually a form of agreement. But which one? Which one makes more sense in the sentence? Your uh, your uh, translation or the English translation? It might be uh, otherwise, or uh, what do you say? No, uh, it will be this one, the latter that I just mentioned, because uh, no. literally when you keep reading, when you keep reading, there is no indication here that the Prophet ﷺ is saying that this kid is going to to hell. There is none of that. I'm, this is your only. This is your. I'll tell you why he said that. Is because it's related to the janazah, the funeral of a boy 
so you concluded this must to, must be about the boy. No, the Prophet ﷺ is making a statement about Allah's knowledge knows who's going where, and He created heaven and He created that because it was death that happened. The event is death, but it has nothing to do with the boy because in Islamic paradigm we know that anyone that dies at an early age before puberty, whatever, they go into paradise. We know that already. Okay, uh, I have another hadith that supports my point. Okay. Okay. Before uh, we move on, okay, before we move no. on, think, before we move on, do you understand, yeah. Khadij, do you, Have you sort of conceded to Khadil's point? I'm not agree with that. I'm not agree with that. Okay. Do, do Do you understand Arabic or not? I think you. I feel like you do. No, no, I don't understand Arabic. Okay. If you don't ask any, bring any of your Arab friends right now. Actually, call them right now. Text them. Put them on the phone. I don't know. I don't. I'm Kurdish. I don't have any Arabic friends. Like what? we have a different language. We have I a have, different language. I, I have Kurdish friends. So what? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm Arab. Like, see, he's not he's Kurdish. Kurdish. He doesn't this want is... Arab friends. Okay, we, so. We... No, no, Sorry. this is not like being racist or what. Uh, in, in, I, well, I we're we're already know your position about Arabs last time when you spoke to us, when you, when you thought the Prophet Sallallahu was racist. We already know your position. That's okay. No, no, no. But, any, but, but anyway, ask any, ask any of your friends about this hadith right now. Go to sunnah.com, same hadith you sent me, and tell them to read it in Arabic first. And I did ask any, them. They didn't have any answer. Anybody speak Arabic. Don't give them the English. Read Arabic. Uh, uh, they, don't speak Arabic. they don't speak any, Arabic. Okay, then why are you asking them? Ask someone who's <laughs> Arabic. And you'll find that it says, Is it, the best way to translate this would be, is it any other than that, Aisha? This could be a question mark, meaning you agree with someone. Okay, like could I you said please, you, like, uh, finish the sentence after that? Uh, in All English of the or? sentence. Yeah, in, 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 in uh, translate from I Arabic to English. For, for God has created some to go to paradise, doing so, when they were still in their father's loins. And he was created others for hell, doing so when they were still in front of his life. Now, let me ask you this. The Prophet ﷺ brought two examples of people going to paradise and people going to hell. Where do you come up? Where do you determine that this boy is based on this, that he's going to hell? Where did the yeah, Prophet because, say that? Because Aisha says, this guy didn't do anything wrong. He should yes, be okay. in paradise. But He's agreeing with her. He's agreeing no, with her. No, it might be otherwise. He no, 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 no. He's not saying that. He's agreeing. He's saying, Awa ghayra dalika ya Aisha. Would it be any other? Would it be any different than the Aisha? But does it make sense? Would it be any different? Aisha got created some for no. That it doesn't make sense. Like why? the otherwise makes sense. The English, the English, the translation makes sense. No. Why? 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 Why does it make sense? What I'm telling you. Explain to me why does it make sense. Okay, read it, please. Uh, it, it, what do you say? It, it would be what? So when when Aisha said what she said, radiallahu anha, right? The Prophet said. Is it, it, listen carefully, please. Please listen carefully. This is the last chance. And we're going to move on. Because we're okay. spending too much time. The Prophet says, it, Would it be any different than that? Oh, Aisha. Okay, would it be any different than that? Aisha. This is, a, a, as an Arabic God has created some. Listen to me, man. Wait, let me finish. As an Arabic speaker, I can tell you this statement is, uh, is, uh, uh, is a su'al, is a question. Of muafaka, you are agreeing with someone, and I give you an example multiple times. If any of the brothers on the panel said something uh, that is true, that is valid, in Arabic language, I would tell them, Like, would it be any different than that? Would it be anything other than that? It's a rhetorical question. Yeah, rhetorical. Would it be any other than that? He's agreeing that this kid is going to paradise, and the Prophet Sallallahu moves on from there, and to explain what's going on relating to death. And relating to people's destiny, such as this boy going to paradise. And he says that Allah has created paradise and created hellfire. And each person in their father's loins, they're determined whether they're going to go to paradise or to their uh, to hellfire. Okay. That's it. It's Khalid, very simple. Uh, okay, Khalid. I have, I have you, another, another hadith that supports my point. So uh, it is from Sahih Bukhari. No, no, uh, no, before we move on anywhere. Do you, understand, do you understand what I just told you? Yeah, I understand, yeah. What did I just tell you? Well, I'm not agree with that. Huh? Which I part am not, but, but I don't part? agree with that. You okay. say, you say that. Let me, let me, let me ask you this. Let yeah. me ask you this. You said you don't agree with that. Let yeah. me ask you this. Can you repeat the statement or the, the, the phrase in Arabic that you don't agree with? Uh, and tell me what it means. 
Which part you, you don't mean, agree? like in Arabic? I, I told you I don't speak Arabic, but I can read Arabic. But I don't. Then, speak what, then, 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 what part do you don't agree with? If I'm telling, I speak Arabic, and I, this is live, and it's recorded, and people can access this anytime, and I'm responsible for what I'm saying. I'm telling you, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying to Aisha, dalik. Would it be any different than that? Would it be anything other than that, Aisha? Oh, Aisha, he's agreeing with her that the boy is going to paradise, and yeah, he moves on. I get your point. Then, alhamdulillah, that's it. Okay. Shabir, okay. oh, Ramzi wanted to say something, didn't you, Ramzi? I was just going to give the simple example of, I mean, if you were to jump through a time machine and see the future, I mean, like Back to the Future, you see that movie, and you see what's going to happen, and then you go back in time, and you know what's going to happen, are you making that happen? No, you're not. Just because you know the future doesn't mean you're making it happen. This is a simply the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu clarifying that Allah has knowledge of the future and he knows what's going to happen. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that statement that Khalid just made right now in terms of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, when the Prophet asked the rhetorical question, can it be any other way? That's an emphasis on Allah's knowledge, knowing that he's, of course, of course Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows what's going to happen. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala isn't going to be wrong about the future. But to say that that means Allah is making it happen that way. I don't think you're responding to the argument though there. No, but the you're, you're responding to free uh, the idea of free will and predestination. But the issue is he no, said. No, but I think Ramzi, what Ramzi is saying is is that the hadith implies from its sharh is that it's referring to Allah's knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Now, what the Kurdish guy is trying to say is something completely different that it's not Allah's knowledge. What you brought, Hamza, was a different hadith and different narration. Um, so, what I would suggest. Kick Kurdish guy out and we'll yeah, kick him out and deal with mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, deal with mine. And I want to also mention another point as well because some people have said, Oh, why were you referencing Molinism? Which is what I mentioned. I'm not saying Molinism is true, I'm saying Molinism is a possible explanation that gets away from this idea of, um, you know, God's sovereignty over, over the creatures and potential, uh, and the fact that you can still have free choices. Yeah, so so just to repeat the point, it could be the case that I could create a scenario where I know exactly what the outcome is going to be. So if I create a scenario in which I present to a child chocolate cake and spinach, the ch child will eat chocolate cake. So I will create the scenario to determine. The, but me creating the scenario does not now create his will and choice. It's just that I know what he would do. Are you responding to my argument here? That can you be used for your argument, but I'm just saying is that some people say, "Oh, why?" Reasonable explanation. When you give possible explanations, it's like saying this could be the, a way of answering it, but the actual truth of the matter, in terms of the interaction between God's sovereignty and human free will, might be something different that we have not imagined. But it's not a contradiction. That's the key point. Okay. Right. First, I want to apologize Akhil, to stop him reading the, the hadith in Arabic. The reason I said no, no, the reason I said it was pointless exercise, not because the, the crowd might not understand it. Or, this guy's not going to understand it. He's not going to understand the point you're making in, in the Arabic. Do you no, get no, me? But, that's that's no, all I was saying. I apologize. No, I didn't mean no, to no, cut no. you off. Please, please, back Arabic. There's a reason why I was saying that is because I knew if I, once I read in Arabic, people uh, that might not have access to the hadith will listen to it, and Arab speakers will automatically know what I'm talking about because. That's it's a rhetorical question that the Prophet Hassan is agreeing with her. I purposely wanted to read the Arabic first because I don't do that in hadith. Go in English sometimes you don't get the proper uh, translation and you don't know whether it's a rhetorical question or not. Especially if you have people haven't studied Balagha, even a basic Arabic language, people that have studied Balagha and Sha'r and you know in Jahili of all, they wouldn't even understand these basics of that. That's why I did that, but apologies. Sorry. Right. right, can I present my argument now? <laughs> Who side you on, Hamza? <laughs> no, because I want because this is, I think this is, is a fair argument, and I, I want to hear the best response to it. Because I don't think what's been said so far responds to it, personally. Well, no, even I, I've not responded to it. With the... Kind of. Kind of let, me read, let me read it again. So it basically, oh. it's with regards to the, the verse of the Qur'an uh, in Surah Al-Araf. Uh, yeah. And um, someone asks, what does this mean? And Umar bin Khitab was asked about this verse. Yeah. Uh, then he said, I heard the message of Allah say about um, Allah created Adam, then he passed his right hand over his loins and brought forth from him offspring, like I said. This is the part. I've created these for paradise, and they will do the deeds of the people of paradise. So I've created these for paradise, and they will do the deeds of the people of paradise. 
Then he passed his hand over his loins and brought forth from his other offspring and said, I've created these for hell. And they will do the deeds of the people of hell. And then someone said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, why then should we strive? And then the Prophet said, when Allah may be glorified, exalt creates a person for paradise. He causes him to do the deeds of the people of paradise until he dies. Until doing one of the deeds of the people of paradise. And he causes him to enter paradise thereby. And when he creates a person for hell, he causes him to do the deeds of the people of hell until he dies, doing one of the deeds of the people of hell. And then he causes him to enter hell thereby. Now, this kind of implies, now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing devil's advocate or anything like that. It kind of implies the, the causation thing, what I was saying about earlier. Yeah. So I just, just want to hear an explanation to that. That's all. Sorry, Hamza, are you reading Jemmet Thirmadi 3075? Or does it give a reference? Um, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a few. There's, yeah, there's Tarmidi, there's Abu Dawood. Because I found yeah. one with, with very similar wording, and it's graded Daif. I, mean, I don't know if it's the no, same. No, there's different. There's, no, it, it just go on, because I'm reading this in Islam Q&A. So they, they oh. explain uh, part of it's missing, doesn't mention the Quranic verse. Um, it doesn't but give the, the gist of it is there. Does it give it a reference or no? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically... Um, so he says, Imam at tirmidhi Mel of Mercy, said this is a Hassan hadith. Muslim Ibn Yasser did not hear directly from Umar. Some of them stated that in this isnad between Muslim Ibn Yasser and Umar, there is a man who is unknown, Majnul. Um, okay. Ibn Abdul Bar said this is a hadith with interpreted, inter interrupted isnad because this Muslim Ibn Yasser did not meet Umar bin al -Khita. Okay, fine. In addition to that, both Nain Ibn Rabi and Muslim Ibn Yasser are unknown. Fair enough. This man called Muslim is not Muslim Ibn Yas al-Basri, the devoted worshiper, rather he's an unknown Madini man, end of quote. Okay, but Iman ad dar Kutni regarded as more a sound report other than that of Malik by adding Naim Ibn Rabia and making the Isnad uninterrupted by mentioning this the unknown man, namely this Naim. The text of the Hadith is proven through other chains of narration, Ibn Abdul Abar said in ad tamid but the meaning of this Hadith was narrated soundly from the Prophet Sallallahu with many proven chains of narration, which would take long to list here from Umar bin Khitab and others to many to mention. Shweb al Arnut and others also classed it as Sahih on the basis of corroborating evidence. But Sheikh Albani pointed out, right, uh, Mel pointed out that the Sahih versions of the Hadith do not quote the verse from Al Araf, so they don't quote the, the Quranic verse. Yeah, but the Hadith stays the same. Uh, this is Islam Q and A's answer. Do you want to keep reading? <laughs> It would seem that there was a there's a dispute amongst uh, the muhaddithin on the authenticity of this report. But I mean, you said there's some there's a handful that say it's interrupted, some that say it's not. So I guess no, they say the ones that say it's interrupted, but then then they bring other chains that are not interrupted. Yeah, but oftentimes a hadith is narrate uh, an uninterrupted ch uh, chain. Oftentimes can include different wording, so uh, we'd have to go look and um, not always, but I'd have to go look and uh, look at each individual one. Mm -hmm. Is that it? <laughs> right, okay, so this is how uh, generally, firstly, is that when, when we look at the issue of Usul ad din yeah, and these types of theological matters, then you, you can't use a Hassan narration as a basis to determine these matters of Aqidah. That's why it has to be of the level of what we term Qat'i definitive. And so those which are of lesser authority if there's no possibility of reconciling with higher authority, then higher authority always supersedes. Yeah. So if there's if there's a hadith uh, which maybe has problems or weakness or dispute, even if some people say it's Hassan or even Sahih, but it conflicts with higher order evidence, then the higher order evidence would take precedence. That's the first issue. The second issue is is that if even if you are going to reconcile it, then you have to reconcile it by interpreting it according to higher order evidence as well. So if there is a possible of reconciliation, it's from that. So you would have to make some sort of indicator to say, okay, this is a metaphor. This is a metonym, kinaya, that it's not really talking about causative in, or it's referring to this. Yeah, no, no. It according to the verse of Quran or the mutawatir hadith, yeah? Yeah, so I did take into account what Khalil said earlier. Yeah. About What's that nobody disputed the idea that everyone is just robots. No yeah, one, yeah. no one had this idea that everyone... Do you get me? Otherwise, yeah, what's yeah. the point of doing that? Yeah, right. <laughs> what's the point of... <laughs> no second... free will. Yeah. And the other not issue... Calvinists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. 
The other issue is what I mentioned, which is uh, saying there's a possible reconciliation, which which actually came up with this from a Christian Catholic priest, you know, uh, which was this point, which is saying that I can cause the outcome of an act without forcing the person to make the choice because I know what choice he would make given a particular scenario. Yeah. So here, mm. this is a reconciliation. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So that's that's so you could say therefore you're causing the the outcome without actually causing him to make that choice. Now that would imply this is a this is where people would differ in a debate. That implies that when God created free willing creatures, he did not create them in a way which determines uh what particular act that they would do. I they I God created them with the ability to make a choice, and God's knowledge then encompassed what their choice was. After he, moment he created them, yeah. So some people dispute that uh, and have go back and forward with regards to that issue. Uh, okay. The other thing is, is that sometimes those hadith they're, they're interpreted according to another hadith in which where it says that a person does the act of the people of paradise until the decree of Allah overtakes them, yeah, and then he is called or he does the acts of the people of hellfire or is caused to do the acts of people of hellfire, and the interpretation of that is. From my understanding, and you know, you have to go to the classical scholars in order to get the proper understanding. But from my understanding, what I've read and what I've studied was that this is referring to the knowledge of Allah, that Allah Subhanahu knows that this person is going to do X, and by a way of expressing that they're going to commit, uh, you know, they're going to be people of hellfire, that Allah Subhanahu is saying the decree overtakes the meaning, what's written in the knowledge of his choices that Allah knows would then become manifest by the actions that he performs. Does that make sense? That last point. Yeah, you can be reconciled that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it, it countered with what Khalil said earlier, the idea that nobody ever had this idea that we're robots. No one. And the Quran clearly says we've got choice. Allah clearly says those who choose and those refuse. Um, so, alhamdulillah. All right. I just want to get it. No, uh, people in the chat might go, what's all this about? Well, well, well. Okay, let's understand one thing yet. The reason I, I started the arena in the first place was to learn how to respond to the toughest questions that non-Muslims can ask Muslims. Yeah, And that's why I bring these beautiful, knowledgeable people and Ramsey. <laughs> to, to... <laughs> I'm not going to argue that. So because I want to learn. And then when I was when I seen this, I seen a chink. I seen a chink in the armor, a slight chink in the armor that I wanted to get ironed out. So and and literally that Kurd couldn't do it. <laughs> He's just doing nothing because it, it, that that's what implied a contradiction. That the, the Hadith is implying we don't have free will, and the Quran is saying we have free will. Therefore, it looks like a contradiction. I'm not saying it is a contradiction, but on the face of it, it looked like a contradiction, which needed to be ironed out. I think personally, and if no one in the chat cared about that, I cared because I wanted to know because I could get hit with this question, and I'd be like. I'd be trying to think, what would Sharif say in this moment? And now I know what Sharif would say. <laughs> now I know how to respond to it. Do you get me? Yeah, and I just I would go back to that first point, which is this point, which is that there are there are like for example, um, there are qiraats, yeah, the the recitals which are considered ahad, yeah. So they're considered like a singular chain, but they're rejected because they conflict with the mutawatir. Yeah. So yeah. the point being is that if you have a conflict between an evidence and you cannot reconcile if the hadith is not considered uh you know um the rewire the chains are not considered the same at the level of of a higher order evidence and the higher order evidence always takes precedence yeah because there is you know discussion in ulum al-hadith and usul al-fiqh about the epistemic weight uh, that certain hadith or certain texts have and that's why there's so sometimes the dispute in in various Madahibs, like for example, I don't want to go too technical, but like for example, in Maliki Fiqh, if there's a dispute between the actions of the people of Medina and a particular hadith, they would take the, and there's no way of reconciling, they would take the actions of the people of Medina as 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 a greater epistemic value if you can't re um, uh, reconcile it. Similarly, if you have a hadith uh, that conflicts with another hadith, and one hadith is narrated by somebody who's not a faqih, yeah, and the other hadith is narrated by a faqih, somebody who's knowledgeable in the fiqh of that hadith, and they can't reconcile it. Then the one that's narrated by the one who is knowledgeable in the fiqh 
takes precedence over the one who isn't, who just narrates. Because the assumption is the one who's a faqih knows that he's accurately, more accurately uh, relaying the hadith of the Prophet as opposed to the non faqih who might have made a mistake. Someone's asking me, can I dumb down what you said? <laughs> Uh, now let, me, let me watch it five times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, there's, good books. there's books in English. You can read books like um, uh, Muhammad Mustafa Adha, Minnali um, Hadith Literature. You can read uh, uh, books by. Hashim no, no, no I'm referring to the point, the, the point of understanding the not the not the the the, the understanding how Hadith works. The part, the point of yeah. that particular Hadith and understanding what could it mean when Allah yeah, is yeah. saying. He chooses those for hell and he gives and he leads them to hell, basically. So they're already chosen to be in hell before they're born, and when they're born, Allah leads them to hell. Um, how to respond to that? You have given the answer to that, but I just need to sift it. Uh, I wasn't able to find the hadith narrated by anyone other than Tirmidhi. And then the one place if you I go to, if you go to Islam QA, okay. um, they give you all the, all the hadiths. Okay, because I don't, there's only one I found was, it was classified as weak by Tirmidhi, so I would have to. Yeah, no. The, 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 if you go to Islam Q and A, they've got a list of all of the um, all of the hadith and the Quranic verses. And let me just see if I can find the actual um, what you call it. Um, so it's um, do, 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 do. so it's question number two thousand five hundred. Oh, sorry, twenty five thousand. Oh, 20, 256,318. Twenty two hundred fifty six thousand three hundred eighteen. Two five six three one eight is the question number on Islam Q and A. And then there, that gives all the references. So someone asked this question about this Quranic verse, um, and then they give all the hadith with regards to it. So, but it's good. It's good to do this stuff because, like I say, the enemies of Islam are looking for a way to try to pick on lay Muslims. So we need to understand these things because it kind of looks like we've just made this massive case that we've got free will and we can do what we like. And we choose whether we're going to end up in paradise. Or Allah knows our choices. And then all of a sudden, we bring in a hadith. I say, wait a minute, you, Allah's going to lead those to hell or loads to paradise. And it's already determined in the womb. And I said, well, that's just made a mockery of everything we've just said. So that's why I wanted to iron it out. That's all. And, and, and that's what I'm here to do. And I know, alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim. And I believe Islam is true. But at the same time, I, I still have questions I want answering. You know, nobody knows everything. So, uh, so apologize to people in the chat if you're thinking what we're waffling on about. Shabir Yusuf, do your thing. Uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> no, no. I was actually just going to say I'm on 2%, so I'm going to switch over to the computer system again. But before I do that, you know, the, the, this issue, uh, and I was trying to jump in. You know, we have a principle uh, as Muslims that the Quran is the primary source for our understanding. Uh, and uh, the hadith, as uh, brother, um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the brother Khalil, yeah, rightly pointed out that whenever you are considering statements attributed to the Prophet, وسلم, they will be consistent with what the Quran says. Now, as far as going to the hadith you are talking about uh, in relation to the uh, left and right of Adam, السلام, if we were to approach this, from a limited context, it will not make sense. We cannot approach it from an unlimited context because we cannot go beyond that point. So our understanding has to be consistent with what the Quran is saying. If we are not able to understand what the Prophet is saying, then it has to be checked with the Quran and it has to be consistent. Now, if the Creator uh, in the Quran specifies for us exactly whether we are going to be rewarded or whether we are going to be punished, in what context is the creator saying it? If we are going to suggest that there is absolutely no, no free will, what, uh, again, I should say what Brother Sharif said, if the definitions are not as, uh, applied and the argument is not put forward, then everything else subsequent is not going to make sense. And unfortunately, that's what happened with the Kurdish guy. So yeah. I, would, I would actually, yeah, my two pence would be that, look, whenever an argument is being put forward about a hadith, I would suggest that the Quran must be brought in first and foremost, and consistency should be applied to the, to the hadith in the context of the Quran. Yeah, but the only the only the only response I'll give to you that is the hadith is an explanation of a verse of the Quran. 
Yes. Now, if that is the case, then what does the Quran actually say? Does the Quran say, no, no matter what you do, it has already been decided? Uh, the verse of the Quran being referred to, but yes, it says sure. that, uh, that Sheikh al-Albani uh, st stated that the authentic versions of the Hadith do not uh, mention the, the verse of the Quran, so they're not responding to that. Yeah. They have the Quran. So that's, what I, that's why I just I thought I just read that from Sheikh al-Albani. Yeah. I yeah, but so what's the what's the hadith respond, responding to then? I don't as, uh, as far as I'm aware in the Sahih, uh, from what I just read, I'd have to find it again. But in uh, Sheikh Al Albani stated that in the authentic narrations of the hadith, it's not actually a response. It's not responding to the the verse of the Quran. It's simply just making a statement of of reality mm. or of what it what's believed to be reality. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Anyone coming with free will? I'm just going to kick off straight away from now on. <laughs> Can I just mention one point about Ibn al Qayyim on this on the particular hadith about not that one but similar, which is the mm. decree of Allah overtakes him and then he's uh, and then he goes to heaven or hell. Uh, and he says when it comes to the issue of the decree overtakes him, he says it's about sincerity of the act. He goes, The people of hellfire, I say the people of heaven. What it is is that they're not sincere in the act. They've got pride or tukabur, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. There's a long discussion in regards to that anyway. No, no, I, I think it's a, it's a fair question. I think it's a fair point. Could, yeah. couldn't do it. Um, I, I think I thought there was a question to be answered, to be honest. Oh, one second. Uh, this guy, Ramsey, if you don't know him, he, he does a lot of battling with uh, mainly Christians, isn't it, on um, Clubhouse. All right. And recently YouTube, but mostly Clubhouse, yeah. Okay, I don't know how he snuck in here. Like, uh, I'm just replacing John Fontaine with him because I don't know what happened to John Fontaine. He just vanished. I'll call that. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, sorry, I'm in the UK. Didn't have a laptop today. I'll be in the park Sunday. Okay, brilliant. So John's gone, so Ramsey's his replacement, so no problem. All right, let me bring Shabir back in a minute. All right. I want this guy to speak to Shabir. Alexander, how you doing, mate? You're muted. You're muted. Alexander, you're muted. It's showtime. It's a nice suit, though, but... Yeah. Oh, well. I'll kick you out, wake you up. Oh. Okay. Uh... Simple person. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Could you hear me? Wa alaikum salam. You, you're Muslim, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm Muslim. Uh, just, uh, um, I, I want to ask a controversial question that. No, but this stream is for no Muslim. Sorry. <sighs> Only I get to ask questions. <laughs> this guy's nuts. <laughs> Ultimate. No, I am not. Kind of, kind of are. Remind us, remind us why you believe Jesus. Remind us why you believe Jesus is God. Because there is no greater love to die for your friends. Therefore, Jesus is God. Complimenting John 15. 13. I just needed to hear that. I just needed to hear that. Okay, what, what's your argument? <laughs> okay, so premise one. Tautologically, our biblical Christian God is ultimate truth. Premise two, God's truthfulness complements Genesis 1.1 biblically. Conclusion, therefore, biblical Judeo-Christian presuppositionalism is true. So to justify premise one is that God authorized the Bible because Genesis 1.1 accommodates his truthfulness. Firstly, God's eternalness complements in the beginning God. Secondly, a gate theism supplements God created the heavens and the earth as creation expresses love. Thus, the original Bible entries are factual for creaturely epistemic foundationalism. Also, if God authorized multiple religious introductory texts, then that contradicts his infallibleness, further falsifying other religions. Galatians 1, 8 to 9, 
So Galatians 1.8 in the Bible, even if we are in even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, then they'd be under God's curse. So that debunks the Quran. And then consequently, if Can someone... Can you do us a favor, ultimately, family... in Judeo-Christian yeah, YouTube? I'm gone. I'm, lost. I'm, gone. I'm, I'm can you can you Can you give an informal argument rather than trying to set it out <laughs> as premises? But before you do that, can you remind us why you believe Jesus is God? I think he was Again, trying to... <laughs> I think this guy's on Clubhouse. I swear I've heard his voice before. R remind, remind us again. What, what, how, why do you believe Jesus is God? Do they all sound similar? Yeah, yeah. Well, firstly, I'm not on Clubhouse. Um, the argument for our uh, Christological God is there is no greater love to die for your friends. Therefore, Jesus is God. John 15, okay. verse I'll, never get, I'll never get tired of hearing that. So one step at a time. So now, if, <laughs> if, if someone dies for their friends, does that mean they're God? Yeah, but on a, on a large scale. No. What? So okay. first, okay. John okay. Uh, how about this? If someone if someone dies for their country, if someone joins the military and go and dies for the country, and they believe in that cause, and they don't pray overnight and sweat blood and ask the general to remove them out of the mil the, the army, they actually go there and die. Does that make them God? Well, not necessarily. Jesus died okay. for everybody. Well, there, there, therefore, therefore, if you said not necessarily, therefore, someone dying for someone does not necessitate that they're God. Do you agree? Uh, can you repeat your question as it's an informal you, fallacy? You said, you said that um, because Jesus died for mankind or for people, whatever, this makes him God, correct? Yes. So if let's say there is uh, some alien invasion of some sort and the solution is that NASA decided to send, uh, you know, something to meet it outside ozone layer and someone volunteered to do so and save the humanity, does that mean this person is God? You're going to have to repeat that. These are informal questions. Okay, you know what's crazy? He went on like a long rant and I didn't understand a word he said and he's being asked something so simple and I don't know how he's not understanding this. Okay, it's very simple. I repeated well, it three times. Lie, I repeated, so it. I repeated it yeah. three times already, maybe, maybe twice. I'll, this is the last time I'll repeat it. You said that Jesus is God because for something called great love, greater love, he died for others. So your argument is that because Jesus died for others, this makes him God, correct? Yes. Okay. So my question to you, therefore, if anyone that meets the criteria and dies for others should automatically place them in the category of being God, correct? No, as I've already stated, Jesus Why died not? for everybody. Okay, so so if someone, like I said, if there was an invasion, an alien invasion, and someone volunteered to go meet whatever was going to destroy Earth outside and took a hit and died for the sake of planet Earth, they died for humanity. Does that make them God? No, because the aliens wouldn't require a savior. So your question no, no, is not, not aliens, fallacy. not aliens, not aliens. Humans require the savior. Planet Earth was about to get destroyed. I'm giving you a hypothetical example of someone who would volunteer to go and you know uh, meet whatever was gonna was going to attack Earth and destroy it with some sort of nuke, and basically died there, volunteering to to kill themselves uh, for the sake of planet Earth. Does that make them God? They meet the criteria. They died, they, died for, they died for all mankind. You have to take into account that the aliens in this hypothetical requires a savior. Otherwise, they would be in the absolute presence of God. Yeah, so, so the alien so here will be like, the alien here will be like Satan. Same example, right? He's your enemy. What about aliens Satan? Are you, aliens are, Satan is your enemy. Aliens are your enemy. Satan's trying to kill you, destroy you. Have you not go to paradise? Same thing here. Uh, uh, aliens are trying to kill you. Someone, the point here I'm making is that someone decided to go take a hit for all mankind, for planet Earth, right? And they died in that process. And they knew they were going to die. W by the way, without complaining and praying like the biblical Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane and backed up in the last minute and asking the Father to take this cup away from me, 
let's say this person did not even do that, displayed greater courage, did not have doubt, no flesh, no human side that was weaker and all that stuff that we read. No, this person said, you know what? I'm taking the hit for all mankind, for 7 billion people. They met the criteria. Does that mean they're God? According to your logic, they're God. Well, because not necessarily, might... because I, you're limiting, you're possibly misrepresenting my response. I said that Jesus died for everybody. So in this hypothetical, not? he would have died for the aliens. No, not so for aliens. No, that for, no died for humans, because aliens were invading planet Earth, let's say, and they were going to throw some sort of weapon, some sort of, I don't know, something that would destroy Earth. So humans, people, your fellow, me and you, we were going to die, get destroyed. But someone from New Zealand decided to, to take that hit for us, 7 billion people, and died in that process. Doesn't that make them dying for mankind? The answer is yes. Therefore, based on your criteria, they're God. Yes, Bruce Willis. Ultimated. Has a ultimated. 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 Do you, did, did you did understand my question? Do you, you understand my argument? You can, I, my can I help him out? Can I explain Khalil's point and maybe help help him out as well, Khalil? So, ultimate, do you believe that Jesus died for all creation or did he just die for human beings? He died for humans, yes. But did he die for rocks? Did he die no. for bacteria? No. No, okay. So if Probably. I change Khalil's if I change Khalil's analogy and I say, okay, the guy is stopping a meteorite and he's having to do go onto the meteorite and destroy it. Yeah. Like Armageddon. Uh Hamza will remember that. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Willis. <laughs> I have, better, I, have an, I have an actual example. So wait, wait, let, 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 let me finish. Yeah. finish. Uh, he he did you do this? Similar. So he it's does that. So he's now save. He's not just saving the human beings that already exist. He's saving future human beings as well. Yeah, he's but saving that would just be one act. Right. So Jesus, okay. what Jesus left behind? Do you really believe a continuous that? Really believe that legacy? Bro, do you believe that Jesus is God because he died on the? First of all, let me ask you a question. Did, this is a very simple question. Did Jesus want to die or did not want to die? He wanted to, yes. Okay. Then it, please explain to me why does it say in the Bible that he was sweating all night, um, sweating blood and praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, asking God to take this cup away from him, which means the crucifixion. Explain to me why did he tell the disciples to go and sell the clock and buy swords, preparing for self-defense? Explain to me this. Why was he crying and praying for to be saved? If this is a 100% man, 100% God, his human nature is aware of his divine nature, and his only purpose, his only purpose was sent to save mankind, and he's aware of this fact. Why did he back up last minute? And please don't tell me his human nature, because his human nature is aware of his divine nature. There are humans right now that volunteer to go to military to defend their families, their cause, their country, and they don't back up. They don't cry and pray, please save me from this world. They're like, no, I want to die. The Sahaba, they fought with the Prophet Sallallahu They wanted to die because they knew the promise of Allah would be true and they wanted to go to paradise. They actually prayed to die in the battlefield. Your biblical Jesus, what did he do? He goes in the last minute and he cries all night. We don't believe that, of course, as Muslims. We have respect for Isa ibn Maryam. But from your perspective, biblical Jesus, he goes last minute to the garden to get Simeon. What does he do? He sweats blood all night and he asks God to save him. From what? From the very thing that he came to do. Explain to me that contradiction. Go ahead. Well, it's not a contradiction as you're possibly it, misrepresenting please. the... You're possibly okay, did, did, he, did, he pray, did he pray to be saved or no? I can't remember. Okay, I'll this is in you. my argument for Christianity. So again, I'll, no, I'll, let me just finish. You. These are in he, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was in the Forget about these big words that you don't even know what they mean. Just stay simple. Yes, I do know relax. what they mean. Just re relax. You're not addressing did my Jesus, syllogism. Did Jesus? My argument. Did, oh my God! This is the problem. You guys come infused with all these words, but you can't answer the basic argument. Did Jesus pray to be saved? Did he say, 
Father, this is not an your will. questions on your arguments. arguments. I'm asking you this, though. Did he ask God to take this cup away from him or no? Well, hang on. I have to educate you here, firstly, is that Just an answer. argument. I, I, I will let you, I will let you, I'm, I'm I will let you answer. I will, I will let you educate me if you answer my question. Did Jesus, answer what you've been asked. Did Jesus pray to be saved? Yes or no? Yeah, but hang I will I will answer your question. I'd just like to make a point first. I, I promise you. No, make, answer his question. I will let you I will let you, make, to... I will let you make I will let you make two, three, four points if you answer my question first. Did Jesus pray to be saved? Yes or no? I can't remember. I don't know okay, what so, chapter and so verse you're referencing. Let me remind you. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus before you have that to reference the chapter and verse. I, I, I promise 39. you I will. I promise Matthew you. Matthew 2639. Matthew 26, 39. Thank you very much. And then it's also in the book of Luke. He goes in, he tells the disciples, disciples to buy swords, ready for self-defense. He goes and put his forehead on the ground and he asks God to take this cup away from him. If it is, it, it, let, your, let yours be done. Your, not my will, but yours be done. Which brings another problem that they have two different wills. But we're not going to address that at this point right now. Your issue right now is to explain to me if Jesus was sent to die for the sin of mankind, why was he praying and backing up in the last minute? Why was he praying to be saved if he was sent for that? Explain that to us, please. Well, firstly, you're possibly misrepresenting that one particular chapter and verse as you have which to part, read the which entire part did I chapter. Misrepresent? Which part did I misrepresent? You're which part? picking. Please. So I have to read. I have to read the entire do, chapter and verse to give you a proper do. response. But a, but I would like to point out something first is that your questions are informal fallacies as you haven't properly addressed my argument slash syllogism from earlier but i'm going to address the elephant in the room how does jesus saying the greatest love is to die for your friends make him god because in first john 4 8 it states that god is love so what logically follows is that he would come down to us and die for what kind everybody. of love are you talking about man jesus said bring my enemies that won't let me rule over them and slaughter them here in front of me what kind of love is this what are you talking about so anyone who loves is god no, are you god saying perfect is love? love we are you derive our love. love are you saying it's a perfect love the most perfect love would be X, and only God could do that perfect love X. No, no, but he's saying Jesus says to die for your friends. And and then he, he you know, look, I, I just want to address this, man. First of all, I believe this verse is just made up anyway. I don't think it belongs where it is. It doesn't make no sense logically. And the reason it doesn't make no sense logically, this isn't a place in the Bible where Jesus has just said, uh, I shall speak no more, let us leave this place. So if you're watching a movie now of Jesus and he and he, you know and he sat in the Gospel of John, there's I think there's a movie, isn't there? So they sat down and Jesus saying, right, I'm not going to say much more to you now. Let's leave this place. And then for three, <laughs> I think three or four, three chapters, he does the longest speech he's ever done in the New Testament. It, it is in there. So just after he says, I won't say much more now, he does the longest speech ever. And then the next verse says, after saying this, they got up and left. Now, after they saying this got up and left, I truly believe gets attached to the part where Jesus says, I'll not say much more to you now. Uh, let us leave this place. Then after saying this, they got up and left. This, I think, is, a, is an addition, interpolation, first thing. Second thing, if you read it, my command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one, no one than this, to lay down as one life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants. It, it, it's got, got no connotation that he's saying he's God. And just because you see a verse in the Gospel of John that says God is love, what kind of love? God didn't love Sodom and Gomorrah. Sod didn't like, God didn't like love Jer Jericho. God didn't love the Amalites. Who, who's God loving here? Clearly, th this love is tainted. So, so when, when is love? Think, How do you understand this word love? So God is the foundation of love. He is What's love? What does love mean? What's to love? Give. Got to do. So, so God God is an emotion. Pleasures. God is a source of pleasure. 
So he is an ultimate love. So what do you mean by love? Stop saying the word love. Tell me what the love means. He's a, he's a Australian. Give pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah, yeah, it's Australian. Yes. It's the pleasure. Okay. People. Is this love unconditional or conditional? I don't know. So you haven't made an argument yet. I'm still waiting for my. Well, no, no, because we destroy your premise. You haven't got an argument. Yes, I do. I presented. Yeah. So ultimate, ultimate, no, 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 you don't. Sorry. So ultimately, I just want to make a point here. Khalil is not doing a fallacy, an informal fallacy otherwise, because he's not addressing your argument because he's not interested in addressing your argument. Yeah. He's well, then you should say point. so. He, he's addressing another point. He's, uh, that's how he started off, by the, by the way. He was what saying, other look, points? You know, yeah. The second issue, the second issue is... Nobody is ref nobody's refuting you by just asking questions. What they're trying to say is, look, do you agree with this, this, and this? They're trying to understand your position when they ask you your questions. Like, for example, when Khalil asked you, do you believe that Jesus uh, in this verse, uh, you know, in the garden of, I don't know what was the garden called again? Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Yeah, so he, he wanted the cup to be taken away. And you said, I don't know. Yeah. So obviously Khalil's trying to make a point on the back of your answer, but you don't know, yeah. And so therefore you're in a position of ignorance on that particular issue. You yeah, can't really funny. argue. It doesn't further. matter. Again, uh -oh. as I stated, ultimate last question: time, Is this true? Is this look at the, read the screen? Is this true? Hang on. What does it say? Yeah. Uh, this guy believes that God was pleasuring himself before creation. Yeah, that. God is touching the side of my head now. So it doesn't matter if you reject that Jesus is God what? or not. That's not my argument. Genesis 1.1 1, 1 was my well, argument. Proving I don't think you have an argument. And I think it's time to say goodbye. But by the way, Ultimated, you actually accuse Khalil of a fallacy for asking a question that makes no sense. The fallacy you it's committed an informal was, fallacy. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. The fallacy you committed was a non sequitur because someone dying for someone else That's doesn't prove that they're God. As a matter of fact, that con that directly proves someone's not God if they died. That proves that they're not God. And so that was a complete non sequitur. Hold on a second. It's not, not a non sequitur. A, but, but, someone, Jesus died for humanity. That proves he's God. That's a non sequitur because the, because the evidence not. doesn't. Oh, let me finish. The sit this. The sentence doesn't prove the claim. That sorry, the evidence doesn't prove the claim. And moreover, why do you believe Jesus died for your sins? That, that, so, that's, that's, that, that's advanced question. Hold on, hold on a second, there. Really? Hold on, that's uh, advanced. Uh, Let's just deal with the basic is... thing here. The basic thing here. I give you an example of someone dying for mankind, right? A lot of people in the chat are saying Armageddon. I don't know if you watched it or not. Anyway, someone volunteered, went, and they died. They died for seven billion people. They literally met the criteria that you presented of who God is. Someone who loved the world and died for them. Someone just did. Someone from Arkansas decided to do this mission. Are they God now? I, the they're going to catch all of that. Again, they're going to send is love. Why are you not catching what I'm saying, bro? Like, they're they're, they're going to send, they're gonna send too, human beings to Mars. This is the There's one too second. many points all just, at once. It's not too many points. It's very simple. You're, you're it made one, one person at a time, and then somebody else asks a question. No, no, hold on one second. This Elon is Musk is trying to just chill out. Elon Musk is trying to send is trying to send uh, humans to Mars to save humanity. So the first human who goes to Mars to save humanity is he? Is that going to make him God? Yeah, I can't. I'm not following your questions. You're asking too many questions at once. Just ask one. How are we not answering? How you haven't asked anymore? just one. You asked a question earlier, and then somebody else asked a question, and now you're All asking right. a question again. So, yeah. just go. Sorry, I had to get rid of it. Thank you. I, th I think, yeah, I think, I think, actually, I think maybe dyslexia. I don't know. I don't want to say what. Can, yeah, I think he might. He was using the most complicated right. language ever at the beginning, but then he was having trouble complimenting the, co co comprehending the simplest of sentences later. Yeah. See, some people like <laughs> autistic or ADHD, uh, not ADHD. They sort of. Yeah, maybe Khalil understands better because he's a doctor, but they they yeah, sort maybe, of maybe 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 in a spectrum or something. Yeah. If he was ADHD, he would have yeah. been actually super fast and. And maybe like yeah, yeah, that's ADHD. Yeah. No, yeah. But he was he yeah. was pretty uh, slow in comprehending. And you know, my life yeah. is sick. I don't know what's what's up with this guy. But anyway, moving on, inshallah. But this first premise that because Jesus says the best the, the best love is to die for your friends, then he's God. Non sequitur. Non sequitur. The evidence doesn't prove the claim. Yeah. 
it, it doesn't. And then he builds on that, and then ooh, what, ooh, and then he doesn't what? know whether or not Jesus prayed to be had the cup removed from him, which is just standard. And you give him the verse which he didn't read, and then he doesn't even know if the love of God is conditional, which it clearly is. It's a covenant. I think, well, I, think, I'm think what he was trying to say. I think what he was trying to say is this: he's trying to say that God is love, that God can only do. Uh, a particular act of love that no other human being can do, no other creation can do, and God did that particular act of love. Therefore, oh, this person did this particular act of love, Jesus. Therefore, he is God. So he's trying to argue from that perspective. But I think the problem is that he's not building his argument, and it's not clear. Yeah. So. Yeah, but that raises many questions and many issues, like the scholars talk about, like uh, cosmic child abuse, which is a father sending a son to die for a mission. The suicide the mission or forcing him to, to die for a certain way. I know a lot of Christians say no, he was not forced, but again, did he want to die? Did he want yeah. to die? No, there's why is he praying? Why is he praying? Why are you praying? Your only mission. Imagine if your only mission, your your job, imagine you're like a some sort of concierge doctor, right? Your only mission is to go see people in their homes. And then on the highway you drive and you're like, you start praying, I don't want to go. Well, that's your mission, that's your job. That means you feel that uh, doing your job. This idea of human nature, the flesh is weak, is, is nonsense because otherwise it's a heresy because the human and the divine are always attached, hypostatic union. You can't split them. If the human side knows about the divine side, you don't even have to be divine. If you just take a regular human being and you send them on a mission and you give them 100%, if you just reward them, I'll give you $5 million, $10 million, your family will be set for forever. But I need you to do this for me. A lot of people will be like, yeah, sure. People go volunteer in the military and they know they're going to die. They know they're going to die and they don't question it. They go for the sake of what they believe in. Now we have a biblical Jesus whose only job, only job was to die for all mankind. What a great, you know, uh, you know mission. And then what do you do? You go and pray to be saved? Uh, this is very problematic. So. They might try and I would be interested to be honest how they would explain that. I think some of them probably tried to say, Oh, he's trying to teach. I've actually been to the Garden of Gethsemane. He was sweating blood. How do you teach how do you teach how do you teach sweating blood? It's not first of all, it wasn't because he, he told Peter to stand here and stay awake and he went deep inside and he started praying by himself. Right? And then he came back and saw Peter sleeping and he got mad at him and he woke him up. And he told him to go and buy swords to defend. As a matter of fact, yes, yeah, some people say later on he said. Stop it. Whoever used the sword, die by the sword. Yeah, but that's how, after he chopped, you know, the soldier's ear off. You know what I'm saying? He asked him to go by swords, weapons, right, to defend himself. He Clearly, he didn't want to die, right? And he prayed not to die. It's so simple. There is no, listen, why and, would you be praying to die? And correct me if I'm wrong. Did not God hear his prayer? Well, so here's, here's the issue. Because Christian says that, Pray anything under my name, and Jesus, it would be, uh, you know, God would hear the prayer. But here, Jesus, did God hear or fulfill Jesus' prayer? No, no, Jesus. God heard the prayer means that God answered. I know, I know, that's what I'm saying. Did God hear the prayer? Did he answer the prayer? According to this, no, because Jesus prayed to be saved, and he was not saved. But then again, there's a contradiction. Hebrews 5, 7, right? Let's read it. Can we just read this right now, please? This is very important, if you don't mind, uh, Brother Hamza. Um, I know, like I know, these people probably waiting, but I really want to read this for people, which is a no, really, bro, bro, we're here to learn, man. An unbelievable contradiction. Hebrews five seven, if I'm mistaken, and I encourage everyone to open up Bible Hub or whatever, and then read it with me. Uh, what is it? Somebody just said Bruce Willis died for our sins. <laughs> yeah, I know they, they, they've, they've been saying that. All right, so here's what Hebrews five seven said, and you guys tell me what what do you guys think it means. Hebrews five seven. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Unbelievable. Now, here's what, what a Christian's response would be. You have to read the whole chapter. Sure, let's read the whole chapter. But this verse tells you that Jesus prayed for the one that can save him from what? From death? No. From death. Not from death. From death. Which means he does not want to die. He wants to be saved from death. And he also, a verse says that God heard his prayer, fulfilled his prayer, which means he was saved. It's an unbelievable verse there. They completely ignore it. They put it aside and they move on on some God is love 
type of argument. It gets really frustrating with time. Sorry, got a little passionate there. Continue, Brother Hamza. No, bro. That's why you're here, man. I love your passion. I mean, the response, if I could just say the response they might give. Oh, you that. shut up. No, no, sorry. Go, on, go. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 go. I'll just drop the mic. I'm good now. <laughs> all right, all go. right. Uh, the, the common response I've heard from some uh, with regards to Jesus praying to be saved. And like I said, I've been to the Garden of Gethsemane. I quite literally stood where the Christian God stood. I mean, take that into consideration. Yes, you uh, said that to us a million times. I know. I just can't. I can't get over the whole standing where God stood. I, I can't get over that. Sorry. But the common response is that, well, he rose from the dead and that's how God heard his prayer. But then again, Jesus wasn't praying to die and then be No, risen. no, no. Hold on right there. Let's say you're pretending to be that Christian person. Yeah. It says the one who's going to save him from death. It doesn't no, say the one, yeah. wait, it doesn't say for the one who will resurrect him from death. Or no, save him from death. And he was heard, which means he did not go through the process of death. Christians tell you that Jesus died for our sins. The verse says that Jesus prayed not to die, and he was heard. That's my point, yeah. But Rumsey, I thought, thought, thought he's fully God. Yeah, but Rumsey, they say that God hey, don't look at me. I'm, not, I'm not a Christian. Don't look at me. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm just saying do they they claim that the way that this is answered is because God the Father resurrected Jesus. Is that their answer? Yes, yeah, saved him from death. Rumsey. Sorry, I got to someone was messaging me and I, I got distracted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Brother Street. No, because but the, I'm just saying, because the whole argument, whole just one of the justifications of Jesus being God is that he resurrected himself. And that, that me, power of resurrection can only the come father, from God. The Father resurrected him. God resurrected him. Well, then that, that refutes that particular argument. Yeah, that Peter, I've Peter says that. And uh, I think it's, I forgot which uh, which book exactly. Maybe Corinthians. I'm not, don't quote me on that. But he says that. Bring in the next guest. Bring in the next guest. Raise Jesus. Oh, from here he is. Ready for this guy? Hey, should hear you. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give up today. I'm going to keep coming. <laughs> can I? Can I just uh, quickly, uh, if you don't mind, my brother, just follow up on what Brother Khalil was saying about uh, uh, Jesus Christ and the prayer he, he offered up. Hello? Yes, of course. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, like Brother Khalil said, I mean, uh, Hebrews 5 7, who in the days of his flesh offered up prayers and supplications to him that was able to save him from death, and he was heard in that he feared. Now, going to the Garden of Gethsemane, as Brother Ramsey said, he prays and says, Father, take this cup away from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now, there may be a difference of wills there, but nevertheless, he asked for a prayer to be heard. Now, I commonly uh, tell our Christian friends at Speaker's Corner that if you went to John eleven forty one, you find Christ before he brings Lazarus back from the dead. He says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the people that stood by, I said it so that they may believe you have sent me. So he is making an extremely positive case that whenever he asks for anything from the creator, the creator answers and accepts. So the question is that when he asked to be saved from death, the evidence in the Bible is very clear that he was heard. And so, however the creator will to save him, the creator did it. So it is... Uh, the, the mind gets boggled when our Christian friends tell us, no, 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 he died. Well, if the evidence, the internal evidence of the Bible is clearly pointing to the fact that he was saved, on what basis are you saying he was? Not only that, then you will elevate him to become the creator. So it just does not make sense. You are absolutely correct, Brother Khalid. Shall I, shall I give the Christian response? Go on then. What is it with you? Oh. Like, uh, God, where have I devil's advocate it. today, man? These Christians are so bad and lame. They can't even argue themselves. <laughs> All right. Good. So, so exactly. Let's so the, 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 the Christian response will be uh, Psalms. Yeah. Psalms. Is it Psalms 10? Where um, uh -huh. it's David. It's David flipping speaking, but they claim it's Jesus Psalm speaking. 20. Psalm 20. Saying, yeah. uh, asking to be saved from death. Yeah, you, yeah. You'll not let your loved one see, see the grave or see Shoal. Shoal, is it? Shoal? Um, yeah. And then they say that where it says say from death, it's not actually from dying, but remaining mm. dead. 
Okay, let us let us assume that uh, uh, the verse is saying remaining dead. So Did death he die? Remaining dead. Yeah. Absolutely. Did he die? Yes, as a Christian, you are you talking now? Yes, as I'm asking you as a Christian, did he uh, die? Uh, all right, all right. So, all right, as a Christian, they believe yes, yes, he died. He died. Did he ask to be saved from death? Yes. Was his prayer answered? Yes. Did he die? Yes. So, what no, is happening here? Because, uh, okay, I'll, 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 I'll do my Christian flex again. <laughs> Okay. okay, so then. death, death is the final, final curtain. Yeah, death is the final curtain. To be saved from death means you don't yeah. remain dead. Okay. To be saved from death, you don't remain dead. Okay, no problem. I will take that forward also. So when he asked to be saved from death in the Garden of Gethsemane, which death was he talking about? Um, the, the the final death. So, did he ask to be saved from that? Yes, he, he asked to be saved. I'm giving you the Christian perspective. He asked yeah, yeah, to be course. saved from remaining dead. No, no, no. When he, <laughs> when he <laughs> asked... <laughs> Father, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I thought, they, I, I, I thought the, he didn't know. He didn't know that he was going to be resurrected. What kind of... Not only that. Do? Sorry, Brother Khalil. The word that is used is the cup of death. What is the cup of death according to the Bible? Uh, I know this. Uh, <laughs> Not no, only no, no. that, I, I, I mean, I've, I've, heard, I've heard this explanation that the cup gets passed around or something. Ab absolutely. Not only that, if you go to Isaiah 53, which is quoted by our Christian brethren quite often, and you refer them to verses 10 and 11, it actually even tells you there that he is going to not die, but he's also going to see his seed. And we know what the word seed is used in the Bible. Yeah, we know, yeah, we know that. We know that. We know that. Yeah, so. So it's, it's almost impossible to suggest, based on the evidence in the Bible, that Christ was not saved. Did you say Psalm 10, Hamza? Because I'm reading Psalm 10 and I'm not. It may not be Psalm 10. I don't know. Some... <laughs> well, well, as a Christian, you, well, as a Christian, you ought to know your Bible, man. Come on. <laughs> uh, which, which Christian knows their Bible, mate? Uh, one second. I'll, I'll tell you the exact verse. Because when you, I, I, for a minute, I thought you were going to quote Psalm tw or Psalm twenty-two. No, well, look, this is what Christians do, right? If you read, if you do read Psalms, yeah, it's David, yeah, it's, it's Psalm sixteen. Sorry, oh. okay, let me read it for you. Uh, Psalm sixteen. Um, God, I can't believe I'm playing. I'm, I'm like the, the callers are so bad that I'm having to actually make bloody arguments. No other guests left. Uh, yeah, there is. There's quite a few, but uh, oh, wow. they all look loopy. Yeah. One second, one second. Let me just let me just do this first. So Psalm sixteen ten. I said, isn't it? So let me go to Psalm sixteen. Because this is why it doesn't make no sense. Listen to this. This is David in, in Psalms. Yeah, keep me safe, my God. For you, I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people that are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom all is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. So this is David, right? Lord, you are alone in my portion of my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. It's David. It's clearly David just explain asking these asking God and he's trusting God and he's given up everything for God and he knows God will reward him. But what Christians do, as soon as you get to this part, um, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, that's Jesus speaking. <laughs> but the problem <laughs> is that David never died. That's the problem. David since, wasn't killed. Since you mentioned, since you mentioned uh, the Psalms, Brother Hamza, just quickly before we move on to the next uh, segment, to the next person, if we've got Psalm 20, verse 6. It says, Now I know that Yahweh, this is the Hebrew, saves his anointed, his Messiah. The word there, guess what? Mashiach, which is his, his Messiah, basically. 
Now I know that Yahweh, uh, the, word, the verb there is Hoshia, which is similar to Yahshua. He saves, rescues his Messiah. He will answer him from heaven. He's, uh, uh, with his holy, with strength of the saving, his right hand. And just the final one here, Psalm 91, verse 10 to 16 says the follows. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will, will come near your tent. For he will command his angel concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. This, this means not even a harm. Not no damage, nothing. You'll be rescued. Because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. It doesn't say I will. It's not talking about resurrecting him. It's to rescue. That's, a lot of times they say I save. And they're trying to get away with save. Oh, save me. No, no. It says rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call on me. Like Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. right? And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This actually goes hand in hand, if you guys think about it, of the Islamic narrative of what happened to the, the Messiah. He was saved. God sent his angels. He was he lifted him up and he gave him long life. What does long life mean? It means since 2,000 years, he's still alive, we believe, as Muslims. And he's going to come back. Oh. All right. This guy. Oh, this guy's a loser. All right, this guy's a loo this guy's a Christian Prince fan. He got smashed last time. He's gonna come with some sorry, stupid point. Sorry, brother Hamza, before you go further, after what brother Khalil has said, do you are you going to take your shahada now? I'm convinced. <laughs> okay, let's move on then. <laughs> Say after me. Is this the guy who was yapping on in the private chat? I think this is I think this is the guy who I think it is. Sean. It's actually you, Sean. You muted. You muted. I you're muted. I think he said all he has to say. I mean, if you, have you seen the private chat? I'll get rid of that. Oh, what's this guy? A dev. A dev. A dev. A dev. Dave. Yeah, how are you guys doing this evening? All right, mate. How are you doing? How you doing? How are you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for asking. Uh, I have a question. Maybe you'll be able to clear my uh, suspicion about something. Uh, well, what do you, before you continue, my brother Dave, what do you believe? You're a Christian, atheist, what? I am Christian, but uh, I guess hopefully after our conversation today, I'll be able to fully embrace which religion I want to actually pursue. Uh, you could call me, uh, yeah, I got one leg in, on each side, but I'm still trying to struggle my faith. I'm still struggling with my faith. So hopefully after okay. the conversation, yeah, I'll be able to uh, focus 100% uh, on which religion I want to embrace fully. You know? Sorry, what's your family background, if you don't mind me asking? You grew up as what? You grew up as Catholic, Protestant, Muslim? What's your, what's your well, background? I grew up uh, in a Muslim country, but uh, my parents weren't really re religious. So when I left uh, my hometown and came to the city, uh, I met a friend who was Muslim, and uh, he tried to get me converted. I even uh, went with him a few times to the mosque, you know, uh, then uh, on the long run, I became Christian, uh, but not fully embraced uh, on the religion, just uh, like I said, half and half. So I'm still in the middle of struggling with my faith right now. It's just I am leaning more into Christianity, and I'll tell you why, if you could answer my, this question I'm about to ask. Uh, okay, the Quran says uh, Allah is nothing like creation. And he actually cannot enter his creation. Um, the Torah and the Jew, they have uh, they have uh, a consistent message. It says uh, God made man in His image. And uh, if you read the whole Bible, you 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 realize that the Father uh, among the Godhead really didn't do much. Uh, everything starting from creation all the way to uh, 
all the way to uh, the crucifixion has always been the logos and the roi, which is the the word and the spirit. They're the one who's been doing everything. The father never really did much. You know, he left everything to them. And saying that God cannot enter his creation is half right. But the God of the Bible, he found a way. You know, he, he sent uh, 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 two parts of him uh, with his own essence, which is the word and the roi. And they're the ones who actually created everything. They're the ones who Dave, everything you read in the Bible. Dave, you, you're not really explaining why you're leaning towards Christianity. You're simply... You're, the only reason you, why I'm leaning... Are you lying? Are you lying? Are, are, you saying, lying? are you being I, honest? I think I know what he's, he's saying. Being honest. He's, saying, he's saying that the... The only, the the only reason... Okay. My, only, my only reason right now, my only doubt right now, is the fact that that message changed. That message changed when it came to the Quran. It's supposed to be the very first book of the very first book that was sent by God. What, what changed? What changed exactly? Dave? The fact that uh, the fact that the Torah says uh, uh, um, Adam was made in the image of God. We humans were made in His image. No, Torah doesn't say that. And, 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 no, huh? the, 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 if you read, uh, have you read any exegesis on that particular verse about image? Actually, Jesus, yeah. yeah, a few of them, but uh, uh, it's still, it's still lying. No matter how you slice and dice it, now we have oh. all the books. Now we 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 have all the books now: the Torah, the Injil, and the Quran. That's and no, have, no, we, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have the Injil. We don't have the preserved Torah. We have preserved Quran. We have some remnants of the Torah and some writings about Jesus. Some okay, so of you. Okay, so you're saying the Torah and the Jedi is not preserved, but the Quran is. You want to tell me why this message right here changed in the Quran? So I didn't change. Torah, it, said... it didn't change. So, so, so let's, let's start with some principles. Uh, according to the Torah, or according to what we have today from the Torah, right? Uh, is God one, indivisible one, Ahad, or is it a trinity? Well, Ahad is not one, my friend. No. It's a, it's a, it's a unity of, uh, of. Uh... Okay, okay, fine, fine. Where do you get that well, unity? I... What? Yeah. No. Hold on, Dave. Do you, do you think Ahad is a unity of, of something? Well, he's Genesis gonna, he's, one. He's going to give you the fact. argument of that Adam and Eve were Ahad. We're like that's the argument they bring. It's just a, it's an old. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think you understand what I'm saying, my friend. I'm exactly. saying the Torah is saying. God made man in his image. The, 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 the right. Bible, just, okay, just let me learn, my friend. The Bible is saying the same thing. If you want to say it's corrupted, that's, that's going to be that's gonna be the ball on your court to prove that. It's okay, the before, 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 before you do that, Dave, Dave, before you get there, before we talk about the image, and I, I can show you uh, uh, exegesis and FC, quote, unquote, from Jewish scholars, where they say that the word there is really not image. What it means to be is a representation of God, which is what Muslims believe. In fil ardi khalifa. A khalifa means a representative, a representation. Sometimes that word can also be translated as an image of something, which is a representation. Your image is your representation. Somehow it was translated as an image, and people understand it as now as like God looks like you know a man with hair. You know, and, and beard, and then that's the image. No, it was supposed to be Khalifa, a representation. The Quran being the final revelation explains this part. But before that, just before that, if you don't mind, Dave, let's first talk about who God is. Does the Torah say that God is one or God is a trinity? That's my question. Well, if you read the Torah, the book of uh, Genesis, the very first book itself, it gives you right there that uh, God, Elohim, that is the word used. So? And right under that, it tells you Yahweh is the one doing the creation. Then it tells you the Ruah, which is the spirit of God. So right there, there's a multiplicity of uh, persons. Where is that? Where is, the, where is the foundational verse that says that God, because the Jews right now, if you ask any Jew, right, they will tell you, they will quote Deuteronomy 6.4. Are you familiar with Deuteronomy 6.4 or no? What does that say? It says Shema, is, which is cognitive of the word Isma, Sama, hear Shema Israel. 
Adonai Elahinu, Adonai Achad. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Every single Jew agree on this. No Jew walks around saying that God exists in three forms or God is divided into three equal, uh, co-equal, co We have a problem. Persons. Well, we have no, a problem. Just, just wait. Do you agree that the Jews believe that or no? Well, if uh, uh, I'm a Christian, we accept their books. Yeah, and so, I so have read Genesis. Before Genesis, you keep going to Genesis. Just tell me the foundational verse of quote unquote Tawhid, monotheism, or Judaism. If you ask any rabbi, they tell you it's Deuteronomy 6 4. Deuteronomy 6 4 states that God is one, indivisible. Ahad is indivisible one. The concept of the Trinity or God being, uh, you can find the word Ruach, Ruh. You can find the uh, Memra or Logos in Greek or whatever word. You can find these terms. But that, that would well, be like Bible. The problem, be... the problem with that, my friend, the problem with that, with saying God is one himself and saying he cannot enter his creation. What? What do the, you mean? Bible How, gave account, okay. the Bible gave account of Adam and Eve, even after, even after eating the fruits, they realized they were naked. The Bible gave account of God himself sewing leaves, uh, 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 sewing uh, 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 clothes for them. Dave, Dave. That, that Dave. is not something you, you Dave, have to talking about. I'm not talking about clothes. Can I just ask a question, Dave? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Dave. Do you believe God is all knowing? Yeah, God is all knowing, of course. Right. And can someone all knowing regret? With someone all knowing, have regrets? Is it possible for someone who's all knowing to regret? Yeah. Not if, if you believe in the, in the personification of God, then yes. How do you understand the word regret? Regret is uh, it's more like a remorse about something. No, no, being done. no. How do you understand the word regret? How do I understand it? Yeah. I just told you what it means. You do something. Okay, how do you, okay, how do you understand the word remorse? It, it's it's pretty much lying in 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 the same direction. You, something something uh, uh done hoping for a different result, but you get something else instead. No, that's that not what it, that's that's not what regret means. Regret, regret is what regret regret means if you knew the outcome, you wouldn't have done it. We're saying the same thing. Well, well no, we're not. So those guys yeah, outcome. What I just said. But how can what somebody who's all knowing not know the outcome? Okay, what what are you saying? God doesn't know the outcome of well, the, for regretted making man. Exactly my point. We're coming back to zero again. Exactly the, your the point. Torah is what telling me the Torah. The Torah is telling me we ourselves are made in His image. Oh, Dave, stop! The Bible. Stop. No, no, just just let Dave, it be. Dave, no, no, I'm not going to allow you to continue if you don't address my question. Okay, what's your question, my friend? How can somebody who is all-knowing not know the outcome of something? And why would you think God becoming human will make him regret anything? That's what are you talking about? Nothing wrong with Master Hill. He's talking about he the creation. He doesn't say that. What are you on about? He's talking about God create, regretting the creation of humanity. Nothing I'm talking about yeah, God regretting creating humanity. Yeah. I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about God in Genesis when he creates That's man. Hamza, can I ask you a question? Hamza, can I ask you a question? Why, why, are you this, why are you taking this guy seriously? To be I don't honest, know. Should we just kick him? To be no, honest, just... I, from, from the beginning, I was just going to ask him. He said the Torah and the Gospel. Okay, why do you believe the Bible contains the Torah of the Moses and the Gospel of Jesus? I was just going to ask that right My now. friend, you guys, you guys don't seem to understand where I'm coming from. Okay? Dave, I'm Dave, saying this right, right, here, right, here, Dave, right here. I will tell you where you're coming from, Dave. Dave, you came in here. You said... I'm doubtful. I've got like I could become Muslim today, and then right. the way you're arguing is you're arguing straight out of the Christian handbook. Yeah, you're arguing because, because you the Torah know, you're not being and the Jill are the first two books. You are not the Torah being the Jill. Hey, Dave, Dave let, let's have some real talk. Let's have some real talk, Dave. Dave, if you really believe in Christianity, 
and you believe that this is correct, just say so. Don't lie. Don't pretend. We would my not friend, be allowed for us as Muslims. You, my it would not be allowed for us as Muslims to come on a stream and claim that I have doubts in Islam and I could do this and I could do that if it's not true. This would be haram. I did, for us I did to do tell that. you. I did tell you I'm in Muslim Christianity, right? Do you accept? Do you accept? Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Okay, so you're a Christian. That's it. Now let's start fresh. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. Fine. I'm a Christian. Let me tell you something, my friend. No, I think we just I'm get saying, rid of you. He actually said earlier that he's a Christian. He admitted that earlier. If you guys remember, he said, I'm "I know, I know." He let it slip. So I don't know why you guys are asking me this again. I'm just saying the only the only issue I have right now is the Torah saying. God is made. Yeah, uh, God made man in His image. No, Dave. The Bible. No, no, Dave. Just, just let me finish, the only my friend. Issue that we want to know is, is what, what, what is it? No, no. But I want to know what is it that makes you doubt Christianity is true? Be Ooh. I'm not doubting Christianity. I'm just saying the first oh, two well, you books. Just came that, in in this hold on, you just said you were in between. You earlier said, so he had, he said no. He even right. said he had doubts. After this conversation, he got I'll called. Look, look at the embrace. comments on the screen. He got called out after, the moment he came in. Is... You're a troll. Goodbye, troll. Back in the you. bridge. You know, he, he said something interesting. By the way, brother Hamza, he said that uh, Islam changed things. You know. Uh, what he's trying to say here is that Islam is teaching Tawheed, Christianity is teaching Tawheed, but not really. It's three in one. and the, That's what he said. But what he forgets, what he forgot is that if you speak to rabbis, Jewish rabbis, they will tell you that the only faith that's close, and I, I interviewed Rabbi Tofi Singer, one of them. I asked him, do Muslims believe in the same God that you believe in? He said Muslims are the only people that believe in the same God that we believe in. I said, what about Christians? Robert Tovey Singer. He says Christians are pagans. This is his words. Don't be mad at me, Christians. Go to Robert Tovey Singer's channel. He says they're the idolaters. He said, I'm allowed to pray in a masjid. Jews historically prayed in a masjid, but I'm not allowed even to use the restroom of a church. This is what a Jewish rabbi would say to you. So we did not change anything, my friend. You're the one who changed things. You're the one who, as rabbis say, you violated their book. You took their book and you turned it to some sort of like uh, Greco-Roman uh, thing that has three in one and all that. We haven't changed anything. We say that Allah is one. That's it. I just correct, can I just correct Ramsey on something? Um, I believe the the Injil could well, or remnants of the Injil could well be found in the New Testament. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Just we answer this question for Sean. All right, Sean, your devices are not connecting. Because I'm assuming you're trying to connect with a mobile, and you need to give permission to your mic and your camera to stream your. So if that helps you, okay. This guy I fished in the arena uh, warm up, um, so oh, home Omar Karian. Uh, what, what, remind me what your brilliant argument was that I said was worthy of the arena. Hello, his name is. Thank you, mate. What was your brilliant Hello. argument that I said was worthy of the arena? Can you prove that Allah? Is the one true living God? You got oh yeah, that was a stupid question. You got yeah, five on. on here. <laughs> Can any of you prove that Allah is the one true living God? All right, go on. Um, yeah. Right, who, would, who, who, would, who would like to deal with this gem? From where? From where? What, what, what sources do you accept as evidence? As answer? Is that that's right. up to you? Is he an because I, what I'm going to okay. do is okay, I'm so, going to go by you logic. Are you an atheist or book, Christian? I'm going to prove to you that your logic doesn't no, no, even make no, no, no sense. Hold on. Hold on. Are you an atheist okay. or a Christian? I'm, I'm a Christian now. I'm an ass warlock. Well, what oh, this is the guy. He used to be a wizard. One second. What do Arab, <laughs> what, 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 what Arab, 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 Arab Christians call God? Just one second, Ramsey. Is it, is it a warlock a wizard or is it a male witch? Warlock is a male, if I'm not mistaken. Male. Male. Yeah. Were you a wizard or were you a, a, a male witch? I don't know the that's what well, that's the same thing. His Omar. So you're a wizard. All right. Well, I'll we'll be waiting for you. All right. So, Omar. Omar. Omar, right? Omar? No, so just Hamar. before Khalil, Khalil, Omar. one second. Oh, okay. Rumzi asked a very good question, which was what do the Christian Arabs call God? The brother asked a very good question. They have been forced to call 
to call hold to on, use the on. name hold Allah. On. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Okay. So Wala me. Wala me. Tell me. Let me. Let me tell you a fun story. Okay, so I was actually in Palestine a couple months ago, right? Uh, and I actually visited Jerusalem. Were you in that garden? Were you in that garden? Not this time. I went to, that was 2019. Oh, right, I okay. went 2019. All right. I've never I, been to the garden of Josephine. I said that twice, Hamza. Where you been? Hamza, yeah, Hamza, I have. Yeah. So they're like 10 yeah. times. Yeah. Hey, man, come on. Yeah, uh, I'm the question now. Okay, hold on. What's it? Just chill out, man. Calm down. Calm down. Did you just, did you just right. so, Welcome to the arena, Ramsey. Okay, okay. okay so hold on, hold on. Watch this. Be watch careful this. what you wish for. Watch this. Watch carry this. On, sorry. So I actually, uh, I, one particular church I visited was the church in Jericho where Christ is said to have been tempted by Satan. I visited that church and I ran into a Christian family, a Christian Arab family from Nazareth. <clears throat> and one of the things they asked me was, where are you from? I said, I'm an American. You know what was the first thing they said? Masha Allah. That's a Christian family. That was a Christian family. <laughs> uh huh. Because they are being forced. Were they forced to use. Forced by or or forced. Wait, wait, wait. You think they're being forced by forced by? My man, my man. Allah usamin, Allah lamin, almana, baal. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. One second. One second. What second does that mean? You, you can't be throwing my my Palestinian Christian buddies under the bus. All right. I've they been to Bethlehem. Just one second. Who, just what's now, what's, what's the name? Where just, the name Palestinian just, came from? Just what? Sorry. What are you talking? Oh my God! That's where's the name Palestinian King? You tell just me what's the name okay, Palestinian King. Okay, before we go into that, calm down. Oh, yeah. Homer, don't, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. You don't even you don't even know what's the name Palestinian King. Just chill out. Calm down. Calm so down, why man. you bring that up? Calm down. Just chill. take a chill pill. All right. The Arab Christians I've met in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, in uh, Jericho, and a number of other places. Right. All of them have called Allah. Uh, have called God yeah. Allah. All yeah, right. One being harassed by Hamas. Right. Do you know what Hamas means? What are you talking uh, about? Oh, what are you talking about? Now hold you don't on, know what I'm talking on, about? Hold on. First, okay, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to get into politics here, but hold on. Now you want to act like so, Islam so, is the peace. No, no, one second, one second. So, which, so who's forcing <laughs> the One second. Who's forcing the Christians in Nazareth to, to, to call Allah, to call God Allah? Who's, who's, who's forcing the Christian out of the no, no, Palestinian? No, no, better, better, better. Who's called, who's, what? Who, okay, I'm a better, better question. Who's forcing the Arab Christians in Egypt? Listen, right. start avoiding my question. Can you prove that Allah on, is the Omar. one? Okay, so let me, uh, Omar, Omar, Omar. Ramzi, this, this is not going anywhere. Can you prove just that? Uh, it's not going anywhere. Just, Ramzi, just stop. So, I just kicked him. All you, Again. Guy, all you gotta tell this guy is the first, uh, one of the Jews, one of the rabbis in Medina that believed in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was his name? Abdullah Ibn, Ibn Salam. Ibn Salam. His name yeah. is literally Abdullah. He was a Jew. Who was living in Medina? So a Jew's name, Allah. And then historically, if you go to the old graves of Christians in Syria, in Palestine, before even Islam entered, before Islam entered, you go to their graves, you find their names: Abdullah, Abdul Salam, Abdul Rahman. They actually had these names before someone, even Islam entered. Someone in the chat saying, "I got shook." <laughs> no, no. no. Look, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I just want to make this point. Yeah, go on. I, I want to make this point because. This is two Christians now that have come on, and two Christians that have basically lied through their teeth. Yeah, one obviously claiming that he had doubts and he was 50 50 about things, and we clearly he wasn't. The second one is that he lied by, by saying, by claiming that Christian Arabs are forced by Hamas to call God Allah. Yeah, now come on, he, he knows, I'm telling you, he's not that stupid. He knows he's t he's trying absolute well, nonsense. He's, he's I've, 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 discuss I've discussed politics before. Some people are that ignorant, but, but, but nobody's nobody's that ignorant. But, but I mean, but I mean, just oh. to speak geographically, uh, the organization of Hamas has no foothold in in uh, in the West, West Bank, Bank. Or, yeah, or, or, or in the, or in uh, what's called the State of Israel. All right, yeah. his all right. name is Hamar. Okay, yeah. But to be honest, yeah, I I already yeah, ripped the guy apart right? in the warm up. I demonstrated how Arab Christians were calling God Allah well, in their Bible. Hamza, God Hamza, in Aramaic Hamza. was Allah, uh, Allah. God in Syriac Aramaic is Allah. God in Hebrew is Eloi. You can see the cousin languages. You can see how they support each other. But Hamza, the point being is this: the point being is this is that I've never come across a Muslim, and I've been to Clubhouse as well, who will blatantly lie. Point. Yeah. Because Rumsey, he, he dealt with the question. 
Because he's saying, how do you prove that Allah is the only true living God? Well, if you believe Christians call God Allah, Christian Arabs call God Allah, then by default you the prove Arabic it. The Arabic translation of the Bible, what is it used for the for God? Exactly. Allah. So he has well, we've had two... Now. <laughs> Sorry. Next. Next. So we've had two stupid Christians. Lying. And I hope Third Christians times call them out. I hope Christians who are watching what's this that call them out. Oh, you, you ruined my you ruined my drum roll. I said we've had two stupid Christians. Third time's a charm. Hello, guys. He's calling you out. Hamza. He's calling you Hamza. Yeah, he's calling Hamza you out. out. He's calling you the, out. The, this guy is an absolute numpty. Honestly. How you guys doing, man? I've been waiting for how many hours now? Four hours, bro. Oh my god. Are you goodness. Christian? Are you Christian? <laughs> Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. And, uh, right, are you gonna call those people out? I, I, I you call your fellow with... Christians who came on before out. Say so stop lying. About like about what? Maybe you haven't heard this guy yet. You haven't heard this guy. Honestly, this okay, guy's like the trio, the Trinity. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. What's your yeah, name? What's, like, your name? Uh, what's, what's your name? What do we call you? Name, what's your name? You can you can call me Toba. I'm Toba. Sean. Sean. His yeah. name is Sean. Or call me John. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Sean. Name. Hey, what's your that, name? Man? Sean. Oh, yeah. Welcome, I, welcome yeah. To the platform. Nice to talk to you, every one of you. And I hope Amzat will not kick me out like the way he always does. Whoa. But, yeah. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy like, tiger. Hopefully. Okay, one second, one second. The reason I kick you out is because, like I said, you're a numpty. You came with stupid arguments. I ripped to bits. And you you couldn't even, you couldn't deal with it. And you just ignored everything I said to you and tried to come with another point. So I'm going to let these boys deal with you now, yeah? I've, I've just set the scene. So, you, you prove me wrong, man. Prove me wrong. Where have they gone, bro? <laughs> okay, thank, uh, thank you, Amza. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to uh, ask a question, but I'm also one, I also want to... Uh, just one question I'm going to ask. Look at this guy in the chat. He like him. Amza called the Christians. He can't win a debate against stupid... <laughs> and then he's laughing. Yeah. That deserves a timeout. All right, go on, carry on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to ask a question, but, but at the same time, I would like to answer some of some of your questions, especially the one about Jesus uh, sweating and uh, and and crying about the cross, or like the way Kali was saying. But my first question is this: uh, If uh, uh, Kali or or Mr. Sharif can help us answer this question, I already asked Amza. I, I want to know, like, because uh, as a Muslim, Whoa, stop, stop, stop! What do you mean? You, like, you already asked Hamza, and Hamza couldn't answer, so now I'm going to ask these guys. What are you on about? Anyway, ask your question. Come on, Hamza. So I, I, I want to know, because uh, I want to know when the word we is used in the Quran, uh, does it, I, 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 from my understanding, it means God, right? So I want to know, first of all, before I ask oh, the question, Sorry, the word we, we the word he said we, we, he's talking about plurality. Yeah, yeah the plurality, yeah. So I want to know when the word we is used, because according to when I speak to Muslims, you guys said it is called Allah, right? So I want to know, is there, is there a way that uh, uh, the word we, uh, because according to what I know, Quran is very, is very clear, is there a way for that the tasfia can change the word we to someone else? Uh, so, so... But, uh, so we is, is a pronoun. I yeah, is a pronoun. You is so, a pronoun. So that's that's about tasfia, no, do you understand what a pronoun... Do you understand yeah, what a pronoun is? Sharif, let me just make yeah. his argument for him, yeah, what he's trying to build to. Because he, he waffles so much, he'll never get to it. So what he's basically saying is, there's a verse in the Quran where it talks about how Allah sent two messengers and strengthened them with, we sent two messengers and strengthened them with a third. And in the tafsir, it refers to this is um, Bullas, Johanna, and something else. It's like four different um, name, four different sets of three names given. So what he's trying to claim, sorry, what Christian princess tried to claim is that the Quran Confirms Paul is a prophet. No, but he's not saying that. I don't think he's saying that. He's oh, saying get that. ready! It's coming. It's coming. No, but let, let, right. let, let, okay. All right. He's I not saying that. that. I would love nothing more if you brought that argument. I would love nothing more if you brought. It's coming. That. It's coming. Get ready for it. Get ready yeah. for it. I already smashed him to bits on it, but he's coming with it again. Help, help me stop Amza. Like, help me stop Amza. Is that that, 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 that is not my question, though. Like, I, I, I know you already know the question, but that is not my question for today. So my own question is this, because I want to prove that uh, the word we cannot be changed, because if it can be changed to someone else, then that means the word we cannot always refer to Allah in the Quran, right? Nobody says so, that. It's, it's, a a pronoun. Pronoun. it's a pronoun. 
the Hello. pronoun okay the pronoun we right the pronoun we like when allah speak because I, I feel that's how the way allah speak so my question my question is this uh according to when i asked the muslim they said uh i asked the muslim is there any prophet is there any prophet before within uh before uh muhammad they tell me it is a uh, uh, uh jesus which is isa right so then i asked them that uh, okay if it is isa then why did the quran said there's three messengers that was sent so uh, that's the same <laughs> word right yeah exactly right so that's when so you get like the 90 percent of you guys it that's not his know. argument and he brings it so it's exactly right so this doesn't make sense you because, you, Hamza. yeah let, let me finish my question right and then amza what amza did is that he brought a tasfir that shows that that's that replaced the word we to mean isa so then i'm, then I'm like okay if you're going to change the word which uh, is to say isa yet? sends this this messenger uh that means okay that, uh, okay, okay. Isa is allah can, and can secondly, i stop you there those can, I stop messengers... you there? can i stop you there sorry sure, i'll sure. let you That's carry off i need to stop you there because you keep all right. you are waffling now all right go on when when you, when i say you yeah or when i say we or when i say i you have to who the pronouns referring to is this basic grammar you understand that point so we does not always carry the connotation in the quran to refer to allah it depends upon the context of the verse yeah can we see the context of the verse so that we can be clear surah 36 verse no but 10. you understand that point do you agree yes 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 i agree i agree i agree with that point actually yeah because it could be it depends on the context i agree yeah I agree with that point. But if can we see the verse so we can we can uh, so see you now? What's, the, what's the next part? Are you saying that the we here refers to Allah, but it actually refers to something else? Yeah, the we there in, in the context of the verse, because Allah said in the Quran that this that He sent three messengers. So that in itself means that there are three messengers before Muhammad. But you guys believe that Muhammad is the next messenger after Isa. So yeah, this makes What's, so, the, what's so, the word for messenger in the verse, and what's the word for messenger that Muslims what's, use? What word is he talking about again? It's Surah Yasin. It'll be in Surah Yasin at the beginning, probably 14, yeah. 15, something like that. Like, I am not an Arabic scholar. I'm just reading what the, what the message, the same message. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is, look. The same okay. word. The same word. Sean, Sean this is Christian Prince's argument. You believe Christian Prince is expert in Arabic. When he read this verse, he sees Musalun. Yeah, he doesn't see Rasul, he sees Mursalun. Mursalun doesn't mean prophet. That's the first thing. Now, and then here's the thing you see. You just ignored everything I said to you that particular day. I showed you in the tafsir, there's four different hadith quoted by Ibn Kathir that other people say. But I'm not the names, about one second, one second. And the names change. The names change. It's not always bullas. It's, it's other names, first thing. Second thing, you believe this is Paul going to Antioch, where in the verse it says this place was destroyed. And, and Ibn Kathir says, because we know Antioch wasn't destroyed, this can't be referring to Antioch. And the final example was we have Sahih Hadith, where the Prophet Muhammad himself says, between him and Jesus, there was no prophet. By the way, Hamza, as far as I'm aware from what I remember looking up, that the one commentator who mentioned Paul's name was actually condemning Paul. He wasn't uh, praising Paul. He was condemning Paul from what I, I could be wrong about that, but that's what I recall reading. Yeah, no, but, but what I'm saying is, yeah, there's no, but, but I'm not even making a, an argument about Paul, though. Like, you guys are just get like, I think you're getting my oh, argument. What is your, your argument, argument, bro? Your what argument, is your argument? Make your argument. argument. His arguments about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Sorry, what was your name? You can so, call me any name, Toba, like Sean. I know. Toba, Toba or Sean. Uh, I think he, his argument was that um, uh, the idea of messengers, right? Messengers. Yeah. You said that before the Prophet وسلم, it was Isa, right? But then there are messengers. So who are these plural messengers, right? No, no, he's not saying that. He's not saying that. that. He's saying no, who he is, is the one that he is. sent these messengers. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Who is the we? Who is the we? Exactly. Who is the we? And, so, is that, and what are the messengers there? What's the, what's the messenger yeah. impl in place? So, so, so that's a good question. So, the, so this is why I think one of the brothers asked you. If that's you know a very what good the question. <laughs> I think uh, this is why one of the brothers asked you if you know what the word there in Arabic for messenger. So, <laughs> Nabi, Nabi is prophet, and messenger is Rasul, right? On the word Rasul, 
or or rusulina plural our our messengers doesn't always necessarily mean messengers human messengers that are sent for example in surah al-a'raf in verse 37 it says حتى إذا جاءتهم رسلنا يتوفونهم قالوا أينما كنتم تدعون من دون الله and the word there رسلنا and when our messengers come to them right but here in this, in this particular verse that I mentioned in Surah Al-Araf not the one that you mentioned about Paulus whatever here the word is used is رسل plural رسلنا our messengers but we know here رسل means the angels the, when the angels came to take their life so the angel is also called uh, a messenger and this is also by the way valid also in the bible um uh, it's, it's either angelo or either um uh shalech, shalech in hebrew it means someone who's sent so angels can also be uh referred to as rusul not all not only uh the rusul that you think of rasul meaning messenger human messenger like the prophet muhammad uh, prophet uh, isa musa etc does that make sense rasul does not always mean what you think it means messenger messenger can also be Malak, Malak, uh, an angel. Angel is also Khalil. Rasul. Khalil. The word is Mursalun. Yeah, yeah, same thing. It's Rasala Yasulu from Risala, which is message, Rasul, messenger, Mursal, someone who is sent. Yeah. Rasulana, our messenger. Yeah, it just means someone who was sent. So, yeah. Exactly. That's it. So, so, so in this but his verse, question, I... but his question is who is doing the sending? Before he gets, but he did mention Hamza. He did mention the point. This is a this is the issue. He's tried to say that there was only Jesus yes. as the previous messengers of Prophet and therefore he's trying to imply there's a contradiction right. by saying, "Oh, these no, no, are no. messengers." He, 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 no, no, he said uh, that as well. He said that he might no, say Shreve, what Shreve. you're saying as well. No, and let me lay out his argument because I know his argument because I dealt with it. What he's trying to say is, see, what the what Ibn Kathir speaks about is talking about. These are messengers Jesus sent. Yeah? This is what the tafsir says. These are messengers that Jesus sent. What he then says, well, if Jesus sent them, why is it saying, Allah saying in the Quran, we sent them? Yeah. Yeah? So what he's trying to say is that the one who sent these messengers is Allah. Because who else could be referred to as we in that context? That's, that's what he's asking. Even... even. If we, even if we entertain this argument <coughs> that has to do with some people sent by Jesus, <coughs> when Allah speaks, it's eventually Allah who sent them. <laughs> even though if a messenger sent them, it's eventually Allah has sent them. Because Allah is giving the wahi. <laughs> what happened? Oh no, just this comment. Oh. Look at this comment. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, anyway. <laughs> So oh, Khalil, finish, finish your point because I want to go back to that. Sean, I want to see what he's saying now. Yeah, no, no, that's it. I'm just saying, like, even that if that's the case, we that doesn't mean yeah, it can be God as now. well. In, yeah. yeah, it's God who's eventually sending people via yeah. through someone else. This is common sense. Quran is already clear about who God is, and that Isa ibn Maryam is not. Quran says, "Laqad kafar al-ladina qalu in al-Masiha wa Allah or in Allah Those yeah. who say that Allah is part of the Trinity. Those who say that uh, the Messiah is Allah have committed kufr. That's it. There's no like need for this little Paul verse from here. Look, he says we. So what? Quran is clear about who Jesus is. Subhanallah. Okay. Waste of time. So, Sean, Sean, what do you think to the points that have been raised? Have they answered your questions? Well, uh, in a way, I would say it answers a little bit of question. But the reality of this agreement might come in. Although I understand okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. what aspect did he answer? Let's let's focus on on each point. Yeah, the aspect he answers. The first aspect he answers that we that can always be that not usually uh, it's not always be for and light can also be used for uh, can also be used for someone something else, right? And then uh, like maybe maybe for someone else, like and then he also said that and and uh, even if he says that uh, Allah sent. Uh, even if Allah sent the messengers, it does not really mean that Allah, I mean, it, it is Allah doing the sending. It's Allah could be sending it through someone else, right? So yeah. I, I, I get, I, I get, I, I kind of get that point as well. But okay. uh, yeah, like I, I kind of, I kind of get that point. But then yeah. you have to prove to me that uh, this, uh, this uh, three, although I don't understand the Arabic though, for I, I won't argue that point. So because I don't understand, but I'm going to believe you guys on that point. But uh, the, my own, the other thing I'm going to say, you're going to prove to me those three messengers, because he, he, he said that there were three angels. 
Is that, so is, the, is there any proof no. for you to know that there were three angels, that they, they are not really no, no. human beings? No, no, we don't say the three angels. I'm not the saying didn't say that. Khalil's, what is Khalil's argument? Sorry, I'll jump in. What Khalil's point is, is when he refers to appointed messengers of God, such as prophets, it uses the word rasul. But when he refers to people who are sent, yeah, then you have ver you have words like mursalun or mursalin, yeah, yeah? Well, and I'm that can you refer that. to humans and angels, right? Yeah, and there are verses where it talks about angels being sent, yeah. So it's not saying that they are angels; it's just saying that they are people with a, you know, you send a messenger, yeah, a postman, give out a message, you know, if you want to be as you know simplistic as that. I, somebody who's speaking on behalf of somebody else, An not envoy. a God-appointed prophet messenger who's bringing revelation. That's not what the word mursalun means in this verse, and it's never understood that way. Well, I'm okay, I get, I get it. Then that means you mean that whenever uh, God's like God sending some someone, even no matter for my point now. So you mean that whenever God sent someone, does not really mean God sent it because uh, no, because. No. For me, I feel like if God sends on, like no matter how, like because right now, from what I get now, you said you cannot prove you it was either an angel or a man. We cannot prove that, like for sure. No, no, we no, we're that. not saying we're not saying that the verse you bring in that you haven't brought yet has to do with angels. We're not saying that. All I, I know, I know, but we cannot prove it. Rasul can also be about a, angels a, or a man or or or, or, or a messenger, right? Rasul can be applied also to an angel. That's what I'm saying, and I give you sort of Araf, which is different than what you mentioned. I'm not talking about what you what you're saying. I'm just focusing on the word Rasul. Or Mursalun or Arsul. Yeah, but, but or without Mursalun, like whichever word you want to call it, is sent by God, right? Yes, from a verb, yeah. Rasala. So and when someone when someone is sent by God, can, so if no matter what you want to call it, maybe through someone else or through maybe through you or through me, like so we don't call them messengers as well. We cannot call them messengers you, in you Islam. Can, you can you can also call Rasul to someone who is not sent by God or indirectly sent by God. They could be a Rasul from Her 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 Heraclius that came to the Prophet with a message. So people would say to the Prophet, there's a Rasul from this person. Or the, the Prophet can send a messenger, an envoy, like Brother Sh uh, Sharif said, a mailman, someone who has a message, carry it to another person. And this person who's doing this act has nothing to do with any divine commandment. Could be just a but message. But the problem is that it is not me sending it, it's Allah sending it, right? That's the problem now. So it's not we sending it, it is Allah sending it, right? Well, I don't know yeah, but it doesn't matter. No, so Khalil, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when he refers to appointed messengers bringing a uh, revelation from Allah, the verses only use Rasul. They don't use Mursalun. So, so that, that, that's Rasul. That's Rasulullah. Mursalun is yeah. plural. Yeah. Mursalun. So, Mursalun. Yeah, yeah. so Murs yeah, the, but Mursalun is always, yeah, I understand what you're saying. You say it's plural, but it doesn't use the word Rasulullah. Yeah. So no, this yeah. is Rasulullah is Rasulullah, Messenger of Allah. That's right. So it's specific in that context. Do you understand, Sean? That the verse is, so the verse is understood contextually to say people are sent. And it can be, and it's not, it's not using the type of terminology referring to those who are appointed by God, by God, no, by God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? Do you understand? Yeah, well, I, I can't argue it. I have to check with my expert with your answers. I'm going to take the answers. And uh, yeah, so like, because there will not be point for me to argue when I don't understand the, the Arabic, right? Sure. But thank Brilliant. you for the answer. And I would like to answer some of your questions now. Just one second, and... Sean. Just one second, Sean. So, do you realize now, uh, Christian princess is pulling your plonka? Well, we have to come because uh, then, then we have two conflicting experts here. So we have you guys saying one thing, we have another person saying something else. So we don't. So uh, then, how do we? No, how do we know who is telling the truth? Well, no, no, because Christian yeah. princess, the princess is trying to claim that this is Paul. No, 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 no. Like, like, no. I, I'm not even talking about the point. If I want to talk about the no, Paul, not you, not you, not you. No, no. Your your this whole this your whole scenario. Look, 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 Sean. Don't be dishonest. Don't be the third dishonest Christian. You know this argument emanates from the princess's claims that the Quran confirms Paul as a prophet based upon 
talking about messengers and then going to the tafsir and it mentions Bulas and Yohanna. Um, and this is evidence that the messenger sent by Allah to this town was Paul. That's that's the princess's argument. That's what you came to me with on my shop live. Yeah. So you you realize now because you've you've dismissed that Paul argument now. You've dropped that. Yeah. And so what I'm saying to you is this: Do you realize now, like I say, the princess? I, 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 uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Sean. Just before you go, ap apologies to interrupt you, my brother. I just want to add something quickly, if you don't mind, brother Hamza as well, and all the brothers. So uh, another thing about we have to understand about uh, tef by the way, tafsir, not tafsir, tafsir, right? Mm -hmm. Exegesis or, uh, or explanation. Sorry, bro, I'm not a Muslim. No, 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 no. I, I know that's okay. It's okay. I know you're not. That's why I'm just trying to correct you, so so you know what it means. I don't, I don't mean no harm done there. Just just trying to make a correction. So you have to understand the principle that. Uh, for example, a lot of Christians like to bring up Ibn Ishaq. Ibn Ishaq, this Ibn Ishaq, that Ibn Ishaq. Ibn Ishaq writes Sira, for example. And in that Sira, for example, it, it's a history book. He's, uh, uh, he's, he's adding more, if you will, meat into the context of whatever he's talking about. And sometimes what they do, they use something called Israeliyat, which is stories from the Jews, maybe perhaps from the Christians as well, that were circulating around. And they will refer and say that this is Israeliyat. Israelia, we don't accept them, we don't reject them. It's a story there. So sometimes they put that stuff in their books. And what happened is this, uh, some people who are not genuine, some missionaries, they grab that and they try to use it as evidence for the book. Look, it, this person is, is saying this. It's in your book. It's in your tafsir book. It's in your hadith book. It's in Even though this book might not even be a hadith book. It might be just like Sira, which is like a story about the Prophet and some some based on, and the author says that in his muqaddima, in his introduction, that he includes there, Israeliyat, a hadith da'ifa and stuff. Just Khalil, hadith. by the way, sorry, sorry Hamza, I, I do have to... Khalil, sorry to interrupt you, but just on your point, in, in, the, in the tafsir of that verse, there's, uh, there's four different reports, and each one has three different names for who it was. Yeah, and let me just read the verse in question, and you, you just understand the context. I'm going to say something, Hamza. No, no, I, I do have to... One say. second, one second, one second. One second. My sister is about to drag me out of my. Oh, room. Is that it? Okay, well, oh, it no, no, but I, I, inshallah, if the stream is still up, I might come back. But they're they're about oh. to come in and butcher right, me. Right. Somebody. So this is the claim. This so just, just, you just listen, Sean. This is what the princess tries to claim that this verse is referring to Paul when he went to Antioch. This is what the claim is, right? Now listen to the verses. Just listen. So give them an example. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Give them an example, O Prophet, of the residents of a town when the messengers came to them. We sent them two messengers, but they rejected both. So we reinforced the two with a third, and they declared, we have indeed been sent to you as messengers. The people replied, you are only humans like us. The most compassionate has not revealed anything. You are simply lying. The messengers responded, our Lord knows that we have only truly been sent to you, and our duty is only to deliver the message clearly. The people replied, we definitely see you as a bad omen for us. If you do not desist, we will certainly stone you to death, and you will be touched with a painful punishment from us. The messenger said, your bad omen lies within yourselves. Are you saying this because you were reminded of the truth? In fact, you are a transgressing people. Then from the farthest end of the city, a man came rushing. He advised all my people, follow the messengers, follow those who ask no reward of you and are rightly guided. And why should I not worship the one who has originated me and to whom we will be returned? How could I take besides him other gods whose intercession would not be of any benefit to me? Nor could they save me if the most compassionate intended to harm me. Indeed, I would then be clearly astray. I do believe in your Lord, so listen to me. But they killed him. Then he was told by the angels, enter paradise. He said, if only my people knew of how my Lord has forgiven me and made me one of the honorable. We did not send any soldiers from the heavens against his people after his death, nor do we need to. All it took was one mighty blast and they were extinguished at once. Oh, pity such beings. No messenger ever came to them without being mocked. Have the deniers not considered how many peoples we destroyed before them who never came back to life again? Yet will yet they will all be brought back before us. How does this refer to Paul going to Antioch? I mean, how does this get implanted? It's refuting. Jesus? It's actually refuting the idea of intercession and using some middleman to get to God, the Christian concept. It's actually refuting that. It talks about intercession, that to pray directly to God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's one. It's actually not, not mentioning any doctrinal uh, uh, sentence that would insinuate anything remotely need, near 
the Trinitarian belief or Christianity or crucifixion or any of that. And this, just just to, 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 to finish, just the, my last thing here, and I'll land here, I'm sorry for speaking uh, too long. The tafsir, so let's say, let's just entertain, there are two, three, four people uh, who heard some Israeliyat, some stories about that, and said this could be cause. So what? The ijma' of the ulama, the consensus, of the scholarly consensus in tafsir says this is not. So if anybody, so right now, let's say someone who's PhD in Harvard, whatever, but has got some twisted belief and call themselves Muslims and wanted to add something and write their own book and call it exegesis of the, of the clear Quran. Now it's circulating 20 years from now. Are we going to use that as evidence against Islam, the consensus of what the ulama have said? No. We respect our scholars. Some of them, they get it right. Some they get it wrong. Not in doctrinal uh, verses, but in the ayat that are mutashabihat. There are muhkamat and there are mutashabihat. There are clear verses. And there are some ambiguous ones that like, only Allah knows. Where but, yeah, but, you know, but you know what kills it? Do you know what kills the argument dead? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in a Sahih Hadith, there was no prophet between him and Jesus. He was the closest to Isa Alayhi Salam. There was no one in between. That's it. Killed it dead. What well, doesn't matter what? I this, think verse, this verse is not even saying anything about Jesus. Right? It doesn't say anything about the time scale when this is happening. Yeah, mm. this, this, this it's just in like, Tafsir which contradicts each other in the, in the Sean, reports. Sean, do you, do, you, do you understand what Tafsir is from an Islamic basis? Yeah, it's an, it's an interpretation of a verse, right? Interpreting right, a verse. Okay. So yeah. let, me, let me ask you another question Does Tafsir have revelatory authority? authority? Tafsirs are opinions, like they're based on different opinions. And so if Islam, so so we cannot say someone is wrong or uh, let's say uh, this my Christian prince is wrong or right, because whatever you get is also based on opinion. So there is one opinion. No, that's, that's no, 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 so some of those sources are related to Quran, explaining Quran. So one verse will explain another verse. Now, if it's like that, then yes, that tafsir is have has, has an authority from revelation. Similarly, some tafsir, some verses are explained by the Sunnah, which can be established and proven back to the Prophet. That has revelatory authority as well for us. And then you have other types of sources. Yeah, sources which are not revelatory. Where, for example, somebody might use the latest scientific information to try to understand about how mountains exist, and they might apply that to a particular verse of Quran. That's non-revelatory, which means that that could be true or false depending upon the external factors. But it's not revelation. It's not from God. If it's from God, it's either Quran or Sunnah, yeah, or the consensus of the companions, however you want to, you know, the particular principles that you hold. But that's the point is that so so when you look when we look at tafsir, when we look at exegesis, Khalil tried to explain very well, mashallah, but I, I don't I still don't think you get it. He's trying to say is that look, they're giving elaboration of the meaning of the verse, but they're taking from sources. Some of those sources are revelatory, some of them are going to be stronger interpretive powers than others, like for example, going to a companion of the Prophet, and some of them are just basically what they think is general information that could or could not be right. And those things are in that position of could or could not be right. Yeah? So they don't have revelatory authority. So just by saying it's in the tafsir means nothing. You have to understand where the sources of this uh, tafsir comes from. Yeah? Does that make sense, Sean? And the consensus, the ijma of the Muqtadir. Yeah, the ijma, yeah. Yeah, you understand? yeah. I, so, I understand. I understand your judgments of the tasfiyah, but what I don't understand is you saying tasfiyahs are also revelation because is there revelation outside the Quran? No, no, you know, know it's the opposite. You said the opposite of that. Not yeah. revelation. I said the tafsir. If the explanation of the particular verse is by another Quran, this is called tafsir by the by the Quran. Yeah. If that's the case, then it has revelatory authority so long as the extraction is correct. Yeah. So because you're using a revelatory source, which is the Quran, to explain the Quran. Yeah. Sometimes one verse can be explained or elaborated upon by another verse, like the story so of. Would it be right for us to, sorry about it. Would it, 
Yeah, yeah. Would it be right for us to call this uh this uh this because as a layman, let's let's say I'm yeah. as a layman, right? And I'm yeah. just studying Islam, right? And I go to the uh your website, uh, uh the complimentary I mean uh, what is it complimentary about the Quran, Quran.com. <laughs> And then I open mm -hmm. the verse, I go to the complimentary and I see it. So as, as a layman. Yeah, yeah. Comment, um, that makes like, commentary. Yeah, 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 that, commentary. That yeah, makes yeah, it a it. problem, Sean. Come Sean. On. Like that I'm, I'm I think, Sean. Okay, let, let, me, let me just let me just land my point. Let me just like, like commentary mm -hmm. about the points. Let me land my point. So like how do I judge? Because or should we call this guy who reported this? This I know I know is uh I know the lineage of as you guys you guys just claim it's not strong. So, but are we going to say that this guy is a liar? Can we call him a liar? And if he's a liar, why can't we remove him out of that? No, we're not calling them oh. a liar. You let me ask you this: Have you read? Have you read that? Be honest now. Be honest, because I'll ask you in this. Be honest. Have you read that tafsir yourself? Or you watched? I I, I you sent it to the group. Actually, I've read it and I sent it to the group. To to I sent it to this uh, chat link. Okay, what does it say in the tafsir? Do you see how? The, do do you see how? Did you read the whole thing? I, I read your thing. He gave different opinions. He gave some exactly. some opinions exactly. so, about you. So, so you're yeah, admitting, yeah. you're admitting. First of all, you agreed that the tafsir is not a primary source. It's not the Quran, and you admitted that it's an opinion. And now you're admitting that the the mufassir, the exegete, is given multiple uh, opinions about it. And we're just telling you right now. Sometimes they bring a hadith da'ifa, depending on the mm -hmm. author of the book. This is why you have to read multiple tafsirs. To educate yourself about the subject matter, about the verse, especially if it's a verse that you think is ambiguous. You don't just take one. If you treat one tafsir as the way it is, then, then you're treating it as a divine inspiration, and it's not. You just admitted that it's an opinion. So you must read and ask people who know about this, about what is the consensus. Because if one masjid, if one mufassir, or two, or three, amongst 10,000 mufassirun, said something, if you take it and reject 9,900 something, then it is your fault because you went against the consensus of the ulama, the mufassirun, and you stuck with two, three. And you got to ask yourself, why? Why did you get stuck with two, three, or this person who came up, who brought this idea to the Christians and trying to use it as some sort of argument against Islam? Why did they stuck? Ask them this question. Go back to their website, you know, in their chat, and ask them, call them. Tell them, I got a question for you. Why did you get stuck on two or three mufassirun, or one, or even five, and you ignored 9,900 um, 89 Mufassirun who say otherwise. But you, wouldn't, but it you know, logical, wouldn't it be logical to go yeah. with the consensus of what most scholars are saying? This means that they have an agenda. They, they literally dig deep and look for any thagra, any hole, anything to try to desperately make the argument. Just on this point though, Khalil, the issue is, is that even if prominent Mufassirin say this refers to Paul, it's of no value from a revelatory point of view. It's not because this is what was intended by Allah and his messenger. It is because they took the source from the Israeli art. They just thought, it's okay. We'll just take it from here. We, this is what we think may be the case, yeah, from the sources. But those Mufassirin would never have said, this is revelation by saying it's Paul. They would he never admits it. He admitted it. He said he, it's an opinion. He actually even, yeah, that's even right. Well, Sean, well, like I said, Sean doesn't understand this point. Sean thinks that if it's tafsir, that that's like the Islamic library, and therefore you have to take it. He 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 doesn't understand that tafsir is an opinion, and you have to critically evaluate the opinion based upon the sources it comes from and the extraction of the meaning that they undertake. Yeah. Well, I was going to add those tafsir. It, it actually has four different reports and each one gives three different names so straight away there's unreliability going on here right but this this hadith kills it just listen to this so the claim of the princess is what this verse is talking about paul as a messenger of allah that is the blatant claim of the princess yeah and this is this is a sahih bukhari hadith and it's also recorded in muslim and abu Dawood. narrated by abu Hurairah. i heard the apostle saying i am the nearest of all the people to the son of mary and all the prophets are paternal brothers and there has been no prophet between me and him Khalas, bam, next that kills it because that's sahih authentic hadith Done, this isn't bro. just some um what someone's opinion now this is the prophet of allah saying this Khalas, yeah. bam, next. we don't need to even investigate further once you read that 
Subhanallah, good point. Good point, brother Hamza. Good, very good point because now <laughs> even non Muslims agree with it. Even non Muslim, even enemy Islam, you agree that from our paradigm, Quran, Sunnah, and then comes Qiyas, Ijma, and then and then Ijtihad. You know, like the efforts of the ulama, the scholars, and that formulate something. You know very well that the Hadith Sahih supersedes Daif, let alone the opinion of someone else. Well, that's it. All right, Sean, thanks for coming. Does that make sense? Just uh, before you kick him out, does that make yeah, I'm sense? I'm not going to kick him. I'm not going to kick him. I'm going to be polite with Sean. So, it sounds so harsh. Sorry. Yeah, I, like, I get it, but I just want to correct Amza, though. Like, I know you have a Sayyid that says that, that, says that, that, says that but, I, but as a logical person, you also have to, you have to always uh, crit, uh, crit, uh, crit, I mean, critique your Quran sometimes. You don't just have a blind faith. So when you see that kind of verse that says that we sent three, I know you already answered this, right? So you have to also ask questions. Don't just say that uh, Allah no. said this. You have to, you have no. to, you have to also no, 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 no. I'll make, I'll make it easy for you. I'll make it easy for you. I don't have to do what you've just said at all. Your princess, he made the claim that the Quran says that Paul was a prophet of God. That's what your princess says. I don't care how you want to swash it. No, That's it exactly what he says. And and your princess says this based upon some one uh, opinion in a tafsir. That's it, based upon that. Okay. Whereas the Prophet of Allah directly tells Abu Harira, his close companion, there's no prophet between him and Jesus. Come on. That's it. That overrules tafsir. Done. I know as a Christian, you don't have these mechanisms. I get it. You just accept everything without any t testing of the veracity of it because you've got no means to do so. Where in Islam, we have levels, like my brother said. We have the Quran, then we have the Sunnah, then we have the... What's it after that? Uh, uh, after Ijma. Yes, yes, Ijma. Yes, which is an analogy, Ijma. which is like an analogy. Then you've got the Ijma, Ijma. And then you've got everything else. So it's priority. So if, if something in the tafsir says something and it's and it's contradicted by a sahih hadith, then we forget what the tafsir says and we go with the sahih hadith on that matter. Simple. And if the matter is, was there a prophet between um, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Jesus, as the princess claims, the answer is no. But Hamza Alas. also, Hamza, I, I know I keep reiterating this point, but even if we didn't have that particular hadith, that tafsir is a human opinion. That's the point. No, I it's get that. Just, I get that. Yeah, yeah. But I was so Sean and clear is clear. You and so this is the point here. Is this is which is really important, Sean? Is that you said? Oh well, you've got experts here and experts with Christian prints. Who can I trust? He's not an expert because he doesn't understand this. This is very basic. This is like the introduction to the principles of exegesis in the Quran. The principles of uh, uh, usul tafsir. Yeah. Um, this is really basic, basic stuff. He's not an expert. He's basically just fishing out and then he repackaging it. And for a Christian audience who don't understand the very basics of this, they think, oh, yeah, look at that. What a good point that is. You know, it's that's, so sad. that's so sad. Well, that's so sad. Like you have to imagine your career is based on this, that, this form of desperation. What is it? You go and fish out on these books and search to find one, not even a source, a hadith or something, an opinion, you know? And not of all the consensus, of some, one or two or three, and form this whole thing about bolus, bolus, bolus. Okay, there's no bolus. Relax. Then, Ricky, then... Shall we share, share, do you want me to share for yeah, response, response to this? Yeah, like, I then, then it would be wrong for you Muslim then to criticize Paul because, because, uh, because many Muslims I've, I've spoken to, many of them always criticize Paul. Get lost. I'm not having that. Did after all that. I'm not having that. After all that. Did he? After all that. He does that. Muslims can't criticize Paul now. Why not? Because the Quran confirms him. No, well, it doesn't. Even, even, early, even early Christians criticized Paul. Even some early Christians thought Paul was the Antichrist. Early Christians did that. Do you want me to share the Prince uh, the response? Is this anybody point? else? Um, Nah, oh, for, no more guests Farid, now. I've, I've Farid, took the link away. You're talking about Farid response? Farid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like him. Don't share his stuff. I'm just kidding. I love the guy. Big shout <laughs> he, out. He, resp him. he responds to the, the princess. Yeah, mashallah. He's got good material. Um, and, and, he, and he actually shows the princess. He shows the princess making the claim. 
And he, he says that you Muslims, you stupid Muslims, you can't uh, you can't uh, attack Islam, uh, Paul because your Quran confirms it. <laughs> and he's like, what? Paul, Paul. Really? Bolus. 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 Shall I share it? If I can find uh, it. Is it long? Like, nah. It's like, How it's, long? Like, it's like real it's right minutes, six, six minutes or something. It's a detailed response. Actually, it's not, it's not as detailed as my response, but... Before you do that, I just want to know how many espressos did you have, brother Hamza? <laughs> he slept <laughs> before the stream. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to because my uh, the uh, warm up went for so long. I didn't get a chance no, to sleep, no. and I'm working tomorrow as well. Being you, look, you, you just share it or not? If you don't share it, I, I, I don't. It's me. I found it. it now. I found it now. It's too late. I don't think you need to share it. <laughs> All right, I won't share it. I'm just saying it's just a simple point, isn't it? Even if you read the tafsir in Ibn Kathir's tafsir. No, but it's so funny hearing the princess bumbling, trying to make a point. Did he leave already? Because I think he wanted to answer that question earlier whether you just wanted to die. Or oh, I don't want to. Uh, look, look, it's very simple, Khalil. If people can't get basic points from us and, and, and concede, he did concede, and then he just went, right, so you can't say anything against Paul. Like, so you just he, dismissed he, everything he said. Hamza, I think what he was trying to say, I think, uh, yeah. Is what he's trying to say is that because you're Mufassirin or some or some isolated individual Mufassir has mentioned Paul in this glowing light, therefore, you know, you can't criticize it. Maybe that's what he was trying to say. But, but didn't we just talk about the hierarchy of hadith and such? And that, well, not just that, but look, the reality is it's a human opinion based upon Israeli art sources. Which comes from a person that can be wrong, <laughs> yeah. He might have not not known the information about Paul and what he did. And that's it. So yeah, he might have sincerely thought Paul was some good guy, but he didn't know the reality, and therefore he made a mistake. You've got to hear the, the princess making this argument. Go on, Hamza, put it on. I know you want to. I really don't want to hear it. Like, I guess, boys. I I want I want to I want to hear it. I want I want to I want I want to hear the princess bumbling. And and this is are these Christians fall for this. I don't I don't understand it. I think we'll we'll just be promoting for him now at this point, like you know. Oh no no no, because he looks a fool. We're promoting our boy. Um... Read. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm actually quite bored of doing this. I think this topic has been overdone. I've exposed CP on this previously, but for some odd reason, some folks in the comments simply cannot see this. So I'm going to do a quick recap plus share CP's newest lie about Paul. Perhaps he'll think twice next time. Yalla, bismillah. Yes, yeah, let, let me ask you. You asked me already. Uh, you, you asked me a question already about question, uh, Christianity. Let me get you no, no. You said uh, Paul. Hold no. on, you liar. Hold on. Let me get. Let me spank you. You said Paul is a fake person. He never met Jesus. Correct. Let me get you busted, question. you idiot. Let hold on. You. Hold on, stupid. Let me mute you. Liar, filthy, who insult Paul because they are ignorant. When Paul in the Quran is a messenger of God. Did you hear what CP said? Paul in the Quran is a messenger of God. CP didn't say Paul in a Quranic commentary. He said in the Quran. This is the first lie. Chapter 36, verse number 14. And bingo, we are here. Chapter 36, verse 14. Keep that in mind, guys. This is the verse that supposedly proves that Paul is a messenger of God. Listen carefully. Everybody... Read with me carefully. Chapter 36, verse number 14. Let us see what they say. Paul, he never met Jesus. Paul is not even, the, he's a fabricator. Paul, but they're a prophet. He said, Paul is a messenger of Allah. He is sent by Allah. And not only that, he made miracles. Miracles in the name of the Messiah, Jesus. So who is saying this? According to CP, Muhammad, peace be upon him, said this. In the top of that, their scholars and their prophet, they claim that Paul was a messenger of God. Who claimed? Their prophet. But yet those bunch of idiots, Shish Kebab Falafel Nation, they claim that Paul is a bad person and he is the one who corrupt Christianity. Why your God and your prophet don't agree with you, Abdul? 
why your God and your prophet don't agree with you? Explain. How come your prophet do not know about Paul, that he is a bad person? And instead, he, he, he make it clear that he is a messenger of God in the Quran. He make it clear that Paul is a messenger of God in the Quran. It says, narrated that the following is the names of the three messengers. From Wahab ibn Sulaiman, from Shu'aib al-Ja'abi, the names of the first two messengers were Shamun and Yohanna. And the name of the third was Polos, and the city it was Antioch. Why, you idiot, you keep insulting Paul when the Quran and your scholars report him as a messenger of Jesus, and in the same time, he is a messenger of God? All right, I think it is quite clear by now. CP is quoting Shu'aib al Jaba'i while claiming that Paul is a messenger of God in the Quran. Again, Shu'aib al Jaba'i. Not al Ju'abi, he was not a prophet. Okay, so let's summarize CP's lies. One, Paul is a messenger of God in the Quran. Two, the Prophet peace be upon him said that Paul is a is a messenger of Allah. Three, that the Prophet said that Paul made miracles in the name of Jesus. CP tries to prove this claim with one, a statement by the irrelevant Shu'aib al Jaba'i. Two, a quote by Ibn Kathir that has nothing to do with 3614, which I refuted a couple of days ago on this channel. And three, the following clip where I will expose his dishonesty again. It's in front of you. Chapter 36, verse number 13 and 14. <coughs> uh, verse number 13. Mm -hmm. 13 and 14. Okay. Uh, can you show it in Arabic as well? My friend, open your Quran. I, I'm, on your, I'm on your YouTube. Um. Okay, here we go. It says, Arsalna ilayhum ithnain fakadabuhuma. So we sent to them two, and they accused him of lying. Fa'azaz nabi tharith faqalu inna ilaykum rasalun. So we send, we string them with a the third, and they said, For you, we are being sent. Who yes, are but the three three. messengers? Okay, but it doesn't say bulos, does it? Well, this is your Islamic books interpretation saying Bulos. This will be line number four. CP will now provide commentary by Al Alusi for this verse. No, actually, for another verse that is completely irrelevant to this topic. He will be quoting a commentary for chapter five, not chapter 36, but let's just go on to see where he's going to go with this. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, anyway, well, go let me read for you, no problem. And you can ask any Muslim later to read for you, anyone who speaks Arabic. Please, silence, please. The, the, the messenger Paulus. This is your Muslim saying, calling him messenger in his letter to the king of the Roman. All right. So the only point here that CP is making is that Al-Alusi is referring to Paul as Bolus al-Rasul, which translates to Paul the Apostle. Now, this is absolutely absurd, okay? The reason is because referring to Paul as Bolus al-Rasul or Paul the Apostle doesn't mean that you believe that he was a messenger or an apostle. Oh, no, CP. Look at Ali Rizvi, one of the most infamous atheists. He apparently is a Muslim. And look, your best buddy, Ridvan, is a Muslim too. Wow, I had no idea. In the spirit, which means the Holy Spirit, witness for our soul. Okay. We are the children of Allah and his lovers. And etc. The funny thing about this commentary is that Al Alusi is quoting Paul to prove that he's a heretic. Paul is saying, We are the sons of God and his beloved. Because if you return to chapter 5, verse 18, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is refuting the Christians and the Jews that make this claim. So no CP, this is not praise for Paul. Al-Alusi is condemning Paul and says clearly, فَرَدَّ سُبْحَانَهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Meaning that Allah refuted them for saying this. CP, you have been exposed for lying to your audience. You pretend that Paul is a messenger of Allah according to Al-Alusi and in reality, no, 
he's condemning the Alusi. Guys, come on. If you can't see it, listen, I know you guys hate Islam, but be fair. There's admitting that CP is lying about Islam doesn't make Islam true. You don't have to believe in Islam, but pick your teachers, pick the people that you're going to follow and that you're going to respect because this guy doesn't respect you. A person that's going to lie to you through his teeth in your face. Well, okay, behind the screen, but whatever. You get the idea. He's lying to you multiple times. Every video. This is one video with four lies. I'm going to keep on doing this until you get it. Until it gets through your heads that this guy is lying to you. And it doesn't matter how much you hate Islam. You will one day accept this fact. That this guy is lying to you all right this is this is my challenge this is my challenge to myself i'm going to prove to you as even though even though you will continue to hate islam all right this is not about loving islam this is not about proving islam is true this is my challenge to myself to prove to people like you who hate islam that this man is lying to you all right this is my challenge to myself Take care of yourselves and enjoy the show. Salam alaikum, ya punks. Let me spank you bigger now. Your ass will go red. Mashallah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You're muted, brother Hamza. Never gets old. Those videos never get old. Yeah, but it, it, this, is, this is so. This is the, the argument he's making that this verse is referring to Paul as a prophet. And that's why Sean came with to me on the shop stream and I absolutely spanked him on it. That's why he's dropped that idea of Paul now. All he wanted to know is, um, why does it say we sent these messengers? Who is the we sending the messengers? And I, I think he got it, that he realized that Allah can still send messengers through other means. It doesn't have to be prophets. But no, I, even, I don't even see how it gets linked. I don't even understand. What I don't understand, I'll tell you honestly. How do the Mufassirun get from this verse that is referring to someone sent by Jesus? You know, uh, I, I really, I, I really respect what, um, mashallah, that was a great uh, refutation, by Brother Freed. Uh, but mashallah, he made a very good point, and I hope people picked up, picked on that, especially our Christian friends. You know, this guy really does not respect you. That's fine. We're not asking you to take shahada now or sign any contract. You know, just think about this. This guy literally went to another verse and mis and he, he speaks Arabic and misquoted the complete tafsir. He went from what was condemnation to make it look like it was some sort of glorification for Paul. This is a lie. I mean, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, Christians out there with integrity that should ask this man accountable uh, accountable about what he did. Beautiful. All right, I think we should end the show here at this point. Four hours and 51. Not bad. Not bad. Alhamdulillah. Um, Ramsey, thanks for sneaking on. I find my ways. Alhamdulillah. But, uh, no, Masha, it was, it was nice having you. Uh, we'll have you again, inshallah. All right, dude. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum alhamdulillah. See you on the internet. Khalil, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Uh, bringing the Arabic yeah, knowledge here. Sorry I interrupted your uh, hadith that you were calling it Arabic. No, it, it would have come across rude, but I was just looking at Sean's eyes glazing over. Anyway, but well, alhamdulillah, forgive me, man. I didn't want to. No, no, so, please don't worry about it. It's like a lot of effort. Have I always seem to do something to interrupt you or something. I always feel like I've, I always finish the stream thinking, oh my God, I've accepted Khalil again. The neck, man. So I brought, I brought him back, though. Did you see that, Hamza? I said, no, no, let him. Let him yeah, yeah. And the crowd yeah. were telling me off as well. The crowd were telling me off. Yeah. Hey, inshallah, don't worry, don't worry about it. My, but my love, thank you for having me. Jazakallah khair, brother Sharif, brother Hamza. Good to see you and everybody in the okay. audience. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Just, just before you go, where can everybody find you? Calamology, yeah. is that right? Calamology is my channel. Um, I'm not as active now because of work and stuff, but we do have some material there, some debates, etc. But I'll be doing, inshallah, some more uh, live streams. Oh, inshallah, inshallah. All right, look forward to it. Take care, dude. Take care. Salam. Thank you. It's so ironic. You became bad cop today, bro. I know, do you like it? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Do you not think that I could do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you got everything in your arsenal, bro. Atheist, <laughs> Christian, bad cop. Smashed it, bro.
But you have to sometimes. That's the thing. That's what people don't appreciate. Sometimes you have to be forthright and call it out when you need to call it out. And I yeah. think I was doing it. I was doing it to help the brothers appreciate the audience appreciate yourself, Hamza. That sometimes you have to be like that because they think oh, that was about being nicey nicey. But sometimes you have to be a bit forthright because look that you you showed that Christian Prince guy completely lying and we had two christians on caught out completely lying yeah one claiming he's doubting christianity is 50 50 about islam and christianity and the other guy claiming that muslims are forcing christian arabs to say allah <laughs> you know what i mean that's just stupid yeah so un-islamic well yeah i was gonna say so un-islamic but obviously they're not a muslim but no, but, in their, but in their belief system yeah built exactly. in, they're allowed to yeah, that's why it's not right. And then, and then the other guy, that Kurdish guy or whatever it was, again, the reason why I was pinning him on the point is because people got to learn how to make an argument. If you don't know how to make an argument, don't come on the stream. Yeah, if you're trying to refute, then you know what I mean, and 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 audience should also be aware that not every claim that people make about the Islamic text is an argument to refute the Islamic text. Yeah. That's people got to be critically aware about how to do these things. So, yeah, hopefully, yeah, uh, you probably ban me now for not coming on again because it was too harsh. Well, I loved it, loved it, bro. I, you know, and it was good because you was because I, I I actually became the Christians and the atheists. <laughs> yeah. I got so frustrated with them can't formulate an argument, man. Let me help. I put together. Um, anyway, alhamdulillah. So yeah, brilliant. Thanks for coming, bro. Always a pleasure Thank to have you. Bro. Um, where can people find you? Thought Adventure Podcast, isn't it? Tap. Yeah, yeah. Thought Adventure Podcast. Uh, you can check out stuff there. We've done recent, couple of recent videos, but also the playlist. I always want to get people down to the playlist. The evidence course. Have you checked it out, by the way, Hamza? I did send it to you. Did you? Forgive me, I haven't. Yeah, you where said you, oh, where, this was great. Where did I've you send it to? Me? When did you send it? Uh, about a month ago now. Oh. It won't be. I, I don't think it's. Uh... Have you seen it? Is it? Is it where you said Hamza's Den? On said on Google Drive. No, it was a. Oh, wait, actually, why should I... I believe in Allah? No, hold on. Is that that's not? No, no, that's something else. I don't know how. Why? How do? Why did I send you that? Um. Oh, here it is, here it is. Salam's not sure if you... This is in... Bro, this was in June. Oh, was it June? June? 22nd of June. I thought uh, it was Salam's not sure if you come across this, but I did a course going through the evidences for the foundations of Islam, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and believe in the prophethood. Uh, and then you give me the link. And I said, walaikum salam. Wow, I'll check them out. And then next, next conversation I had with you was in July. Well, no, I haven't checked it out, but I will check it out because you reminded me and you went to the trouble of sending it to me, inshallah. No problem. But for the audience, if you want to check it out, inshallah, it's a, it's a good introduction, isn't it, some of these points. Um, so, yeah. Shall I, share, shall I put, do you want me to put it on my channel? Go on, put it on. Oh, what do you put mean? It put it on now. Put it on now or uh, upload it to my channel? It. Upload it, yeah? You want to upload it? It's up to you if you want to upload it, but I think uh, How long uh, is it? Oh, Wow. It's, it's 20, 20 videos. Ooh. It's not a video. It's a 20 videos. 20 videos? Yeah, but some of them are like only 10 minutes long or 5 minutes long. They're not it's like 5 and a half hours altogether. People on my, um, on my channel love long stuff. They love eight hour streams and five hour streams and things like that. This is this, is this child's they play, love, No, they love the drama. They no, no, they, they love this. They're just the long streams. Honestly, <laughs> we have it on full adventure. Not as many, obviously, as you guys get, but um, you know, we have like three, four hour stream, and people are still, still there tuning in. Yeah, it's amazing. Subhanallah. Yeah. Well, you guys though, you would keep them captivated because you're, you're very, very intelligent boys. No, and the stuff, the stuff you're coming out is, is stuff that you know we're going to use. It's a shame you've only got thirteen thousand subscribers. That's just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, but it's quality, isn't it? <laughs> no, you should have more subscribers. Yeah, I know, but we want quality over quantity. So if you want to subscribe uh, to the audience, then you'll be the quality then. 
But yeah, no, no. you, Abdurrahman, you to ponders, Jake. Anything you guys say is going to be beneficial, man. Okay, Instead of me just waffling, eating some chicken sandwich or something. <laughs> we got criticized for that on one of our streams where somebody wrote a comment uh, on the video saying, Why the brothers always eating? <laughs> and I, I think I responded back by saying, Yeah, because it's like a four and a half hour stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, I, I, I always want to. It's like in my shop stream, people say, why are you always eating? I said, because it's lunchtime. And I start the stream. I, I, I shut the shop, pray my salah, go get my lunch, come back, and then I start the stream, and I'm eating my lunch. That's it. Mm. Okay, so anyway, guys, go check out Thought Event Co Thought Adventure Podcast. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, because these boys do tremendous stuff, and there's definitely information there that you need to know, inshallah. Is this evidence thing on your Thought Adventure Podcast? Yeah, yeah, it's on there. It's a playlist. It's on the playlist, so. And it's used. So it's, it's basic. It's it was designed for. It was designed mainly for Muslims, but it is basic. It's not complicated. People are like, oh, for adventure is really complex. Blah blah blah. Goes through, you know, from belief. Why 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 do we need belief all the way to prophethood uh, of the Prophet Sallam? Although I, there are things that I would like to improve upon, like do more detail, like talking about the Quran more in terms of the uh, mu'ajiza and the evidences. Inshallah. Are you doing that thing on Akida? What what thing on Akida? You know when uh, these uh, jokers reckon they're gonna come after Muslims with the what Akida and this that the other. Oh and yeah. Try, try, try to demonstrate that. Well, you have mysteries as well. Where therefore our logical con contradictions can be classed as a mystery. Yeah, that's a good one. That actually, I'm quite but, excited for that one. I'm yeah, that that'd be good. We're trying to get. Yeah, keep it between us, yeah. But we're trying to oh, get okay. we're trying to get one of the guys. <laughs> you can't say keep it between us and then say it on a live stream when there's eight hundred <laughs> people watching and all these Christians are, are clipping it. We're, we're, trying trying to get get? Of, we're trying to get one of the Christians that was on there to come on. Oh, is it the review with us? Oh, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, because this is the this is their latest kind of technique, their latest well, strategy. Yeah, I've. In last year or a couple of years, I think I've seen it. Basically, it's their thing, isn't it, where you criticize the Trinity. They say, oh, the Quran is the word of Allah. Isn't that like Allah incarnated or attribute of Allah incarnated into creation and things like that? So this is, let's say this, the funniest, the funniest bit. I, did you watch all of it? You watched, did you watch all of it? I watched it all, bro. I yeah. needed to. Did you watch the bit at the end where they're talking about what would attract you to Orthodox, what would attract a Muslim to Orthodox Christianity? And there's that guy called Kai, I think his name is, and he said, um, Oh, we don't have rules. We have rules and traditions, but not like the Muslims where they have to do something. It's obligatory for them to fast. And then at the end of sunset, they gorge themselves on a big buffet. Whereas we, we want to feel. You know, for the poor people, we want to feel that spirituality. And I'm thinking, oh, that is a joke, man. <laughs> Complete you see the bit where they're trying to call me out? Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Was it was it Seraphim or something like that? Yeah, Seraphim Hamilton. They want, they want me to de debate their boy, innit? Mm. He's their golden boy. I yeah. can't believe they think that um, he's going to be tougher for me than inspiring philosophy, to be honest. I don't they think he because he studied the the subject area, but I think you know is these guys. Honestly, I think they are. How do you say? Um, they are deluded by their own perceptions. Maybe because they've spoken to people, Muslims who are not very well educated. Like for example, they go on Discord server, and they probably debate lots of Muslims there, and they think, yeah, 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 we can win, but. Reality is these guys uh, don't know. They don't know basics. They really don't know basics. But some of these basics are a little bit technical, like in usul al-fiqh, yeah, principles of jurisprudence. I think one of them was trying to argue that, oh, if you are if you adopt a madhab, that's it, you're stuck with it. But then these Muslims, they jump around and take this opinion, that opinion, and he goes, what's that? That's not allowed, and this, that, and the other. And they don't understand Rasulul Fiqh. They really don't. And they don't understand like the different madhahibs and the different positions about when you can change from one There's position. There's a lay person and a student of knowledge. Student of knowledge are yeah, kind yeah. of more fixed, yeah. whereas a lay person. 
But you, but yeah, you yeah. why do you think they wanted to debate their boy though? How, wh why? Why? What is it? Why did they? Why? Why me? First of all, I think why does this? Them, because they probably see you as popular, uh, and you've got a large following. And their guy Seraphim is not very well known, is he? He doesn't no. get very many views on his YouTube, so they're probably trying to say, "Oh, right, the best way for you to become popular is you go after their big guy, yeah, take him out, yeah, and then people, all Christians, will start following you again." Or but the Seraphim's got like a master's degree, isn't it, in theology or something? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yes, got but why is he picking on the street urchin? Because they're uh, clout chasing, isn't it? They're, they're chasing your, your views, they're chasing the and fact that you're well known and the Christians know you and stuff. And there's people with bigger followings than me to go after. Why uh, maybe they think they can take you on then as well. But it's a big, it's obviously the low, low hanging fruit, low hanging fruit. Is that what it is? <laughs> maybe. You know, if, you, if, if you're really serious at this moment in time, if you're really serious to debate Muslims on theological issues, Hamza, who would you go to? Who, well, who do you think Christians should go to if they want to talk about deep theological issues? Mm -hmm. What, as a Muslim? Yeah, which Muslim would you go? Which Muslim should they go for? Deep theological issues. Jake. Yeah, Jake. Of course. So why don't why don't these Orthodox Shahada guys and Orthodox Christianity, which is their website, their YouTube channel, Orthodox? Why don't they ever ask? Why don't they debate Jake? Why is this guy called Jay Dyer? Why didn't he come out and openly debate? No, Jay Dyer is ducking Jake, isn't it? Because he, he tried to make some obscure conditions or something. He tried. He tried to put conditions upon conditions. Yeah, uh, basically uh, to exclude the ability for Jake to accept it. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying if if this Seraphim guy is really you know this big hot shot, then debate somebody like Jake. And Jake obviously teaches. Uh, or has taught, maybe not on an academic level, but certainly amongst Muslims and uh, non-Muslims, some of these topic areas. Yeah. So, but have you seen? Have you seen his topic choices? Who Seraphim? Yeah. What does he want to debate you on? He's given me a choice of three. Go on. Um, does the New Testament teach Jesus is God? Okay, that's a bit bothering to him. Is Paul a true apostle of Christ? <laughs> And, and and the reliability of the New Testament. Reliability. Okay, so they're all basically they're all like textual based critiques, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, but I, I've said this before. You know, I, I've said that, you know if if this was my mastermind specialist subject, these are the topics I would choose. Yeah. Paul being the prime example, and then. They said, yeah, well, they, they mock me saying Hamza says it's his mastermind subject. Well, Seraphin is a mastermind. So, mm. like, well, uh, I don't know. But yeah, so what, what's his argument anyway about why Paul? What would he, what was, what do they generally say? Is it because they're saying because the apostles accepted him and therefore by default? I, I know the first topic about Jesus being the New Testament teach Jesus is God will just be based upon things Jesus said that in the Old Testament means such and such a thing. I know that that's right. definitely what's going to happen. Um, uh, that's why I've just bought um, two books from Anthony Buzzard, you know, the Unitarian. Yeah. yeah. And, and so basically it takes all the verses that are ambiguous and gives their interpretation of it to show there's two yeah. interpretations of the same verse. Yeah. And then all the claims that the Trinitarians make that this Old Testament verse means Jesus is God, and they refute it. So I've got that unlocked. Then Paul being an a, a apostle, I don't know how they would... Uh, I, I think they would argue, basically, say, because I heard this type of argument. I think what they would say is that Paul was present amongst living apostles or apostles who lived with the living Jesus, alayhi salam. And if they were to condemn Paul... Yeah, or claim that Paul was wrong for making these claims, they would have said it because they didn't say it, then it they implies that they accepted it. First thing is they did say it. They made against, the right against the fact that he was an apostle, even though he didn't see the Isa alayhi salam. No, no, the point the point here is he, he claimed to be look, the only thing we know about Paul from the New Testament is what Luke says, and Luke is a fangale of Paul. Hmm. So Luke will embellishes Paul to such a level. He makes him a student of Galamiel, and he does all sorts with him. So we know that it's embellished anyway. Okay. 
And then, but if you if you want to know about Paul, read what the Ebionites say about Paul. And the Ebionites are the Nazarenes, who are who are the, the Jews who have become Christians. And they say Paul, in their writings, they say Paul was inventing this new religion. They condemn Paul. Mm. And, and these are the true followers of Jesus. These, these are not these Antioch Christians, whatever. These are the, you know, the, 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 the successors to the companions, you know, of James, Peter, John. So the, 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 there's a whole area about Paul that's not in the New Testament. See, everything you read in the New Testament about Paul is basically either Paul saying it or his fangirl saying it. Basically, that's that's what it is. And you've got why are we relying on this as some kind of authentic source where even the fangirl contradicts Paul? Do you get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Paul tries to make out that he's from Judah, he, he's a Jew from Jerusalem or whatever. And then his fangirl kind of sa says that Paul was from this no mean city of Tarsus, meaning he grew up in Tarsus, which was he was born a Gentile. So there's so many different things. So and, and, you know, when you read in the New Testament, Paul was preaching a different doctrine to the disciples of Jesus. Paul was teaching Jews that are not justified by the law, which the disciples of Jesus didn't believe this, which is mm. a complete. So I don't even know where he would go with that particular argument. And then the third topic, which would be the uh, reliability in the New Testament. That's going to be all about the patristic fathers, church fathers, this, that, the other. I reckon mm. we'll go that way. Papias and Irenaeus and oh, Eusebius and all that stuff. Because they're Orthodox Christians, so reality is this: the Orthodox Christians don't care about the New Testament. They care more about they care more about uh, church history. So, mm. I per I personally think I would crush him on all three topics. To be honest with you, and that must make me feel like why are they baiting me with such easy topics for me? Yeah, this will be clear. Well, so. Has he written anything on this top topic area? Is an academic or whatever. Might be good just to read through what he says, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, what they what they were saying on that on that video, they said that this inspiring philosophy, Mike Jones, won't use the Old Testament like Seraphim will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know Mike Jones will do exactly the same mm. because you can't justify it with the. You can't say Jesus taught he was God in the Gospels. You would you would need to try and find some obscure thing that Jesus said, which implies something, and that's because in chronicles or something it says this thing and only god would say this thing and therefore done so i need to know what all these little things they're going to use are Do you get me? Mm. that's why i'm not i was going to take this debate on with the um, thingy by the end of the month you know uh, mike jones and then then it was like i'm not ready for this debate <laughs> seriously i didn't realize the nuance involved that I, I need to get some books and i need to research their their arguments Do you get me and so he's not available now to 2023. And I've, oh, I've right. just applied to go to Qatar for the World Cup, innit? For that dawa. Are you going? Have you applied? What, with Ayira? It's not Ayira, is it? Who's, who's doing it? Uh, it's, um, it's something some in Qatar, isn't it? Um, oh, is it a Qatari actually, thing? I think it is. I think they may have, some of it may have come through Ayira, but Sheikh, uh, um, Sheikh um, McCarthy. Okay. Abdul so he's kind of Abdul representing. Abdul McCarthy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Have you applied? No. Oh, bro. I've applied to go for the full it, it sounds pretty cool, I have to admit, yeah. But I also think it's a bit it's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> Going what to a World mean? Cup and doing Dower. Catching a few football games. No, you're not gonna catch the games, but you're gonna you're gonna meet Yeah, you're gonna catch a few though, isn't it? No, but imagine, right? People go there, yeah. go to Qatar for the World Cup, yeah, to watch a football yeah. game. But they're going to have so much downtime when there's no game being played. So they're going to be everywhere, hanging around, this, that, the other. Yeah. Do you get me? They're going no, to be no, shopping. No, I, I heard, I remember the brothers, uh, I wasn't involved, but I know the brothers went down to, uh, what was it, the Olympics in 2012? In Rio. Yeah. No, in, oh yeah, they went to Rio as well. But they in went London to Rio, well. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Rio. But I know they went to London as well. And they did lots of dawah there. And that, that yeah, they, they get lots of shahada. Stuff. There's people. Yeah. There's people all over the world, man. But I, what I, for me, it's to be in the company of Adnan Rashid for a month. And, uh, I think I learned so much just being in his company. To be honest, I do like a World Cup, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to sneak to some games. Yeah. And then, to be honest with you, meeting all those Qatari sheikhs and stuff for projects I've got for the future. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that the networking that you could do there would be next level. Yeah, but I no no I I don't really uh I, you know just so that I don't plan to go down inshallah. 
Maybe for uh, maybe you might go watch a game. <laughs> no, no. I've, I've applied. I've applied to go, but okay, yeah, I, I have to send like a CV. My fucking CV. Which my CV for? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> "What Islamic studies have you done and stuff like that?" And like, hmm. um, YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All right, my brother. Always cool. a pleasure to see you. I'll you see you in man. four weeks. That's all right, man. Yeah. No, okay, I've yeah. got to get your partner in crime next week. Isn't it? Next time, Abdul Rahman, inshallah. Oh, Jake is coming on in 21st of October. Shall I bring you well, on with Jake? Uh, yeah, I don't mind, inshallah, whichever. If I'm around that time, yeah. Two weeks, well, it's four weeks. 21st of October, four weeks, yeah. inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, cool, cool. All right, dude, take care. Salam alaikum. Salam. And that's the arena. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, oh, we still managed to hold on to 814 viewers, which is brilliant, mashallah. Um, please don't forget to like and share the streams and if you enjoy them. Um, share, you know, you can do some clips and put them on your social medias. Um, we need more fish. We need knowledgeable fish. We've got a few new people today, unfortunately. Unfortunately, the same nonsense. The same nonsense. Doesn't matter, they're new people with stupid arguments. And no, I'm not gaming now. I'm working tomorrow. I'm, I'm gonna go grab a couple of hours sleep now, wake up, pray fudger, sneak another couple of hours sleep, three hours sleep, four hours sleep, maybe. Um, and then it's off to um work heel. Um, and then Sunday, mashallah, speaker's corner. We got some trolls. I don't know, yeah, it was weird. How, how do you think I did tonight? Did it, was I a bit nicer than usual? Was I was I less obnoxious? Was I not as aggressive? Did I let the guests speak? What, what do you reckon? Or was I just the same? I felt I I felt I um I felt I held back. I I, I felt that I was let I was too nice. I was sharp. Um, I was letting the guests speak. I letting the gladiators do the work, and I was just uh, just li just listening. And then it came to a point. Average Hamza, okay. Not the best stream we had with those guests. Hamza fine. Hamza was fine. Clearly held back. Yeah, I wanted to let the boys loose. Uh, mashallah, Khalil contributed really well. Ramsey came on. Mashallah, brought the youth off the bench, and he he did all right. Mashallah. Um, obviously Sharif is Sharif um, Shabir struggles with internet whatever, didn't, we didn't get much to hear from him and John again um, what happened to John? disappeared I, I was keeping it alive, I, I was producing the arguments man we'll watch the replay inshallah, so I'm just working out now, so let me ask you guys while you're here um did we say goodbye to Ramsey or did we just kick him? No, we, no, yeah, we, we did kick him, didn't we? All right. So, um, should I do in two weeks' time a reaction to this or should we start reacting from the very first arena? What do you reckon? And then just keep, and then, but we'll never catch up. It'll take like, to get back to this one, it'll take like 84 weeks, a year and a half. I haven't lost weight. I need to get rid of my belly. I'm going to start soon. I keep I keep saying it, but I need to. I need to. I want to get rid of this belly, man. You'll see now from the video tomorrow, I'll be like, oh, I'm still as dodgy. Should we go back to the very first arena? Um, isn't Sheikh Othman? Sheikh Othman's busy with his tours. Um, I'll be honest, I've not approached him um, for a while. I know he's been going here, going there. He's traveling to Mexico. He's doing all sorts. He's become very, very busy. So, um, and you know, this arena hits bang into Juma, uh, where he is. So it's, it's a tough one because he's like eight hours behind. So as soon as you're nine thirty here is one thirty for him, which is like Juma. So it's a tough one. Fill the other week, other week with the last arena. Which week? So next week, I'm going to do a reaction. Do I react to this arena or do I react to the first arena? And then the next, then the following week is another arena. And then, then we'll react to the second arena. What do you reckon? Mm. 
No, I'm going to react to that. I'm going to react to all of it. I, like, I, I don't like doing that. I can't be bothered cutting it out. I think the first arena will be nostalgic when I first started. Um, I knew hardly anything. I probably probably the quietest this ever. My first arena, man. Just listening. This cutter question does my nothing. No and no for both. No and no for both. But you should make short clips for the interesting parts. That's different. Thing he's gonna um allegation hunter mashallah um said he's gonna happily uh slice up the arenas um and put um, and make small videos. Inshallah, he's busy for the next couple of months, he said, but after that he'll he he wants to do it, inshallah. He wants to take on that role. Uh peace of alhamdulillah. So um That'll be good when he does that because Ben's busy with sorting out the YouTube stuff and editing that and get the thumbnails ready and keeping the, the channel clean. Um, and he only works for me one day a week. So that one day he got to do so much. You get me? Do you want a great fun workout? Play Creed. Or oh, is it? Is that like uh, the boxing one? I want to do some of that Oculus too on my gaming stream, inshallah. Have it on Thursdays, call it Throwback Thursday. No, what we've got to do, uh, it's hard. I, I've got to try and tie up so many things. So we're going to start doing a reaction to Speaker's Corner as well, don't forget. And we need to premiere and you get, and I've got other things to do. Oh, okay. Hamza, I asked 50 times. You used an English term of phrase in the warm-up, something about butt pots and pans, something. Could you repeat it again? Okay. You know when someone says, uh, yeah, but if, but if, but, but if, if, but what if this, but what if that, but what if this? Okay. So what you say is, if, ifs and buts were pots and pans, there'd be no need for tinkers. So basically, tinkers were guys who used to go around with like a little kind of cart selling pots and pans, selling pots and pans to people. Okay, so if ifs and buts were pots and pans, there'd be no need for tinkers. Meaning, if every time someone used if and buts, they were a pot and a pan, you wouldn't need a tinker. There you go. Hope that helps. I'm going to start FIFA soon. I'm going to get FIFA. Um, I'm going to start that on my, uh, on my um, gaming channel, FIFA. Also, um, I don't know if any of you guys play Ark Survival Evolved, um, where we had it for members only, but now we're opening up to the server up to anyone. So anyone um, can join the server and, and join in. It's a private server, um, so it's not, it's not an official one. It's a private one. Um, and it's open up to anyone. So you don't have to become a member to join that. You can just jump on. North America don't know tinkers. It's not tinkers. It's, it's, it's this. Tinkers were like uh, gypsies selling stuff. Uh, this uh, yeah, this server's going. I think we're going to start on Ragnarok. So what we've decided to do, I think, Zoom, is we're going to start on Ragnarok, fresh server on October the first. Um, no offline protection, so it's a week of war. Get to your base, start building your base, whatever it is. And then what's going to happen is um, we're going to have unlocks. So if somebody like beats the the boss of the map, then we'll open up another map. Um, there might be a members-only map as well. I'm not sure yet. Part of it, like in a cluster. We haven't decided how to do it yet. Um, because you guys are just rubbish on the server we're on. We, we, we've owned it. So, and you, you'll like this one, Zoom. You ready for this, Zoom? We're thinking that our tribe will be you, me, Cho, and um, Haroon. What do you reckon? 
you, me, Cho, and Harun um, as a, a four-man tribe. Um, but there's going to be no rules. You can have as many in your tribe as you want. Um, we're going to make it a bit more free-for-all-ish. First week is going to be war week, so everyone can just do what they want to do. Um, and then after that, we'll go back to the offline protection midweek or war weekends. Um, so if if you um, if you're up for it, what do you think, Zoom? Do you want to join our tribe, the Densians? Hamza Ragnarok. Members only server. It's, no, it's not a members only server. It's a um, it's a private server. You, you, I, I, maybe subscriber server. I, I don't know something something like that. I don't know. But if you go to the Muslim Gamers League, it's going to be there. So um, you can jump on there. Um, we're also going to have an in-game shop where you can um, uh, buy buy gems if you want to get better animals. And there's going to be competitions run. So it's, it's going to be pretty cool. So uh, visceral quit. Demoralized, isn't it? Demoralized. We we were untouchable. We were the we were the top dons. Um, but let's see because we're opening this up now, so anyone can come. But we'll we're still responsible for the server. There'll still be rules to the server. Uh, there'll be no shadow mains. Uh, when is the next live? The next live. Oh, I might do a live before I go speakers corner. Arc is free on Epic Games. That's brilliant. Hamza, do what Andrew Tate did. Get all your followers to open a YouTube account with the best clips of the arena and a link to your channel saying if anyone wants to debate, come here. That's a good idea. What do you know about Najashi? Najashi was the uh, Abyssinian um, ruler, wasn't he? Christian King. Have I been going for five hours? Uh, five hours and 25 minutes? I don't want to go soon. What do I think of Ali or Anu? Mm, yeah, great Sahaba. Uh, Khalif, no problem. Inshallah. Come on, Ark. Why? Why, why saying it like that? There's a surprise waiting. There's no way you've raided us. Really? What's the surprise? Concern now. I'll jump on and quickly see what's going on. What was your highlight from this arena? Um... There was, there was, there was, there was, I don't know, I can't think, uh, that, that, uh, was a guy with Hamar, Hamar is down here, this is why members only server is a good idea, yeah, but no one's joining the members only server, that's the thing, you see, everyone's like, not joining, so we thought we're going to open it up to get more people involved. Arc for free will be removed 29th of September from Epic Games. Get it now. Yeah, I just need to make sure whether you can use Epic Games or it has to be Steam. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how, how it's going to go. Right. I'm going to go now. Jazakallah for joining. Um, when will I see you? When will I see you again? Um, yeah, no. It's not going to be fun. I'm going to speak this corner. Uh, don't forget, uh, any videos you see of, about me from Speaker's Corner, just hold on to your horses. Hold your horses, because the proper 
uh, EastEnders Flex will be coming out on my channel, fully proper, proper mics, proper explanations, proper intros, proper closes, um, and you'll just ruin the experience if you watch it on any other channel. So my advice to you, if you spot me in Speaker's Corner on someone's channel, uh, just think to yourself, am I going to ruin the experience and hands there? Do you get me? That's it. Um, what I'll do on Monday, I'll do a reaction stream to, we'll premiere um, the second part to the last one. So when Mary comes, um, we'll do that one because we're not going to do one on Sunday, which should be the day of the reaction because we're going to be speaking corner. So Monday, inshallah. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, thanks for the mods um, and thanks for keeping the chat real and, and being involved because uh, you play a big part in these streams. It'd, it'd be rubbish without the chat. So thank you everybody. And thanks for keeping it clean as well um, and not going into toxicity like all the other Christian channels do. The, the, the chat is obnoxious, man. At least alhamdulillah what I know about my chat, you, boy, you, guys, and, you guys and girls, mashallah, you, you don't, Go to those levels. I'm gone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.